Good afternoon, law nerds. We are resuming the Johnny Depp Amber Heard trial day 17. It's May 17th and Amber Heard is still on cross-examination. At the end of the day or the end of the morning of cross-examination, we just heard about Amber Heard's other uh, headlines that were difficult, including allegations that she had stolen her essay story from Kate James and others. We saw that video of James Franco getting in the elevator, and we have really gotten into so much of this case. We saw the morning start out with the physical knife that was a gift brought into court, and then into whether there's a knife in the bed used to break the bed, a la Law and Lumbers debunking the testimony video here on YouTube. It has been a wild morning of testimony. I think that this cross-examination has been great. You've seen a clean cross with not a ton of interruptions, without a ton of objections, because the questioning is that good by by uh, Camille Vasquez. So with that, I'm going to roll the intro. Court should be back in just a moment and, you know, a very, very late lunch. But once cross starts, I will, we will, we will eat a little bit then. But for now, it is time to go. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being a law nerd. I appreciate you. Don't forget to take care of yourselves if any of this testimony is triggering. And here on my channel, we do have chat rules. You'll see them coming in. No ad hominem attacks and name calling. We have conversations and that keeps the chat the best place to be on the internet. We are here to have a discussion and to mention it all. And wow, it's been a lot. We should just get into it. Hey there. If we haven't met yet, I'm Emily D. Baker, the badass lawyer and everyone's favorite favorite legal commentator. I'm the host of The Emily Show, and I break down the legal shit behind the news and pop culture stories we all want to talk about. I have been a licensed attorney for over 15 years, but this is not legal advice. I should warn you, I'm a big fan of the cursey words. This channel is where the law nerds unite to talk about facts, not fuckery. And as I said, court should be starting in just a few minutes. But before we get there, I'm going to try to get to some of your questions and some of the questions that I might have missed from the morning stream because we do have a minute. If cross ends today, what we will see next is redirect. That means that Amber Heard's attorney, Camille, not Camille, Elaine, will have an opportunity to ask questions and try to fix any of the things in cross or try to explain any of the things in cross. And so we might see that today if we get done with cross-examination. So I'm not sure if we'll get there, but we might. So with that, I'm going to try to get to a few questions since we've got a few minutes before court starts. I've got the audio on for court and I'm going to look. Um, your Twitter has kept me informed in the meetings. Love you. Thank you. Ray, I do try to update it. It doesn't get updated as fast as this, but I try to give uh, both. So if you guys want to follow me, I'm at the Emily D. Baker all over social media. You are welcome to follow me there. I keep hearing the music from Greece when I hear Tell Me More. Tell me more, tell me more. I can, I can get I can get with that. Camille is doing an amazing job. Emily, thank you for doing all this. I've learned so much and have enjoyed listening to your commentary. Thank you. Um, today has been, Camille is really an incredible attorney and she has done a very good job with this cross. So thank you so much. Do not ever apologize for super chats. They are not you liking subscribing and being here in the chat supports the channel. Thank you for those of you that choose to super chat. It is never expected, but I appreciate it. I'm not, Oh, court is back. So it's never something um, that is expected. It is appreciated. I am a full-time content creator, but it's never expected. They are already up at sidebar talking about something. Um, Fairfax is one of the five richest counties in the U.S., highly educated, high percent of foreign-born professionals, which again is going to lead to a more, not, not necessarily more questioning, but they're not going to be so overwhelmed by the wealth in this case, um, and, which can happen when people can't connect or relate at all. So um, I think that probably bears well for all of these parties. And we see Larry, who was just on the channel before lunch, um, talking about the jury and how the jury has been responding back there seated in the courtroom. So let's see. Do you think Camille is going to come back from lunch and dig into Amber a little more aggressively? Um, no, I think she should stick to the pace 
of cross that she's been doing. I think it makes the point without seeming like she's trying to beat up on Amber Heard. I think there's been a few moments of snark and a few of them I've commented on. I mean, like, that's maybe a little snarky. You want to make sure the jury stays with you and you want to prove your point. I don't think she needs to be any more aggressive. I think she's been amazing. So with that, two things I thought I heard on my new favorite channel, and now I can't unhear Miss Dutters and Law Lawn Herds. <laughs> Mr. Dutters. Um, we will definitely talk about Mr. Dutters and lawn herds. Definitely not me, lawn herds, but I also talk very fast. And so things do get messed up. Um, that does happen. That does happen. So I'm going to answer a few more questions, but I don't want to pull down the court. So no, I don't think Camille will be more aggressive. The things that really stuck with me this morning is um is just is just how she was talking about not being afraid of Johnny Depp. Um, and how she was trying to distance herself from this um, from this article, even though she was saying it, she got around to saying it's about Depp and others. So she admitted that this article is about Johnny Depp, and that was kind of the win they needed to move on. Um, thank you so much, Megan. Nice to know I'm not the only one obsessed watching every second. I mean, there's a lot of us obsessed watching every second. That's for sure. Uh, do you think Amber Heard is trying to engage the audience like Johnny Depp with the sassy answers to Camille? Um, I don't know if she's trying to engage the audience. I think she's trying to um, reset the power. I think that's where you get some of those snarky answers. Being cross-examined cannot be comfortable or fun for anyone. And I think I think both Johnny Depp and Amber Heard are smart enough to be like, I see where you're going and that's not where I'm going with you. And to kind of clap back. I I don't know if it's uh, intentional. I don't know if it's totally, um, scripted or well, not scripted, but like planned or pre-planned or premeditated. I think it's just something that happens. She has done a very good job at keeping her cool. And again, Elaine has had some snarky moments with her. Didn't you miss heard? So it's not inappropriate that Amber has made some snarky comments back. And there's times Amber has been right. She's like, actually, no, it's on this page. I just didn't say it in time. Actually, no, it's this and that. So she's not been wrong on these things. When she was talking about the medical record, she's like, it also says that I'm a well-nourished man. That is a very fair thing to point out when they're saying, oh, this record proves this. It's like, well, actually does it because it doesn't even have that I'm a woman. And those are fair points on cross-examination for her. Question, when did James Franco leave? Um, no one seems, no one knows. It's not come up. So do you think Camille is going to come back from lunch and dig in? Ah, oh, we answered that. Hello, Nick Schneider from the viewer's voice. Elaine should just retire after this trial. She might want to, but this might be, um, this might be a client issue. I mean, Elaine might be flustered because of her own client. That is a very real possibility here after what I've seen from her. Um, I see your comments about the bee earrings. We mentioned that in the morning stream. So we saw it. Um, is recross not allowed because it's the judge's choice? Yeah. A court rule. I think it's probably a local rule. We can ask Rob um, from Lawn Lumber, but it's not really needed. And it's, you know, it's not really needed. It's, it's, you need to know what you're doing and, and you need to know what you're answering. So I don't, I, I, I don't, again, they knew going in that there was not going to be recross. So they can plan accordingly. Um, your commentary, get me so excited to watch this trial. Your presence is very comforting. Well, thank you. And watching with someone else makes it easier to digest. I mean, we've got a lot of someone else's to watch it with. And I love that. It feels like an AOL chat room and we get to just talk. If uh, Pledge and Donated are synonymous, why can't she just say yes to donate? That's a great question, Jeanette, because then again, they would call her a liar and she's aware that they're using that to call her a liar. But it's a very, very good point. Why can't you just admit it? She's not going to. She's not going to give an inch. I pledge to send you a thousand super chat over the next 10 years. I mean, you can pledge everything you want. I feel like a billionaire already. I'm ready for it. Hey, thanks for your insights. Please let DUI guy know that his line holder is resist impulse. I followed during his line live. We did, and we pulled it up at the end of that stream because the chat was so helpful. You guys are just, we've got a whole team of LawTube here and LawTube, LawTube um, legal assistants. So we've got like, you know, all the paralegals in here, but you know, on our channel, it's the law nerds, but we've all got it. I got my mom to your channel. Hi mom. Well, hi Mariah's mom. Oh, we're getting back to cross. And again, I will try to pull up all the super chats I can. Um, I will try to answer the questions that I can. We might not see um, everything. I will do my best. 
Jessica H, you must be living for this. This team, by the way, Ben Chu's team, team has worked flawlessly as a team. We've seen some of that teamwork um, on, on Amber Heard's team, but this team, man, you see them passing post-its to each other. They really have each other's back, and it's amazing to watch lawyers work so well together. Thanks for the coverage. I've officially been a law nerd for a couple of weeks. You're welcome. Um, I'm also in love with Camille. She's fantastic. I aspire to be her. Found your, her hair is way better than mine. The thing that's so hard about being a female lawyer, though, is you definitely have to plan in extra morning preparation time for trial so that you can get your hair and stuff done. There's no way Ben Chu is planning in the same amount of time to get his hair and makeup done in the morning before court, and it's very annoying. But it is absolutely necessary because court presence matters, and this is also being televised. Found your stream by chance this morning. I appreciate the translation. I'm not proficient in legal. Don't worry. We're here for the legal muggles, and we're here to translate it all and curse about shit that's ridiculous. I don't know if it will. Kate Moss did come up this morning. I think they might leave that to the end. Remember the famous dancing baby on Allie McBeal? Yes, Allie McBeal influenced a lot of my shoe choice in my early career. And then I had to, I had to, uh, I had to stop because they were way too high to be in trial. And it, my feet were dead by the end of the day. Hey, Matt Bond. Get it, Tom. We love, we love how on point the tech team has been. 881A. So many exhibits. Ooh. Yes, we've definitely seen a lot of the Dior bees, but wasn't Depp a Dior? Wasn't Depp? Didn't Depp have a contract brand thing with Dior? some of her sexual Sorry. violence hoax facts as a sword inflicting them on the public Sorry, and Mr. Depp. Do you see we that? Fixed it. Yes, I do. Is that one of the statements that you allege are defamatory? It's defamatory? That's, that's correct. Okay. Um, she just asked about the defamatory stuff. To plaintiff we exhibit fixed it. 881B. Sorry, guys. We fixed it. So this is just calling up the exhibit for these headlines on the counterclaims. So after lunch, we're getting into counterclaims. In exhibit, plaintiff's exhibit 881B, Depp's lawyer Adam Waldman said the various discrepancies prove that nothing heard in her friends said about the events of May 21, 2016 could be considered credible. Quite simply, this was an ambush, a hoax. They set Mr. Depp up by calling the cops, but the first attempt didn't do the trick, he told the I Daily Mail.com. to turn their mic off. I want jelly beans too. I'm going to get jelly beans for tomorrow. The officers came to the penthouses, thoroughly searched and interviewed, and left after seeing no damage to face or property. So Amber, her friends, spilled a little wine and roughed the place up, got their story straight under the direction of a lawyer and publicist, and then placed a second call to 911. But even this didn't have... Oh, apologize. You're fine. Turn on your mic, Elaine. If you're going to object and ask to approach, at least turn on your mic so we can hear what's happening. So for all of those of you that are, well, some of you might not be back up, but we 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 kicked back up. It's interesting if she is wearing a Dior earring, um, that he is a Dior brand rep. That seems like an interesting, like, aside from things that don't matter in corporate matter to pop culture and the internet, because it matters. It's interesting. So with that, I'm going to get to a few questions. Um... They didn't get their stories that straight. I mean, that's a very fair point that they didn't get their stories that straight. Anyone else wonder, oh, I lost it, um, what Amber Heard's pink drink is and why she starts slamming it when she gets agitated. It calls for speculation. First, perfect use of legal jargon in everyday life. Thank you, hip kitty cat. And I want to know too, I'm very curious about what she's drinking. It might be some kind of hydration. Um, I don't know. I would love to see. Would love to see you DUI guy Lawn Lumber in trial as a team. Um, <laughs> everybody trying to figure out who's lead counsel. <laughs> I think we can team up for legal commentary and that would be a lot of fun. You should totally get jelly beans for tomorrow. I will. They're so hard though, because if I want to talk and then they're sticky, it's going to be a mess, but I might anyway. I have a huge box of, oh, we paint. 
Thanks, everybody. I have a big box of candy from the UK from an amazing law nerd. And there is lots of stuff in that. So I, I will go find some UK candy, which seems appropriate. I love that the lights flash. I'm not going to lie. I It brings me joy. Um, I have no idea where we're at, but thank you all for subscribing to the channel. It's it's actually, it's just been absolutely overwhelming how, um, how many of you have said that this commentary has not helped you just get through the trial, but that this community has been a part of your community. I appreciate it. Would it be a good way to close it after showing the photos and the jury to bring up the call for sanctions in regards to metadata? They can't do that in front of the jury. That has to be done with the court, not in front of the jury. And the court, I think, might have taken that under um, advisement. I trust that they are asking for the things they need to ask for. Some of these things are limited. Why are we looking at the jury? Why are we still looking at the jury? Let's see if we can bump this. Oh, we've got this stream quality as high as it can go. Um, I'm going to turn it down just to 720 just in case it starts to buffer as it gets busier this afternoon. Interesting that Amber emphasized that she never called herself a victim, but yesterday's statement literally said today we expect Depp's attorneys will instead pound away on the victim. Yes, it is interesting that that's what her PR team is choosing to highlight that is contrary to her testimony. Um, Elaine definitely can't quit. So there is no option for that now. Um, DTC said it was a hoax IMO. She suggested to, she gestured to the left side of her face in testimony when the bruises on the right detail matters. We'll see what the jury thinks about that. So maybe some are suggesting it's cotton candy, liquid IV. I mean, it could be, um, I keep, uh, flipping you between you and legal bites. Can you just go onto their panel? I can't decide. I do much better in commentary, not paneled because I want to say things. And then I feel like I'm talking over people. And then I'm triggered from being an ADHD kid when I would interrupt people. So it's much easier for me to join after stream. Cause I want to say what I want to say. So Question, I was diagnosed with MS at 30, long PTSD at 33 from childhood, now ADHD at 39. Please, do you have any tips for your please, obvious success? Uh, pull up Plankett's Exhibit 881 My early glasses help. Learn yourself. Get your support. Don't feel ashamed. Ever. Don't feel ashamed. Learn yourself. And go to page 11. And the Erlen lenses are linked. They have very much helped with my ADHD. Also, you know, therapy. Therapy has very much helped with all things. This is another life. article, Ms. Heard, where you argue that uh, Mr. <laughs> Waldman's statements yes. are defamatory, correct? I don't know if this is taken from that article because I can't see the article in full. Hmm. You've redacted Page 11 it. of the article. You've redacted it. You've redacted it. Of course the it's redacted. Reads, Page 11. They are on cross. Closing is at the very, very end, and closing is going to be fire. <laughs> I don't even think I have Vegemite in my house. Would it count if I did something else? My sister, uh, Tina, are watching your commentary from Denmark. Hello. We're your two biggest fans. Shout out to my sister. Shout out to Reiki's sister. Hope I pronounced that right. She continues to stare down the jury, yes. We have reached the beginning of the end of Ms. Hurd's abuse house against Mr. Depp. Is that correct? Is that one of the defamatory, what you claim is one of the defamatory statements said by Mr. Waldman? I believe so. Okay, thank you. Camille doesn't want to give her a chance to explain. That's for redirect. Redirect can explain. She wants to point out to the jury that she didn't do it. Don't give her a chance to Ms. explain. Sir, you're not aware of any career opportunities that you lost as a result of Mr. Waldman's statements, are you? Well, it's kind of hard to point to the jobs you're not offered, right. to the gigs you don't get. It's hard to point to the You were not replaced in one. Aquaman 2, were you? They released me from my contract, and I fought to stay in it, and they kept me in it. I just don't know how much I'm in, actually, of the final cut. And you testified yesterday that L'Oreal actually extended your contract in April of 2020. Is that correct? Yep. In part, they extended and it and held me. And you testified yesterday that L'Oreal extended your contract again in November of 2021, correct? Not exactly. They extended it because it couldn't use me or any of the materials uh, for me. And that extension was for 20 months, right? That's correct. Ms. Hurd, you testified yesterday how Mr. Waldman's statements, quote, torture you every day. Do you recall that testimony? I do. And then, um, and that you look at them every day. I look yep. at the... Um, Internet. online attacks the media you can't avoid it to be honest that right. those statements are often attached to i don't look at his statements every day 
And you testified that you just want to move on with your life, right? Mm. I do very much want to move on with my life. Do you feel the trap? But you've gone out of your way to engage with Mr. Waldman on social media, haven't you? (laughs) Uh, I have made a comment, I believe, once. I did not, I would not characterize that as engaging with him. Let's please pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 1266. (sighs) This is why it's hard to be a party in a lawsuit. Because if you want to pop off on social, it's going to come back. Your microphone, Elaine! I, I don't have this yet, so I'm asking for it to right be there. given to okay. me before. It's your client's it's social media, system. Elaine? Just go to Twitter. Just be there unless it's been deleted. This is your tweet, right, Ms. Hurd? That is correct. I'm going to move to admit and publish this tweet. Waldman is Depp's former lawyer that relevant? released the statement. Relevance? She's trying to distance herself, objection. and yet she's engaging on Twitter. Relevance. I'm sorry, relevance? All right, I'll overrule the objection. Eight, eight, one, C, Turn on your microphone, Elaine, and maybe we'll hear that you're objecting, objecting to relevance. <sighs> Can we please have it published to the jury? Yes. Meg Thorpe, I'm in Nashville, too. It looks like a nice day outside, but I haven't I'm sorry, been one, outside. Two, six, six. I apologize. Thank, Thank you. you, Your Honor. This is from March 26, 2021, oh. right? That's what it looks like, yes. And this is after he made the statement you claim, the statements you claim are defamatory, like right, Ms. Heard? 21, yes. Ms. Heard, you tweeted at Adam Waldman, quote, yes, Mr. Waldman, I may be wearing makeup on this occasion, but on every occasion you will still be short. Did I read that right? Yes. <laughs> we can put this down. Thank you. Ms. Heard, since your relationship with Mr. Depp ended, you have completed your level three sommelier training, haven't you? I haven't completed it yet. Shut up! You testified! Shut no, I'm on up. level three. You said you were a level you three also sommelier. You had a baby, Shut right? Up. I have. And you enjoy being a mother? More than anything. You still love to cook? I do. And you love to hike? I've taken a break on hiking for a minute. She lied! You have friends, right? I'm a- I do have friends. And you spend time with those friends? Occasionally, when I can. And you exercise regularly? Is it hard to see them when you're not living with them? You just filmed a movie in March of 2022. Isn't that right? Yes, the one I just shot in Guatemala that I spoke of earlier. And you have, um, you had a major role in a major film that's scheduled to be released soon. Is that correct? Aquaman 2? As I said, I don't know if I will even be in the final cut or how much I will be. It was difficult to stay in the movie. You struck Mr. Depp multiple times during your relationship, didn't you, Ms. Heard? There were many times I had to use my body to defend myself, and that included swinging wherever I could. If it meant I could get away, absolutely. If it meant a a difference between a sore face and a broken nose, you bet I would. That's your testimony under oath that you never struck Mr. Depp as the initial aggressor? Well, I, he was holding well, me against the wall by my neck. You know, I might be the first person to have been the, the the first one to slap, which happened in Australia, you know, and he was choking me. But I wouldn't say I was the initial aggressor in that situation. You got physical with Mr. Depp often during your relationship, didn't you? I had to defend myself as best I could. Um, didn't seem to make much of a difference. You just couldn't control yourself, could you, Miss Heard? That's a little snarky. I tried to defend myself when I could, um, but it was after years of not defending myself. Can we please pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 356? And, Your Honor, portions of the exhibit were entered into evidence yesterday, but we moved to admit the entire recording. Okay, we're going to see the recording. And I can confirm that there's no other voices besides Ms. Hurd's and Mr. Depp's. My browser is giving me a hard time. I will be right back. um, From 129.27 to 130.07. So I have... 356A in evidence. Is any objection to the, the entire 356 coming into evidence? If you may, if I may. Okay. Just for sure. a moment, Your Honor. I have to check on something. Don't object, Elaine. I'm trying to restart my browser. I need the audio to play so I can refresh. You're fucking up the stream, man. I'm teasing. It's totally fair for Elaine to want to verify exactly which exhibit this is. Um, but the the level three sommelier, Elaine held her out. She said, you are. Excerpt for now, and we'll double check our notes on that, because there was one that had something in that. that you are a level three sommelier. Go, I just can't find my notes on that. Right we'll now. just call it 356B for now. That's Where's fine, you, your, your you notebook, the, Elaine? The times again? Yes, of course. Okay. One, two, nine, she said, you 27. Are a level three sommelier. One, three, zero, and now it's, zero, I'm seven. on level three. Right. Passing level three is substantial. So you have to be 356C. 
That is a very Thank large, you, large Lord. difference. So, all right. I can't promise you that I'll be perfect. I can't promise you that I'll be perfect. It's fair. I can't do it. You know, and I think honestly, if we hold each other accountable to that. Sorry, y'all. Apologies. Mr. Heard, that's you and Mr. Depp on that recording, correct? That's she correct. Was and you told Mr. Depp, quote, I can't promise you that I won't crashed. get I'm physical, sorry, y'all. End quote. Correct? That, that's correct. He was mm -hmm. accusing me of instigating something in a situation I explained yesterday. And you also told Mr. Depp that sometimes you get so mad you lose it, correct? That's correct. I also explained the context of that fight yesterday. Sorry. Isn't that exactly what you told Ben King on your way back from Australia? That you get so mad you lose it? Absolutely not. I know that that's what Ben King testified to, but I never had that conversation with Ben King. If we could please I play. Never, I'm sorry. Um, I checked and I have no objection to the entirety of the I never oh, had that conversation with Ben King. Evidence. All right. Thank you. Sorry, y'all, for having to restart. My browser was crashing. Please play from what's now been admitted. Apologies. Plaintiff's Exhibit 356 in its entirety from 705 to 743. I'm not going to be in a physical fucking altercation don't. with you. Then don't. You fucking hit me last night. You fucking... What about all the other times you split? It, come on, you cannot act like that. It's about that. It's well, not. Well, on a plane, I can't split. No, and you hit back. So don't act like you don't fucking participate. I pushed you. I'm not going to get into the details of that fight. You and I both know that you split when there is no physical violence involved. And that you do it and meet, like at the very beginning of fights these days. And if you split and you go into a different room and you don't actually leave that house, it does nothing but perpetuate the fight. And you don't actually do it respectfully. You don't. Ms. Heard, is that you and Mr. Depp on this recording? Yes, it is. Can we please uh, pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 343? And I believe that one's been admitted already into evidence. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. And just for the record, um, we're playing from 24601 to 24720. I said to Travis, I said, Good. no, I said to you, hey, Can't tell Travis what just happened. Oh, you told me to do it. You yeah. told me to. You said, go do that. I said, no, tell, tell him what just happened. And I lied. And that you punched me in the You're fucking right. thing. And you, you figured it out. Face. And you said, no, fuck it. No, I didn't. What the fuck are you talking about? And I, I watched you, you lie. And then I, I didn't I punch you, by the way. You, I'm sorry that I didn't uh, uh, no, hit you across the face in a proper slap, but I was hitting you. It was not punching you. Babe, you're not punched. Don't tell me what it feels like to be punched. You, you know, you've been a lot of fights, been around a long time. I don't know. Yeah. No, I, when you fucking have a close You didn't get punched. You got hit. I'm sorry I hit you like this, but I did not punch you. I did not fucking deck you. I fucking was hitting you. I don't know what the motion of my actual hand was, but you're fine. I did not hurt you. I did not punch you. I was hitting you. How are you? How, what am I supposed to do? Do this? I, I'm not sitting here bitching about it, am I? You are. That's the difference between me and you. You're a fucking baby. Because you start. You are such a baby. Grow the fuck up, Johnny. Yep. I did start a physical fight. Yeah, you did, so I had because, to get the fuck out of there. Yes, you did. So you did the right thing, the big thing. The, you know what? You are admirable. That's you and Mr. Depp on that recording, right, Mr. That's correct. And you said you hit Mr. Depp, right? Yeah, I had to hit his body to I get him out of the door. My question was, you said on that recording that you hit Mr. Depp, right? Yes, I did. And you there accused him of being a baby for not wanting to be in a physical fight with you, right? Incorrect. I accused him of being a baby oh. for complaining about me That's hitting him when scope. he was trying to get through the door. I was trying to barricade. Can we please pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 368? And again, Your Honor, this is a recording of just Mr. Depp and Ms. Heard. New um, recording. I'm going to move for the ex entire exhibit to be moved into evidence. All right. Any objection to 368? 
Uh, I don't think so, no, Your Honor. All right, no objection. 368 in evidence in its entirety. It's a shitty law. Anyway, I opened the bathroom door when you were knocking on it. After a few times, I opened. And, you know, you just commit, you just kept going. You just kept going, kept going. I tried to close the door three times. You know, please, please, just don't, you know, and then, wait, and then, then I, 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 I accidentally, I swear, when I was trying to close the door, I guess it scraped your toes. I, I didn't, I, you know, I didn't mean to do that. And I bent down, and you either pushed or you kicked. I think you kicked the door open. I, I mean, so the, court, the door, yeah, more open, so that it would I hit did, me. And it hit no, me. I, Wait, I didn't mean to. Wait, such a good team. Did you see that hand off? Head. But I did not mean to do that. I, I don't know what I was doing. bent down behind the door. I did not do anything to her. I did not kick a, a door or push a door so that it would hit you. I did not. I, I swear. That I, I don't even, that did not. It was not my intention. I, I think I remember when the door I scraped I my toes, I um, scraped. I, I reacted, but this whole, the door thing, I I, rem I I never did that. That wasn't on purpose. I might have done it on accident. Okay. But so let's say that was an accident. I, I then stood up. I don't even know if I said, I, mean, I might have said like, what the fuck, what, you know, because I've just been hit in the head with the fucking corner of a door. I'm so sorry. I did not. I'm sorry. And then I stood up. I'm so sorry. And then you fucking clocked me. I, I remember hitting you as a response to the door thing. And that's what mm -hmm. she testified to. Mm -hmm. And I'm really sorry about hitting you with the door was, or hitting your head. I did not mean to, nor... You didn't uh, mean to hit me in the head with the door, but you meant to I didn't punch mean, me in the jaw. I meant to hit you, and I I, I did not do this thing with the door. I, I do I mean, I did mean to hit you. So that you didn't, I didn't mean, mean to hit you? The door? No, God, no, I didn't. I didn't but punching me in the, in the jaw. I didn't... Okay, I'm sorry I hit you. I did mean to hit you, but it was in, a res in response. I just reacted in response to my foot. I just reacted. And I'm sorry, it's below me. Your foot? Well, that was why you punched me. Yeah. But but I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry if I... That's somewhat consistent with what yeah, she said, too. And that's you, too. Mr. Depp, on that recording, right? That's correct. And Mr. Depp was hiding from you in the bathroom. Isn't Incorrect. that right, Mr. Depp? Well, Mr. Depp said on that recording, I opened the bathroom door when you were knocking on it. Does he? he? I don't know if he said that. And I, I didn't hear that. And one Mr. Detail. Depp said, when I was trying to close the door, I guess it scraped your toes. He says that, doesn't he? Correct. And then you kicked the bathroom door into his head, didn't you? No, I didn't. And, and I then you punched him defended in the myself in that audio. You can hear it for yourself. And then you punched him in well, the, the jaw. I also did not do that. I tried to make that clear on the audio tape too. So, in futility. So Mr. Depp said, you meant to punch me in the jaw, right? Are you asking me what he said on the, yeah. on the recording? Yes, he said that. And then you respond, I meant to hit you, didn't you? I, as I explained yesterday, I was trying to get him off the door. And you said, I remember I did mean to hit you. Meaning the door. The door was on my feet. You I reacted this. instinctively to that. Now, you've heard this audio before, haven't you, Miss Heard? Yeah, we've already had this trial before. Yeah, you've played. It we've was played for you before. when you were deposed in 2016 no, in connection with your divorce from Mr. Depp, wasn't it? You didn't have this That's trial before. That's one of before. the times I've heard it, yes. Okay. So you've had plenty of time to think about how to respond to this recording, haven't you? I don't know what you mean by that. Well, let's take a look at how you responded to it the first time. Oh. Can we please pull up what will be marked? You're changing your testimony. Exhibit 1261. That's what she's getting at. You're changing your testimony. You've had plenty of time to think about how you're responding, and now the you've changed. The next thing that I'm going to play your, your to honor. you okay. uh, as your Hugh. Honor. There's an objection. There's new. Oh, you want to come? She keeps saying new. This isn't new. If it's the deposition, it's not new. So if it's the deposition, it's not new new and that's where this is going this is going to what she said in her deposition this isn't 
new information. So thank you all for your patience. I had to refresh the browser browser so we wouldn't have to refresh it later. So thank you. Um, will Camille be partnered by the end of this? That's not quite how it works, but I think that when, um, I don't know how many years she's been an associate, but I imagine that her performance here will absolutely uh, rightfully uh, positively impact her career and uh, her respect and regard within the legal community. I hope that it does. Uh, would Dr. Curry's report be posted on the court website? No, Dr. Curry's report is not in evidence. Oh, I have that Apple Watch band. I really like that. That's the Pride band from like a year or two ago with the dots. I love that Apple Watch band. I, yes. Anyway, I've got my other one on today, but I love that one. Um, so no, Dr. Curry's report is not in evidence. Dr. Curry's testimony is in evidence. So no, her report would not be posted. Why hasn't someone on Johnny's team burst through the doors holding amazing last minute evidence? Um, I'm waiting for that to happen. Unfortunately, that's not how trials work, but that's maybe how the TV show will work. They'll they'll slam open the doors and Kate Moss will walk through and just be like, I'm here, Johnny. That would be, that would not happen except on TV court. I think we're seeing some of those moments though with this evidence. They know what this evidence is, but we are definitely seeing moments with the evidence they have available to them. Um, really pointing out clearly to this jury the differences. Is there going to be a blowback punishment from the $6 million comment? No, she wasn't supposed to bring it up. She brought it up. The shit's out of the horse. The jury already heard it. And if you make a bigger deal about it, then it can solidify in the jury's mind. So that's trial strategy. So um, does Amber know about the petition? I don't so, know. Your Honor, for reference, and I will provide a copy of the deposition, Ms. Hurd's deposition in the divorce. It's uh, page 372 lines. I did not Starting hear that. at line five through 377. Line Dep 12. will go last in closing. So closing will be Dep heard and then a rebuttal um, from Dep. It should be in three parts. Um, is it a strategy that they admit evidence last minute? No, but these are these are things that are impeachment, so they don't have to be disclosed at the same time. Um, so, the, but this is all stuff that the other side has. It's just which portion Honor, that's being with used may we please as part play? of it. We we'll do closing. Page, it will probably page. be Ben Chu and Camille Vasquez. Oh, yeah, they did the opening. Page number again, yes, please. absolutely. And for the other side, it'll probably be Rottenborn and um, oh, Elaine yeah. because that's page who did it. The opening. That's how it should be. Five to three. Why does she keep looking away when answering? She keeps looking at the jury. 12. So when she looks yeah, to the side, 12. that's the jury. Okay. Are they wasting deb court time? I mean, it's fair. These are fair objections. These aren't like unduly wasting time. Question, does Elaine not use her microphone so that the audience can't hear from home? No, I think she's flustered. And the the microphone's there. And see, these microphones have a little button here. Theirs is not covered in papers. Her desk is scattered in papers. I don't know if she doesn't trust her team. This team is working together very well. Um, her desk is completely littered with exhibits. And I don't think she can always reach the microphone as she's thinking of speaking because she's also looking for exhibits. I don't know why her team isn't doing more of that. Like we're seeing from Depp's team. We're seeing the lawyers here in the front row doing quite a lot of work. And then we are seeing this team sitting in the back row with their binders doing a lot of work. This would give me chills. Like I need binders with tabs and numbers of where things are. This seems to be paperclip stacks. It's not the way I would organize a trial with this much evidence, but that is their choice, how they work best. I thought she testifies. Um, the only time she landed a punch was on the staircase. She did. She did testify to that. She sure did. At closing, I want to see a physical chart with all the timeline of the accusations. I mean, they might they might just do it verbally, but they can use demonstratives in closing, which means things that they show. Thank you, Lyric. First time catching you live. I love how you object non-responsive to your kids. I do. When I ask them a question, I'm like, objection, non-responsive. My sister is an attorney and teases her wife with a relevance and asked and answered. I do that too sometimes. Thanks for the great informative content and the delightful I, I, personality. I, I, well, thank I you. I don't think it's an impeachment, Your Honor, after reading it. Objection. Well, that's fine. You Thank don't you have to think it is. Can please have it published to the jury in the gallery. I did notice that she tucked her hair and now it's been back. I did notice that. Let's publish it to everyone. The next thing that I'm going to play to you. Audio uh, or video? As Hugh. Video. Well, the internet will be happy about this. Mm 
Your Honor, Oh no, why are we approaching? Why? I mean, other than it's other than it's difficult, this is the 2016 depot. Um, everybody look, chat, you guys know what's coming. Yes, yes, yes. What happens if the jury has watched um or seen social media coverage, even if by accident, they would generally they should disclose it to the court and they can be removed from the jury. So they shouldn't be watching any coverage of this. So Elaine's desk is is kind of a mess. Two completely different people um, from 2016, Amber, and this one. They're going to see it. So I don't know what is going on they with. Do a prop, they can do it through reading the deposition, Your Honor. They don't need to do that. They don't need to do that. Yes, they do. And you haven't objected to the video before. Yes, You're objecting to the video see. because it looks bad. They are allowed to use the video. They have it. She's objecting. They can use just the transcript. The transcript is not the same. This video is widely available on social media and it shows Amber snapping at the lawyers. So no, they are not going to not use the video. She didn't object to video coming in earlier and it's, I don't think she's going to win this objection now. So I think it's going to come in, but we're seeing them argue over it. Okay. That's fine. Thank you. I have no objection. Can we please uh, start it over? What's happening? Are we getting the video? It is smart to use the video. They have to see the difference. And that is very important. And that is proper impeachment, I think. The next thing that I'm going to play to you uh, as they want. you. Would you listen to this, please? This is punching. Right. punching. Let's Wow. Yeah, they did. They covered the transcript. You're right. It was rolling down here. That's fine. Kind of a silly thing to argue over. She's not eating in court. She's eating in deposition, not in the court. So you told him in that uh, uh, excerpt that you hit him with the door, but did not intend to hit him. Correct? Did you say that? I uh, I said whatever I said in that recording. I okay. don't. Um, I said whatever I said. For me to remember every single. And that's a recording marked as exhibit the punchy. Uh, Q. 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 Would you continue to listen to exhibit Q? <clears throat> Are these from the same day? Uh, I, I this is going to be a long bit of cross right now. We're going to get into all of this deposition, I imagine. And then the stairway incident. But they're showing her disinterested. Wow. And eating. So this is impeaching that she responded to this audio, the same audio that was just played in court. She responded differently at the deposition. So that's what's going on right now. And she's not even listening. She's joking with her attorneys. She doesn't think this is a big deal. We're eating. I'm eating too. No, God, no, I, I'm, I haven't had lunch. She had either, Amber. Okay, I'm sorry. Oh, 
So on the tape, that's... you tell Johnny Depp that you did mean to hit him. And it also misrepresents, misrepresents that what actually happened, which is him trying to get into a room. I'm trying to keep him out of And then he runs the door over my toes, trying to get into the room. I try to push him out of it, which is what the hit is referred to. And Johnny, whenever he was injured or touched at all, was referred to it in these ways of punching or clocked or whatever. And whether you discussed it with him or not, the last thing you do in, in talking to him afterwards or trying to reconcile with him is to get into what the definition of those words mean to him. Never, I never even addressed it. He would, if he was ever pushed, it was, it was a quote. He called it a, a cold clock. I mean, it's just very dramatic. Isn't it true? Wow. That's a different response. That sure is a different response. You're smiling as that audio recording is being played in your deposition, aren't you, Ms. Heard? Not smiling because of the audio. I'm smiling because of what's happening around me. You even roll your eyes at one point, don't you? Yep. I was sitting opposite a whole table full of lawyers who were snickering, laughing, and rolling their eyes at me while I was talking. Oh. Is there something amusing about kicking a door into your husband's head? No, I was rolling my eyes and commenting on what I was experiencing at that time in yeah. recounting the story. Is there something amusing the to you about respond. punching your husband in the jaw? That is not what I was smiling about. And no, I do not think it's amusing. Ms. Hurd, you testified wow. yesterday that all you want to do is move on. Do you mm -hmm. remember that testimony? Yes, I do. Yeah, your exact already, words were, you've already brought it up I just to me want on. him to leave me alone. I want to move on with my life and he won't let me. Do you remember that? Yes, that is correct. But that's not true, is it, Ms. Hurd? Oh boy. It is very true. What did she do you just now? just haven't been able to move on with your life, have you? From yep. Mr. Depp. I'm here, aren't I? Yeah. In fact, it's on October answer. 11th, 2018, you actually commenced an yeah, arbitration action answers. against Mr. Depp for defamation, didn't you? Um, I don't recall that, no. Your Honor, may I approach? May we approach? There's another defamation case? Wait, what? Is she talking about the counterclaim? Is she not talking about the counterclaim? I have questions. I have a lot of questions. Um, they knew she was going to perjure herself and they were ready. They knew she was going to distance herself, I think, from the answers. And so they were ready to, I mean, I think it was kind of predictable what she would distance herself from given how much other evidence they have. Shout out to Michelle's little sister, Kat, for putting me on your, to your channel. Could Johnny Depp sue Disney and Warner Brothers for wrongful termination if he wins this case? I think it would Pull be difficult to. Exhibit 219. I think they would say it was over creative differences they're going to distance themselves from it too. And Ms. Heard, if you could please read to yourself the first page of Exhibit 219. All right. No, this is a case that she tried to bring. So you need a t-shirt. I have questions. I have one. It's on the Law Nerd Shop at lawnerdshop.com. We do have one. Um, yeah. I, I say that a lot, and it's true. I do have questions. She, you were supposed to read it. Are you done reading? And if you can also read to yourself the second page of Exhibit 219. I don't know what this is referring to. I'm very curious. Yes. And if you can scroll down, Tom. Again, Miss Heard, just to Thanks, look Tom. at that page. What's the odds that they're being surprised? No, they know all of this. They're not being surprised. They know everything that's coming. And again, this is if their client tried to initiate an action, their client needs to tell them about it. Um, have the whole office hooked and my mom in another state watching. And scroll down to Hi, Nan -Nan. the next page, please. Or Nay Nay. Nay Nay. I added an N. Apologies. All right, we're going to get to some questions while Amber Heard is reading quietly to herself on the stand. Does anyone notice Amber Heard is not crying on cross examination? Nope. She has come in um, steely for sure. Do you think it shows disrespect that she's eating? I mean, it's a deposition. They can be long days. I think it's the eye rolling and body language that they're getting to, the flippantness. What exactly does impeachment mean? It is, it's a form of evidence, stuff that comes in for a certain purpose. So it's uh, calling someone out with receipts, essentially. There has to be 
proper impeachment, there's improper impeachment, what you're allowed to do to try to show somebody responded differently to something, did something differently before, has a bias, those kinds of things. So that's what impeaching evidence is. I should just actually pull it up in the rules of evidence and read the impeachment section at the break. I've got it. Elaine needs it on her desk. Does that refresh your recollection, Ms. Heard, that you did, in fact, in October they have backup 2018, two months before you published the op-ed in this case, the they have subject alternates. of this case, you initiated an arbitration against Mr. Uh, Depp arbitration. for defamation? It's not my understanding I initiated an arbitration. I, It's my understanding that our lawyers sent a lawyer, I mean, a letter to his lawyers after he called me a liar again, effectively, in an interview. And that's two months before your op-ed that was published in December of 2018, right? That is correct. And that's six months before Mr. Depp filed a case, this case against you, correct? That's correct. So you fired the first shot, not Mr. Depp. Hmm. I disagree. We sent a letter. From your lawyers? Thank you. Are you done with cross? That's a shot across the bow. Our letter sent a lawyer. That is a shot across the bow. I thought she said, thank you. I, I thought she was going with, thank you. I have nothing further, but we're clearly not there yet. I didn't understand it that way. What's arbitration? Ms. Heard, isn't it true that you once a filled out a customs form falsely so that you could get <laughs> <laughs> okay. Australia dogs are coming in. Um, they knew this was coming. I don't understand why they're going to the bench on this. If she lied on a customs form, um, it comes in for lying. I love how Emily does a cur <laughs> curious cat head tilt when something is interesting or new. I, I do. I do do that. Um, October 2018 arbitration is before the op-ed. We absolutely just cleared that up. Doggy gate is happening. For those of you that don't know, um, Amber Heard's been accused of lying on a customs form to bring her dogs illegally into Australia. Johnny Depp was already there filming. Um, she settled that case in Australia. It is said in numerous reports on social media that she is still potentially facing action there. This should have come up. Uh, maybe it didn't come up in motions in Lemonade. I don't know. Let's get to some questions. They're going to probably be up at the bench for a minute. Do you think this trial will be made into a TV show someday like the OJ trial? Yes. I think it won't take as long. Yes. I think, I think people are already, already thinking about how that's going to work. Um, what please cast law tube <laughs> include us. We we're part of the moment. <laughs> why did they redact the transcript? Hard to hear. Uh, I think that's why, because the transcript hasn't been run past them. I, I think it was, it was, it was slowing down the flow a little bit and they didn't want the jury reading what was said. They want them to hear the audio and then use the official transcript in court. I think that's fair. If they haven't had a chance to go over it, they are protecting their case. Question foot soldier here. Hello. Will the grumpy in the bed come up in cross? Um, it did come up and cross the first day. It hasn't come up today and it, I don't think it will come up today. We're past her leaving for Coachella. Can a case like this be appealed by the losing side? It can. Civil cases can be appealed. It's just very expensive. How does she walk on sliced feet, even with high heels? Did we ever get an answer to that? No, we didn't. Neither did the jury. Everybody's got questions. Do you think uh, no one else wanted to rep Amber Heard, and that's why she ended up with these lawyers? No. Uh, they came off more junior than Johnny's team. They're definitely not junior. Uh, they have a different style. That's that's for sure. Um so no, I don't know how Amber chose her attorneys. They definitely have a different style. Does the jury get to read the full articles that were mentioned this morning? No, they don't. Those aren't admitted into evidence. Those were for impeachment to try to show that there were these other headlines out there. The jury does not get them. Amber's theory is that Johnny can't remember these fights because he seems to remember just fine in the recordings. Do you think the jury sees that? But he seems to remember just fine in the recordings. I'm sure they do. I think the jury will probably put more weight on the recordings than the testimony in court, and they can. Um, why don't they talk on the mic when they approach? Because the jury can't hear what they're arguing over. It's not in evidence. Um, attorneys can say things that could sway the jury. So we don't get to hear. I hate not hearing sidebars. I want to know. Um, I want it to be like sports where we can like hear on the sidelines. Does Elaine keep losing the sidebars? Mm, generally. Um, who will play you in the movie of the week about this case? Me. I'm available. Uh, Margot Robbie. You testified Amber yesterday in the movie. that when you left the courthouse after obtaining the domestic violence restraining order against Mr. Depp, you walked out to quote a sea of uh, paparazzi oh, cameras. Oh, they had right? to move on about the dogs. That's correct. 
They didn't get to ask about the dog, so they lost that one. Sea of cameras. That's correct. They lost about the customs. Quiet when you went into the courthouse that morning. And the divorce had remained under the radar up to that point. You testified that no one knew about your divorce, so you thought it was going to stay that way, right? No, I always figured it would come out. I just was trying to buy time. You knew the media had been alerted that you were filing for divorce, right, Ms. Heard? No, I just knew that it was impossible to do that privately, so you could just hope it was a matter of time. You, you knew filed. they were going to be there, didn't you? No, I did not. I mean, I assume, I assume since it's a public building that there is that likelihood or not likelihood, but possibility. They don't just but, camp out um, there. I worked there. There I aren't was, just paparazzi you know, there I was, every day. I was shocked. There aren't just paparazzi the hanging Jody out there Gottlieb every day. was there at the courthouse with you, wasn't she? Publicist. Yes, she was. So you anticipated that you might need your publicist? I thought the filing might make, um, well, I was told the filing was public that it would be impossible. There's no way for you to do a, a, fi a private filing. And then the second that I filed for the TRO, it would be public news. I didn't expect all these photographers it and doesn't cameras to get show online, up at the though. courthouse in real time. It doesn't. It did. We could please uh, pull up plaintiff's exhibit. Uh, it doesn't just get online that fast, which is, though. A uh, clip from your divorce deposition. And you have at uh, page, if I can alert you, you have the transcript there, page 74. Lines 22 you said through 74. 74. Line 22 through Eight. 75, line 13. Yep. Camille has been building this cross, and it's been very linear in time, I'm sorry, just... which has been helpful. 72 lines. 74. We line do tanks 22 for the summer. Through 75, line I will. 13. Have a see, Mom. I will. Imagine her doing a mic drop. I don't think she'll do an actual mic drop. It might be a proverbial mic drop. Do you think they had to move on from the doggy gate stuff? I don't, they lost whatever objection, whatever objection Elaine brought was sustained by the court about doggy gate. So they might not have had the evidence to back it up. Um, so I don't, why are they approaching again? Uh, but they are approaching again. We've had a lot. We've had a lot of approaches today. Um, Michelle said migraine day, but not giving up on you. Love you. What do you think? Um, uh, do you think Elon will be brought up? Probably not. They already brought him up yesterday. I don't know if they need to. Um, so I don't know if they need to. Is there a side door or underground entrance to that court? Yes, that is a courthouse I used to work at. Um, and there is underground. There is a back door. There is, they are not, um, unfamiliar with having celebrity cases at that courthouse. The Britney Spears conservatorship was there. A lot of high profile family law and divorce matters are there. Child custody matters are there. Um, the family law floor is kind of separate and apart. Well, not separate and apart, but you, it's a specific floor um, in the courthouse. So it's not just mingled in with all the other stuff. So if you're in the bottom level of the building, you're not just going to see what's going on on that floor unless you know that floor and go up there specifically. So yeah, there's a lot of ways to get in and out of that building. Um, and they can make arrangements to do so. I don't think that's going to come up at, with the in and outs of that building, but yes, there is a lot of options for movement uh, in and around that particular courthouse. Um, and I used to work on that family law floor. My office was there. She's lying. She fully exposed her entire face for the photo ops outside the courthouse. Do you think they do doggy gate would be objected to? Probably. Um, she's lying. She's, we could oh, okay. please play and display to the jury, plaintiff's exhibit 1280. Meng said, I have to go to bed now, it's 2.23 a.m. Ms. Heard, did you send a text Ooh. message to Jerry Judge on May 24, 2016, telling Jerry Judge, quote, I'm desperately trying to reach Johnny. It's extremely important. Please tell him. I remember sending the text message that is in front of me right now to Jerry. Uh, and I would like, I remember sending this because I wanted to tell Johnny or have him told by Jerry or someone who knew him or was close to him. Basically, I didn't want him to find out online that I had or was about to file or I had already filed for divorce. I wanted him to know verbally. So I was trying to reach him through a third party to tell him. When I say reach, I'm specifically saying I would like him to know information coming from me or coming from Jerry, from me, 
so that he finds out about the divorce filing or my intention to do so from some other source other than TMZ, which was alerted. Oh, fuck. You slipped up there, didn't you, Miss Heard? You let it slip out that TMZ had been alerted to your filing of the domestic violence restraining didn't order, didn't there. you? I disagree. That's not what I'm talking about. TMZ is the same outlet that you released the video of Mr. Depp attacking the kitchen cabinets the day before this deposition was taken, wasn't it? I didn't do that. I don't TMZ know how owns to do that. the copyright to that video now, doesn't it? I have no idea yes, what TMZ owns. Did you for that? I never got paid for it because I had nothing to do with that. So TMZ was just lucky in getting the inside scoop to your divorce from Mr. Depp, huh? I have no idea. It is not, that's not my area of ex expertise. I wouldn't even know how to do that. And also, what does that get me? If I wanted to leak things about Johnny, Let it go. I could have done that in a much go. more Let successful way, in a bigger way, Let it go. for years. Not when years. you were extorting him for $7 million? I got a fraction of what I was entitled to in the state of California, by the way. Right. What extortion? Tossa Van Rees, your ex-wife, right? That's right. She's my ex-partner. She's the one that told, that you told oh. this jury Mr. Depp was jealous of, right? Yeah, well, that was a 2013 fights in, around March, yes. You testified that he tried to burn one of her paintings, right? That's correct. You testified he tried to burn um, one of your favorite paintings that she did, right? I don't know if it was one of my favorites. You committed domestic violence against Miss Van Rie during your relationship, didn't you? No, I did not. You assaulted her at a Seattle airport in 2009, didn't you? No, I did not. What? And people saw that. That's not true. And it was covered in the press. Isn't that true? It was, a, it was planted in the press by Johnny's team two days after I got the TRO. Uh, not coincidentally. Can you please pull up plaintiff's exhibit 1279? No, she did not. Your Honor, may we approach? Um, that's, that's, ha that's happening. That is happening right now. I have never seen that TMZ slip. What I will say is that when that cabinet slamming video was played in court, TMZ copyright struck my channel three times for that video claiming ownership of the copyright. You could please have that article displayed for the witness. Oh, this is an no. article from two years ago, correct, Ms. Heard? I don't know when this May was. of 2020. That's not when it came out, no. This story started getting planted in yeah. after I got a TRO. There's no question after pending. I got a restraining order against There's no Johnny. question pending. There's no question pending. The headline says, Amber Heard Objection, allegedly Your Honor. struck. Objection, Your Honor. I, I think Your Honor ruled she can't say that. If you want to approach again. That's obviously not what the court ruled. Otherwise, the court would have reminded Camille that she can't say that. Um, at least Elaine found her microphone button. We knew today was going to be spicy. I think this is the end of Cross. You leave with the bigger bombs. We'll talk about the publishing of the op-ed at the break. She she wrote it. The title reads, Amber Heard allegedly grabbed, <sighs> she won. struck her ex-girlfriend at the airport. She won. Doesn't it? Yes, and that's not true. Oh, dear. May we approach? Okay. She's opened the door. She's opened the door. The door is fucking open. Oh! You know why the door is open? Because she has now denied it and she can now be impeached on this denial with whatever evidence they have to prove it. They can now bring it in. She has denied that this is true. Well, there is going to be a police report regarding this. She was arrested. The reason that Camille asked to approach is because she's a professional and she is a good attorney and she is not going to try to slam through that door until she clears it with the court and Umbridge is going to have kittens over this because it's all going to come in because Amber said that's not true. The door has been opened. We will see what happens. <sighs> oh, she, she, 
Well, so the article, you're gonna the make title is Amber Heard allegedly struck her ex-girlfriend. Already... No, oh, over, let's go. Thank you. If I may start over. Yes, start over, Camille. You Amber go off, Heard girl. Amber Heard allegedly struck her ex-girlfriend, Tossa Van Rie, at the airport in 2009. Did I read that right? Yes, this is another example of the smear campaign. <laughs> so Mr. Depp is not the only domestic partner you've assaulted, is he, Ms. Heard? I've never assaulted Mr. Depp or anyone else that I've been romantically linked to, ever. Uh -huh, sure. No further questions. No Joanna. further questions. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, redirect. That was Ms. masterful. Heard, did Ms. Van Ray come out after that article came in and make a public statement that was false? Of course she did. Objection, Your Honor. Hearsay. Hearsay. Move to strike. Yeah, I should be at least be overruled. No. Thank you. Of course she did. Okay. Now, Isn't there a police report? Let's talk about the TMZ alerted. Explain to the jury what you meant by the TMZ was alerted. The link's coming in hot. Uh, so when you make these kind of filings, meaning divorce, uh, marriage, things like that. Oh, explain they how the legal system record. works to us. And so when we file for divorce, when I file for divorce, I ask my team to file in the most discreet way, literally no discreet to way. put it under a stack of papers and file it at the end of day. So kind of had more of a shot of being missed by the paparazzi and by TMZ and those sorts of and by Emily publicity D. outlets. Legal comment. I believe that we had been remarkably lucky following the divorce that it wasn't picked up and that it gave me a, a precious few days um, of, of, of peace at that really fragile time. When I found out that they were going to run the story or that they had the information, I was try and get a hold of Johnny to clarify that I did not do this in a punitive way. I didn't want him to be mad at me. I didn't, you know, I didn't want him to find out in that sort of context online. And who had connections to TMZ? Objection calls for speculation. It does. Do you know? I do know. Johnny Your and I spoke about Your Honor that. calls for speculation. The objection. It does. Did Mr. Depp tell you no, about no leading? No, with object. Yes, object. we talked about it. His lawyer, Laura Wasser. Okay. I, that should now, have been objected to. At the very beginning here, um, you were asked by Ms. Vasquez about Vasquez. why Mr. Depp Not Vas won't or can't look you in the eye. And she read out or she played a tape in which Mr. Depp said, You will not see my eyes again. Do you recall that? She and that was did. During the Not. mediation process in July, correct? That was Direction the leading. first one. Sustained okay. the leading. When was this? That was in July of 2016. That was the first she, mediation she attempt. Just we met mocked. after that, and Johnny very much looked me in the eye. Please tell the jury about the next meeting after he said, you will not see my eyes again. We met in the lawyer's office. They gave us a moment. Johnny kissed me again, held me. I cried, he cried, and then we had a short exchange and he put a note in my pocket that said, I'll love you dead or alive, my Slim, with his new phone number on it. I'd like to bring up, Michelle, if you can, Defendant's Exhibit 1581L. She mocked him. She mocked him. Elaine, I don't think that's good. I You'll never see my eyes again. Elaine, I... Uh, do you recognize this? I did, not, your honor. I did not have any you of this on my... Yes, um, um, I had none of that on my, on my bingo cards, but Twitter and, um, and TikTok are going to absolutely relive that moment for quite a fucking while. But I don't know if mocking Depp is going to play well for the jury, especially when you have heard teams out here saying that what you're seeing is Depp's attorneys um, pounding on the victim and what have you. And then you have Elaine getting on redirect and mocking the plaintiff. <sighs> this is going to be a mess. This is going to be an absolute mess. I'm here for all of the beautiful disaster that's about to happen, but this is going to be a mess. I, mess. I think we're at DEFCON Can Red with the mocking. The jury, what do you think? What the coaster was that he slipped into your pocket, what it said. Coaster? It said, I love you forever, my slim, dead or alive. And what, if anything, did it have in addition? His new phone number. And, and you have a picture of that? To be, just so we're clear, 
On how many answered. occasions in that second mediation did Mr. Depp look you in the eye? Um, many. Okay. And when Ms. Vasquez asked you Vasquez. if you knew why Mr. Depp couldn't or wouldn't look you in the eye here or in the UK, you said, yes, you know. Why? Please tell the jury why. Because he's guilty. What's with the sappy face? He's, he knows he's lying. Otherwise, why can't he look at me? It's a whole different tone. I survived. I survived that man, and I'm here, and I'm able to look at him. Which says a lot. Why you are they hammering on this? She wants this to come in. Uh, from March 15, 2013. Do you recall how long before the picture oh, you had sustained that bruise? I do. How long? I think Two Camille weeks. is the queen of the lawyers. Camille rocked You today. were asked a number of times by Ms. Vasquez if Vasquez. you took pictures from your incidents earlier in the relationship. Yes. Why didn't you? It was something I started doing only kind of incidentally. You know, I was commenting to my best friend. I was looking for support from my mom, things like that. You know, there, there was, I'm ashamed to say, never a thought that, that this would happen. I mean, not until Why would you December, be ashamed of that? And my best friend taking pictures of me. Why would you be ashamed to capture of not thinking Did of that the worst? Even, that wasn't even a thing. It has been suggested by Ms. Oh, Vasquez right to, to you in your questions that you didn't tell anyone about the abuse until the TRO. Is that true? Objection, Your Honor. Leading. All right. What if any? All right. What if any? Who did you it. tell about the abuse during the time it was happening? Calls for Objection, hearsay. Your Honor. Leading. That's not offered to Calls for hearsay. hearsay. Hey, Elaine. Your Honor, it's Elaine. It's, it's, it's leading. It's Elaine. Next question. Okay. Elaine. What if anything did you tell to anyone about the abuse? Objection, Your Honor. Hearsay. I'll sustain. Your Get honor, it, Camille. Your honor, may I approach? That's him? fine. May I approach? I'm going to tell you how it's not hearsay, and the judge is still going to say that it's hearsay. The um, the uh, um, the shift between the end of cross and redirect is noticeable in Amber Heard's demeanor, very much noticeable. Um, I will. I mean, I will try to see if we can if we could ever interview Camille Vasquez. I would absolutely um, do that for sure. Camille should object to the mispronouncing of her last name. I think. With And again, I mispronounce shit all the time. I think that what we've seen from Umbridge is that she mispronounces everyone's name all of the time. And part of the reason I call her Umbridge, because A, she grates, but B, Bretta Hoft is just hard to say um, for me. But she has called Amber Heard by the wrong name. She called Dr. Hughes by the wrong name. I'm not surprised that she's calling, um, you know, Elaine is calling Camille Vasquez, Camille Camille Vasquez. I just don't think it looks good. And the same with the Amica Arnica. It just annoys me. Like I'm just annoyed. Um, I'm ashamed that I never predicted being caught. Lexi, it's odd to me that someone would say, I'm ashamed that I wasn't documenting the violence that was being done to me. Why would you be ashamed of that? If you started documenting things, why wouldn't you say I was afraid and I documented things because I was afraid. It doesn't make sense. But now that we've gotten in hot and I had sustained a motion for DEFCON red, we are going to DEFCON WTF because it is definitely deserved. So as we do this, um, for those of you that are new here, DEFCON red does flash. The flashing will end when the music ends. If you are flashing sensitive just know that so there we go let's get back to this no i don't think that's because it just looks Ms. Heard, how I'm many yeah. people have you shared the fact of abuse prior to 2015. Objection outside Objection, the Honor, scope of leading. cross. Outside Calls the scope. Hearsay. Outside Call the me. scope. Overruled. Outside the scope of cross. Roughly about 10. 
Are they all coming into court? Can you name them? Objection, yes. Your Honor. Relevance. Hearsay. Relevance. She, I think she can. It's not offered. It's just to show that she had. Stop. That she informed people. Arguing. Objection, Your Honor. Can we approach? Can, this can, is, this again, is preposterous, Elaine. You don't do speaking objections saying it's offered to prove the thing. Also, thank you. We think you don't do speaking objections to prove the thing because now Elaine is directly telling the jury. No, no. It's just to prove that she's doing this and this and that. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, that's completely inappropriate. And you can see Vasquez trying to push the button on her mic going. Ah, 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 ah. This is going. There weren't this many objections during cross because Elaine couldn't object to anything because Camille stayed within the appropriate rules of evidence. Is Camille done? Yeah, Camille's completely fed the fuck up at this point, I think. So this is now, just preposterous. You were asked. And again, um, moved on. Whether you had consulted a medical doctor about any problems with your nose, she correct? Magical. That's correct. And you indicated that you, in fact, had yeah. after the divorce. Objection correct? leading. It's leading I, I, as I, fuck. Did did you did you or did you not <sighs> consult a, 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 a e e n t after? How many the objections? Divorce? Objection did. leading. Did you produce medical records? to the defendants <laughs> relating to this. Objection, calls for leading calls. Right. I'll sustain the objection. Thank you. And, and Next question. Your Honor, if I could, you please admonish counsel. Witness could be instructed not to answer until I right. lodge could, my objection. Wait for the objection, could, please. Could we bring up defendants exhibit one? Your Honor, could you please admonish counsel to ask better questions? Could you just remind her that this is a trial? Do you recognize this document? My, my screen is black. Oh, sorry. That's Wait. fair. Yes, I do. And could you tell us what it is? I That's forgot to take the, notes. I don't uh, know what's happening. What my ENT, the ears, nose, and throat doctor, um, told me was. Uh, 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 stop right, talking. When there's objection, please stop Sorry, talking. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, I'll sustain the objection as to hearsay. Okay. Stop trying to get into more. Uh, I, I'm, uh, I don't like this style. And Elaine's getting into the style she gets into in cross, where she's trying to just squeak stuff in. What, if any, you were asked if you had. It, it was suggested that you had not produced this in discovery. Is that true? Objection, Objection. Your Honor. Leading. Your Honor, she, and she absolutely should have done that. It's leading. It is leading question. Stop now. it, it's Elaine. Leading. Just leading. What, if anything, did you do to produce medical records to the defendant, to the uh, plaintiff in this case? I turned over all of my devices and so, they had no, a, you didn't. Um, the... Johnny's team had a third party or someone they selected as a third party oh. go and pull oh. all relevant oh. Oh. from oh. those oh. devices, which I handed over. Oh, Do you know how many she were handed over. <laughs> I, I, hundreds of thousands, I believe. Maybe, maybe. Objection, Your Honor. Lack of foundation. Yep. All right, I'll sustain the objection. Next question. She didn't and do any do of you, that. Do you? What, if anything, did you produce to the plaintiff in connection with your consultation with an I'm ENT specialist? I'm surprised they're getting into this. Relating to your I'm surprised notes. they're trying to get into this. Leading, sustained. This what, is foundation, what, hearsay. What, what if anything? It's not the cure all. It's sustained. Yes, Your Honor. Yes. Finally, say what we've all been thinking, Judge A. Get it. What if anything is not the cure all? When did you Boss. see an ENT specialist? 2017. Judge A is over 2016 it. 2016 or 17. And as a result of that consultation, Go what off. did you learn about your nose? Objection, Your Honor, hearsay. I'm not asking her to tell what they said. Yeah, I'll sustain the objection. You're still trying to do it, Elaine. You're not going to make fetch happen on this one, babe. Stop. Girl, just stop. Just stop. Take a breath, move what on. What if any production did you make <laughs> to the this is a mess. of and the your jury's medical see it's a mess. records with the ENT? Objection, Your Honor, lack of foundation. This is a mess. Move on. If you only, I, if you only have foundation. Do you see Rotten Do you Horn? know? Not Rotten Horn, sorry, Chew. The records, medical records uh, no. from your EMT were produced in discovery. Objection, Your Honor, Perfect. lack of foundation calls for speculation. I'm just... I'm, I'm, asking, if she knows. I'm just I'm, trying to get this evidence yes. in. And do you, rec do you recall? This does not help them the way they think it does. I'm trying. I'm trying. We got um, that. We got that. What, if anything? <laughs> nope. 
did the medical records reflect about nope. your nose? Calls for hearsay, medical nose. conclusion. Calls for expert testimony. Move the Do fuck you have on. Injuries to your nose. Yes. Please describe those to the jury. Now I have um, I'm gonna a bunch of scars. Objection. That I'm going to object to the extent it calls for hearsay. And it calls for a medical conclusion. And lack of foundation. Oh, oh, overruled. And improper expert opinion. Yep. Well, that's appropriate. Yes. She can certainly it, testify to. No, she can't. We'll, we'll see where it goes. Go ahead. Okay. No, she can't. You have to bring in doctors I to prove have, bones uh, are broken. A significant amount of scar tissue in my nose. Objection, Your Honor. I'll sustain the objection. That's and strike, strike it. What if any difficulty do you have breathing? Move on. Objection leading. What if anything? And that does cure. Uh, no, but oh, it I'll, doesn't. I'll, I'll overrule the objection. Thank you. Do you remember the question? I have um, a significant amount of trouble breathing at night, and I have been putting off having surgery for it. Okay. Which could be caused from a number of things. Are we done? Are we moving on from this? This was abysmal, and this did not help. Now, you were asked... About you might be December embarrassed. 15, 2015. DUI guy has died of secondhand and embarrassment. Vasquez suggested that you did not report the abuse or the injuries to Aaron Falati. Do you recall Objection, that question? Objection, Your Honor. Leading. leading. Your Honor, I'm Sustained. entitled to go into what Ms. Vasquez is. Objection is leading. I'll sustain. But you're the not entitled to lead, Elaine. You need to ask you open report? ended questions. You're still what leading. What anything did you report to Aaron Falati? about the abuse you sustained on 12 15 2015 objection leading and You're hearsay approach the judge is going to rip into elaine because this is wasting court time it is unprofessional and the judge there is no way this judge isn't going to look at elaine and be like what the fuck are you doing? You cannot lead. This is not cross. You need to ask the questions. Did you notice that there weren't this many leading questions when other witnesses were on direct like Johnny Depp? I am just appalled watching this. Your Honor, I want to get this evidence in. Can you tell me how to do it? No, I can't, Elaine. But what I can tell you is that what if any is not a cure that this is leading and you cannot ask leading questions, create a direct, create a redirect and move on. I'm going to answer some questions. So I don't just continue yelling to the 107,000 of you that are here. Thank you for being here, but fuck, this is pissing me off question. Does the court reporter correct Elaine on her record or leave the names as said? Well, I don't know if you spell Vasquez Vasquez different, but Amica would be accurately reflected as Amica, not Arnica, because it needs to be an accurate record of what was said. Um, question, how does this align with her cross? Like Amber said, she never sought medical support for her injuries, but now she needs surgery. Uh, if it was that bad, where are the photos? They are talking about whether or not this ENT record was turned over because Camille said it wasn't turned over. And it seems that that record was turned over when they went up to sidebar based on how it resolved, but you need to bring the ENT in to get an expert testimony that she has a lot of cartilage or scar tissue. She doesn't know if she has scar tissue in her nose. She can say at night, it's hard for me to breathe through my nose. Okay. Uh, can she get a warning? The judge is warning her now. Can she get fined? We're a long way away from this judge who's been very patient um, sanctioning this attorney, but she is going to tell her you need to knock this off. Question, why do you think Umbridge argues every time there's an objection? I think she's flustered and doesn't know how to ask questions away and get out of that issue. Do you think this case will be turned over to the jury this week? No. No, this case is supposed to go to the jury on May 27th with closing arguments. Can the judge reprimand Elaine for mocking Johnny? No, it is a poor choice that's going to look bad in front of the jury, I think. Um, what evidence does she have to suggest it's a planted story? None. And they're just going to argue it because we haven't seen any evidence. Um, I'm here for this. I'm here for all of this. This is a spicy afternoon in court. We've all woken up. I don't think Cross was long enough, not at all. Too much left unquestioned. I think Cross hit the right tone and hit the big points. I think there is a balance for my preference. There is a balance between addressing every little thing and hitting the big things and going, she's a liar. The rest of it's irrelevant. It shows that it doesn't matter to you. It shows that it doesn't hurt your case. Elaine should stick to her case and not chase down every little thing Camille did because it shows confidence. 
Right now on redirect, Elaine is chasing answers and it doesn't look good. And that is a lack of confidence. So it'll be very interesting to see where this goes after they are up at sidebar. But I think Camille's Cross hit the main points and pointed out the main issues and set up their closing, which is all that this is anyway. Um, does Depp and Heard go through a mental a metal detector every day? Probably. Do they get searched before entering the building? I don't think they get searched. They probably go through the medical director uh, detectors. Death Star yet. I'm angry and I'm here for it. We are definitely not at DEF CON Death Star, um, which also I can only do at night because there's too much light from the windows. What happens after several warnings to Elaine? She's embarrassed and the judge pulls them up like now to sidebar and explains you can't lead. And if you keep leading, it is going to be a problem and I'm going to make you move on. So it is appropriate. Question, what is the benefit of monitoring, um, motioning to strike? Why isn't Camille striking after her objections? I don't know why she's not striking the testimony. Um, I don't know if the judge has a rule that once it's sustained that she'll automatically strike it. I don't know if they've talked about that, but moving to strike means that you take the last bit that was said and like literally lop it off the record. It just, you yeet it right off the record. So if this is read back to the jury later, if it's read back like, Hey, can you read back this witness testimony? It's not there. Sorry. I pushed my mic away as I was yelling and now I'm yelling and I need to, we need to save the voice. We need to save the voice. I don't know what everyone's looking at. Something is, something is happening. Are we all fanning ourselves with the rules of evidence? Uh, hello, Latu. Didn't the recording with her um, gnarly toes say he was hiding in the bathroom, but to her UK depot, she clearly said she was trying to break in or am I wrong? It said she was trying to break in. Oh, there's, there's Chanley from court TV um, who's looked lovely every single day of this trial, but um, didn't the recording with her toes, uh, the, there was impeachment there because it was different testimony between the two. Um, shout out to Lindsay's sister. <laughs> so Elaine um, Barkin takes the stand for Amber's team, right? I don't know. Elaine said her and JD met in 1997. Um, Getty images show 1994. That's a three-year gap. Is that allowed? We will see if she testifies via video deposition. If Amber Hertz needs surgery, she did it to herself by not going to the doctor when she first broke her nose. I don't know. I think she's trying. I don't know. I don't know. Why does Amber look at the jury even during sidebar? I don't know. I think she's trying to get them on her side, or at least that's how I interpret it. I can't imagine what so much has happened. I don't mean to scare you guys. I'm sorry if I, uh, if I woke up your pets or your children or screamed at your ear headphones, I am sorry. So Elaine is coming off as desperate and it looks like they are throwing out a Hail Mary. It does. And that's not good for their case. So that's why, um, is it possible to build is it possible to build up scar tissue from cocaine overuse through a tampon applicator? Possibly. Did you tell Nurse Falati on 12 16 2000? Umber just trying to regain about the injuries her case you sustained and she can't. from the 12 15 2015 attack. I, I did. They are. I believe I sent her pictures too. Okay. Um, and did you text with Nurse Falati on 12 16 2015? about the injuries that you had suffered as a result of Mr. Depp's attack on you on 12-15. Yes, she guided me through a concussion check. You don't do a concussion check over the phone, by the way? I mean, I know my EMT and training was a long time ago, but for real, Connell for real. Cowan about the injuries you sustained. Objection, Your Honor. Hearsay. Yep. It's prior consistent statements. It doesn't right, sustain matter. the judge at this point. Next question. Do you recall Dr. Laurel Anderson testifying that she saw two She's black not eyes? Objection, Your Honor. Leading. You're not going to get into a lot of these prior leading. consistent okay. statements. Elena. What, if anything, do you recall from Laurel Anderson's testimony in this case about what she Objection. That calls for improper 12, evidence. 17, 2015. And it's Objection, Your Honor. This is outside the scope of cross-examination. Well outside prior the scope. Consistent statement. You're not allowed to just get into any prior consistent statement. I'm going to sustain the objection. Next question. May, may I approach? Okay. No. Why are we approaching? The judge has ruled, Elaine, you don't get into every prior consistent statement when they're outside the scope. Uh, and what she means by outside the scope is you can only redirect to things that were asked about in cross-examination. This is well outside the scope of what was asked. And it is 
calling for improper testimony. Did you hear this witness testify? What did they say? No, they testified. Unless you're saying, did you hear this witness testify? But now you're saying this, those don't square. Oh my God. Joshua said, shout out to my friend Quill, um, who told me to only watch here. Well, thank you, Quill. Um, we're law nerds, law nerds here and we love it. So this has been, this is when in Rachel December did you see Dr. Laurel Anderson? Objection, I, lack of foundation. <sighs> Overruled. I saw her two days after the attack. So on what day did you see her then? Um, that would have been the 17th of December, 2016. And I told her what happened. Okay. Objection, Your Honor, hearsay. No, sustain the objection. And when did you uh, see Dr. Connell Cowan? I saw him the next day, December 16th, is my best recollection. I wonder if they're going to get back into the... Let's jump to East Asia for a Why moment. are we jumping to East um, Asia for a moment? We saw a number of pictures from the backless dress. Oh. Um, okay. What, is there a question? What, any motivation, would you have Leading. to claim that Mr. Depp Leading. was kneeling on your back, Leading. knowing you had a backless dress. Leading. Objection, Your Honor. And assumes I'm, facts I'm not leading. in evidence. Calls for speculation. Yes. Assumes facts not in evidence. Calls for speculation. Sorry, why, I'm going to stop talking over the objections. Why did you say that Mr. Depp was kneeling on your back in East Asia? <sighs> in the closet of the hotel room in Tokyo, um, I said that because it happened to me. And it would have been much more convenient if I was making it up to not include that detail, knowing I had a backless dress and I walked a press line and got photographed. And upside is saying it never happened. Now, we've heard Elaine is unpleasant, testimony color about umbrage. Mr. Depp uh, making a total of $65 million in 2015 and 2016 from his experts. Objection, Your Honor. Why leading? I haven't asked the hearsay. I mean, yeah, I mean, uh, why <laughs> did you not ask for thirty-two point five million from Mr. Depp? Uh, objection Your assumes Honor. facts, not in evidence, leading. and leading. I said, why did you not? That, ask? That's relevant. I'll sustain the objection. Sustain the objection to leading. Next Elaine. question. Why? Why can I just ask? Why did you not ask uh, for thirty-two point five million for Mr. No, Jeff? that's leading. Assumes facts not in evidence. Relevance. Assumes oh, facts not in evidence. Because I didn't want it. I realized that that's what I was entitled to, but I didn't want it. You were entitled to thirty-two million. Were you really? That's important. That assumes facts not in evidence. Calls for legal conclusion. Calls for expert testimony. The tape recording that was played that has you laughing quite a bit, can you tell the jury what the context of that particular tape recording was? That's an I don't really question. recall a whole lot about what was going on. I know Were we you had high? been fighting kind of ad nauseum and in this Why don't you remember? sort of loop, if you will. And I'm doing my best to... Um, not show my pain. That's what I was trying to do. I was trying to be tough. I was not trying to be tough. Kind of pain I, was in. Okay. I was trying to be now, tough by laughing. Ms. Vasquez asked you about how you got your role in Aquaman. <laughs> Could you please describe to the jury how you got your role yes. in Aquaman? I auditioned. Not Johnny. I auditioned. Nobody thought Johnny really literally hard, auditioned for and you. And I went to where we were filming the, the first movie, Justice League. I went, I think, five or five and a half months early before filming commenced when I heard that they wanted to fire me. And so I put myself in the job. In the Objection, gym. Your Honor, hearsay. To stay. Keep it away. I worked what, really what hard. <laughs> I worked really hard on that. Nobody thought Johnny had to prove myself. Literally auditioned and for I did you. That for even though I was only filming for six days, I was there for six months. Just worked my butt off. Doing That's what? why. What if any role did Mr. Depp play in your getting Aquaman? It calls for speculation. He tried to have me fired from it. Objection, Your Honor. Speculation. All right, I'll sustain his speculation. How do you know that he tried to have you fired? Objection, from Your Honor. Calls for speculation and hearsay. 
and lack of foundation. Founda- I'm trying to lay a foundation. Well, right. you're not lay doing foundation. it well. I saw foundation. it. I saw the emails. I saw the text. I'll sustain oh, the objection. So that's your say. say. Next question. <laughs> You were asked about Isaac Baruch and why he and and that he saw no marks. What is your recollection of you, your Candace. interaction with Isaac Baruch during the week of May twenty second? I saw Isaac when I was coming or going, meaning I was leaving or arriving to the building. I saw him at a distance. We did not have a, a in depth conversation, nor would we. Um, and I told him actually right after it happened what his friend Objection, had done. Objection, Your Honor, hearsay. Mm-hmm. I, I don't think it's offered to prove the truth. I think it's I'm exactly just, offered to prove the I'll truth. Sustain the objection. Next question. Okay. Stay away from what was said. Can you just tell us what what interaction you had with I him will at the break. And, and his opportunity to observe you with absolutely no makeup? Objection, That's Your Honor. Muscle. Leading. Sustain the objection. Just leading. Poor Amber's. I feel bad for Amber. Your interaction with Isaac Baruch during the week. I feel bad for Amber. Well, not only did I because her lawyers not are I I did attempt to kind of let him know what happened. Objection, Your Honor. Hearsay. I sustain the objection. Next question. You were asked some questions about Officer Melissa Science's testimony. What? If anything, do you recall relating to Officer Melissa Sines' testimony relating to your injuries? Objection, Your Honor, hearsay. Your Honor said I could redirect after the cross-examination. You can redirect, but you can't fucking lead. That is completely inappropriate, Elaine. This look, this is me right now. Your Honor said I could redirect. You can redirect. It's redirect. Direct means you ask open-ended Questions, not leading questions, Elaine. You can't lead. Your Honor said I could redirect. Who the fuck do you think you are in this courtroom right now? You cannot. You cannot. You have to ask appropriate questions. You can't lead. Leading is questions that assume the answer in the question and yes, no questions. She needs to ask better questions and she is failing to do so. The judge might cut off her time. This is so bad. And you know what? It's not going to undo anything from the cross because it's so inartfully done. And I'm actually very frustrated. Oh yeah. I'm probably redder than any of the pictures of Amber Heard. Um, yep. I am. Cause I get really red when I'm mad. This is see the thing that words. I am frustrated for Amber Heard in this moment because no matter what you think of her and think of her performance on the stand, she is entitled to have quality legal representation. And if she paid six, oh, Ben, she's laughing at something that's going on. They're seeing what happened at the bench. She is entitled to an attorney that is not what an embarrassment. What do you recall of Officer Sines' testimony in this case relating to your injuries and the property destruction? I recall her saying that that's a she question. didn't feel that my the state I was in um, was enough of an injury to her or wasn't injury seeming to her. Okay. She has and she this feels like a desperate damage? redirect. She claims That's she did leading. not see any property damage, but she claims I walked with her over broken glass. So I'm I don't know why she's saying that. Walked with her over broken what glass. What, if any, interactions did you have with Alejandro Romero during the week of May 22? I think she's I not used to doing trials. I spoke to him briefly. Objection, Your Honor, to the extent it calls for hearsay. It does. I think she's, oh, overruled at this point. I think she's not used to doing trials. I just I spoke to him briefly in passing as I was entering, no. and maybe when, when I was exiting the building, but always when I was on my way out or in from being outside, meaning makeup. I had makeup on always, as I do. Why Except did James, when I don't. Why I did James Franco snaps. visit you on the evening of oh, yes, 20, do tell. 2016? Why we'd like mm. Objection calls for speculation. <laughs> do you know? Yes. Did you Please ask him us. to? Because he was my friend and he lived next door, quite literally lived next door. And I had frankly exhausted my support network with my usual friends and was happy to welcome as much friendship at that time as I could possibly get. Now, the video showed uh, him laying his head her on friends were exhausted with her is Can what I heard from that. Can you describe to the jury what the interaction was? Don't try to fix said, this. I would have let it go and led moved to on. He, uh, after seeing my face, 
put his Jackson, head Honor, on my calls shoulder. calls for speculation. Does, she she doesn't, doesn't call for speculation. Yes, it she does. He sees her. Yeah. He, he yeah. touched no, the he, side of my face, too. Uh, and okay. Again, Your Honor, if we can instruct the witness. If to you could wait till after the objection, please. All right. Next what, question. What did Mr. Franco do uh, on the elevator before <laughs> laying his head on your shoulder? He gonna this isn't going to help you. the side of my face and responded to what he saw. How do you know he responded to what he saw? That's also speculative. We talked about the- uh, Why the, someone else did something is pure speculation. Of, uh, newspaper headlines, and there was one in particular referring to sexual violence. I wouldn't what, touch this with a Mr. fucking 10 foot pole. to you relating to that article? Objection, Your Honor. Leading. Lack of foundation calls for speculation. What did he do to her? Unintelligible. I, I, I don't understand well, the question. Overruled. We'll see where it goes. <laughs> uh, he was carrying the paper that had that headline on it that he leaked and threw it at me at the UK trial. We were unfortunately sat kind of actually literally next to one another with COVID spacing in between us. And he threw the paper down at me as he sat down with that on the cover. And where was that? In the UK, at the UK trial. Objection, Your Honor. This is beyond the scope. That's not beyond it's not, the scope. Overruled. It's Thank not you. beyond the scope. Why did you tweet about the makeup and Mr. Waldman? Because he was calling me a liar and a hoaxer and that this was an elaborate hoax just to get Johnny. Objection, Your Honor. Hearsay. Unintelligible is, is a proper... Unintelligible is a proper... Um, <laughs> She sustained the objections, Next Elaine. Question. Yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> Elaine was like, what? I don't have any more questions, Your Honor. Right. Great. Right. Ma'am, you can have a seat next to your attorney. Okay? Please sit down. And with that, we have a few hours of court left, and we are done with Amber Heard as a witness. Wow. I think she gave up and went home. I really, she's like, I, I, yep, I'm done. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and take our afternoon recess then for 15 minutes. Do not discuss the case oh, with anybody let's. and don't do any outside research, okay? Oh, let's take a break. Oh, let's. Please, please, let's. It's interesting. They let her out a different way than the other uh, breaks. She literally just gave up. I tried. I, her standing there on the, the, the podium going, I'm trying, I'm trying, was quite a moment. Is is your next witness a live witness, remote no, witness, or deposition? Be by a deposition. deposition. Video right, so we'll get the TV set up for that, and let's just come back then at 3.30, okay? All right, thank you. Your Honor, you're very patient. So we've got a video depot coming up, which is going to be interesting. Um, that was a really nice hug with Camille and Ben Chu, and a nice hug with her and Johnny Depp. She has fought for him. And she has done a fantastic job on that cross-examination. I'm not surprised that now that the jury is out of the courtroom, you're seeing some celebration from team Depp. Um, I darn it. <laughs> we need a what the fuck Elaine t-shirt. Um, since we're getting to video depots, I'm going to try to pull up the super chats when we get into them, but I'm going to get to questions. And then I guess we're getting to a video depot. Um, Elaine needs to go take a breath. There was a lot that happened in cross, um, that she just didn't address. And I feel like Elaine got caught up in those last moments of cross, which is a good legal strategy from Camille Vasquez. I feel like Elaine got caught up in the last moments across and was just trying to answer the most, the thing that came up, but she didn't, um, address the rest of it. She didn't get in. There was so much on cross and maybe that's the strategy. Like none of this matters. Amber's telling the truth, but she also couldn't get a direct question out, which are open ended questions. And then what happened? What happened next at the UK trial? Did you see, um, Waldman? Yes. And then what happened? That's it. It's just, wow. Wow, wow, wow. Applause to Camille, the judge, and the court reporter. The court reporter needs a freaking medal and a vacation. Um, what are some questions you would have asked on redirect? I would need to go back through my notes from Cross because on the top of my head, I would need to go back 
I would need to go back through. Um, the judge just ran out. She did. This is a hot mess. As a former clerk, I'm dead, dead. Yeah, I'm I color me deceased after this disaster of a redirect. Um, James Franco never lived in the ECB. I think she meant the building next door. They didn't clarify and they're not going to, and they shouldn't. Um Camille makes me emotional in the best way because of how she defended Johnny and how I would want someone to defend me against my abusers. We stand. She is competent. She kept her composure. She had an appropriate level of snark. Sometimes I was like, Oh, is that going to draw an objection? But it didn't. She was incredible on cross. That was a master class on cross. But what we saw then is Amber Heard's team completely fall apart, which could backfire too. You can end up in a situation where the jury actually just feels bad for the person because their lawyers are flailing so badly. And that's not a good position to be in either. But Camille had to protect her client. They were trying to get into very inappropriate testimony with regard to the nose. <sighs> Um, like anyone will believe her after Camille's cross and the TMZ slip out. I'm going to have to go back and watch that because she goes, and it was g given to TMZ or whatever. And she went like that. The face they ended on was her going, oh my God, I said it, which is wild. So we talked about leading. Leading is a question that assumes the answer. Um, what if anything doesn't fix it being leading? And we absolutely heard, um, the judge say, what if anything doesn't fix it? I died. I'm still dying. Um, is it actually that difficult to ask a question without leading green? No, it's not. If your client cooperates and I worry that the troubles, well, I suspect that some of the troubles Elaine is having is that she doesn't have a client that she feels she can control or perhaps, and this is speculation, a client that maybe she is intimidated by, or she just does a lot of depositions. And in depositions, like we're going to see after this, that style of questioning tends to get you a lot further. And the objections get, the objections get lodged for the record, but they don't get ruled on and you get to keep going. So we might just be in a place where, um, where you don't have attorneys that are used to being live and on their feet in trial. And that is a problem. So let's see. Um, the DUI guy message, even the courtroom photographer has perched himself in the corner and has barely moved during most of cross chin in palm. And he listens inquisitively to Amber Heard's testimony. It seems like everyone was entrenched. I can't wait to hear what the jury thought of this, this redirect that was a disaster. Um, why do you feel bad? Amber led her lawyers to this point. I doubt she listens to their opinions because her lawyer fumbled that and shouldn't have everyone deserves competent legal counsel. And so it's just, it gives you a moment where you're like, Oh man, that's so like, it's so bad. It's so bad. Um, I hope Elaine makes lots of money off this to pay for a psychiatrist to treat her for PTSD after a trial. I mean, we've heard that they've, She's Amber Heard is paid like six million in this case. What if any? <laughs> I don't think you're joking, but also, what if any impact will this have on the lawyers' careers? I think it can have a very positive impact on um on the career of Camille. I don't know how Elaine, I don't know if Elaine sees it or if she is again, struggling with a difficult client. Um, but for Camille, I think it is a rising star in her career. For Elaine, who is a very successful lawyer in her area, I think it proves that they are not litigation attorneys, that they are probably best pre-litigation and then maybe bringing someone in. So... Can anyone from the jury be interviewed after this case is done? If they choose to, yes, they can. Would that be interesting? Question different between trial and deposition. A deposition, this is a fantastic question, um, Monica. A deposition is what we're seeing in the videos where the attorneys are there and they sit in a room and it's sworn and there's a there's a stenographer, but it's not in front of a jury, it's not live. And the rules tend to be a little laxer because you're looking for information. You're asking questions and trying to get information out as part of the discovery process versus the rules of evidence being strictly enforced at trial. The rules of evidence are simple and finite. I mean, they're not simple. <laughs> but it doesn't work if I don't say they're not simple. They seem simple, but they are in fact complex, but any seasoned lawyer should know that. Do you think Amber Heard's team just simply knew they couldn't beat Camille? I wonder if that's why they fell apart on redirect. I 
think they wanted to get into something and didn't have a plan for how to get into it. It was a very disorganized redirect. You have to have a plan for how you're going to ask those questions because you're going to draw evidentiary objections. And it's really improper testimony. Um, you can't have, like, if you, if you go to trial for a car accident, and someone has a fractured spine because of the car accident, and they're in a civil case for that collision. You can't have the individual say, you know, oh, my, you know, I, I had this pain, whatever, but the medical conclusion of a broken back or of herniated discs, those come in with doctor testimony and expert medical testimony. So you can't get to the point where she's like, oh, well, um, I have a, a, a broken nose. That's a medical conclusion and you would need a doctor to diagnose it. It felt like it was a broken nose is one thing. It's a broken nose and I need surgery is a medical opinion. And you can't just prove somebody had a broken leg by saying, oh, I think I broke my leg. If you're proving it in court, you need a doctor to prove it. Is anyone else available on Elaine's team? No. One witness, one lawyer. Hopefully Elaine has a break. Do you feel more confident that might win after today's testimony? Yes. Um, especially with regard to the online article. Maybe Elaine had to ask leading questions because her client can't be relied on to tell the truth. Well, then your client should settle the case, which they didn't have the opportunity to do. But um, she can't just ask leading questions because she doesn't trust her client. Question, Amber's net worth is $8 million. How will she pay the $50 million if she loses? Um, collecting on a trial award is a whole separate process than getting the award. I don't know if Depp cares. Do you think the judge dislikes Amber Heard's team? I think the judge is frustrated at this point because she kept saying that, um, that you know, what if anything isn't a cure-all or a fix-all or a cure you can hear the judge getting annoyed and you can probably see it in the courtroom and we will ask about that later, but I'm sure you can see the judge getting frustrated. It's just experienced lawyers shouldn't be doing that. Did Amber Heard walk out before the jury did? I don't think, I don't think so. Um, Emily, I caught Amber Heard in a lie. James Franco lived in Palo Alto in 2015, 2016. If he lived in the building next door, why did he drive, um, and get into the parking lot? Why hide faces, change locks and come through, uh, just come through the lobby, buddy. It all seems inconsistent, but it's not the biggest deal. It's that, you know, they wanted to bring it up so they could argue it in closing. You can't argue things in closing that aren't in evidence. Um, so, Hey, they can now argue. She changed the locks and brought her boyfriend in. So question, once trial is over, can the judge share her thoughts? No. Um, about who she felt was in the right. Who, no, the judge will not talk about this case publicly at all, nor should she, nor is it appropriate. It actually might violate judicial ethics. I would have to look, not a judge, but I would need to look at the canons of judicial ethics, but no, um, judges don't normally give that kind of, um, information on cases that they preside over. So are these the same lawyers from their last trial? No, I don't know how it works and the difference between the two kinds of trials. Casey, it's a great question and I appreciate that. No, the UK trial is a completely different legal system, completely different country. These lawyers might have been involved like watching, keeping notes, reviewing the evidence, but they weren't the ones doing the trial. They're not licensed there and country to country law is so different. So they might have been... Um, they might have been kind of in the background on that to see what happens because this was pending, but no, it's not the same. It's not the same lawyers. They might have been involved in some of the depositions though, um, like been there for them. Um, Brandon said, I feel like Amber keeps looking at the jury, not only to win them over, but with her emotional reaction, but also to make sure they're on her side. It does feel like she's checking them. Like, are you believing me? Are you listening to me? Again, consistent with Dr. Curry's testimony, which is why they called Dr. Curry. When they asked to approach, can the judges say no? This judge hasn't, but sometimes judges are like, no, I've ruled. So yes, the judges can absolutely say no. Your Honor, may we approach? No. Next question would be how that would go down. How is Elaine this bad? Fuck, I don't know. I think, I honestly think that Camille just wrapping up with Cross caught her off guard. But once Camille got into the past acts of domestic violence and stuff, we knew that that was towards the end because you want to leave those mic drops in the jury's head. So she should have been aware that redirect was coming and there, there was no time. Does Johnny's team get recross after this redirect? No, they don't. We move on to the next witness. Are there any YouTube channels in support of Amber? I have no idea. I tend right now. I haven't been watching much YouTube at all. I stick to my, um, my favorite drama commentary channels, a uh, little bit of beauty tube and then law tube right now. Um, though I do love a good, well, we'll talk about ASMR another time. I do love a good ASMR video. Is it possible Elaine thinks cross strategy works on direct redirect? I have no idea. I think she was flustered. That was appalling. 
Do you think Amber Heard pressures her lawyers to ask certain questions? Yes. Um, I really think that the plan on redirect when she was like, I'll never look into your eyes again, which I thought was fucking appalling. Um, there were times I thought Camille was snarky, but I never found Camille to be disrespectful. I thought it was appalling. I thought it was absolutely appalling. Absolutely appalling. Um, please let me be able to afford better lawyers than Amber Heard. Just because they're expensive doesn't mean they're good. Um, do judges usually sense which side is in the wrong? I have a couple of friends who are judges and they normally have their thoughts and feelings. Uh, they're just good at segmenting their brain to doing their job. Note Amber Heard's tone changed 2016 to now. Yeah, I think the jury will too. Scrape toes does not deserve head hit with a door and a sucker punch to the jaw. This redirect was so bad. Ah, redirect. I, I got lost in the middle of my thoughts. I was trying to catch super chats if they, as they were coming in, um, the kind of mocking tone, it seemed like the number one thing they wanted to talk about on redirect was Johnny won't look at you. Does it fucking matter? Like in the scope of this, does it matter? I feel like there were parts of direct examination from Herd's team that were addressing social media. And I think there were parts of Johnny Depp's uh, teams cross that were addressing social media. And I think that he promised not to look at you was either to get under her skin or to, um, or to answer the press release saying Johnny Depp is a coward and doesn't have the fortitude to look at her. It might've been a PR slash legal strategy to talk about that, but there is no purpose to get into it unless it bothers Amber Heard that much. And if it bothers her that much, why does it bother her that much that he won't look at her? Why did she need to say again, he can't look at me? She said it on cross multiple times. He won't look at you. No, he can't look at me. Why get into it again? It's not even a point that matters in the scope of this unless it matters to her. And if it matters to her that much, you've got to ask why. If you don't want to drag this out and you just want Johnny Depp to leave you alone, why the fuck are you so pressed that he won't look at you in court that it comes up again on your redirect? Direct. It's just why, why, why? It makes absolutely no sense to me. Because again, if you don't care, then then why? Um, I will absolutely go look at um, at that. Um, Legal Bites is saying she left before the jury. I can't imagine that she did. I mean, we. I can't imagine that she did. So we can. Can Amber Heard? I saw this. Can Amber Heard get jail time? We're going to go look at what DUI guy's tweeting. No, she can't. This is a case over reputation and money. Let's go to Twitter real quick. Um, you know what? Let me, I can rewind this real quick and see who left, but no, she shouldn't have left before the jury. Let's see. I'm going to just pull this up real quick. How long will break last? We've got a few more minutes. I think. Um, I don't have any more questions. You're all right. Thank you. All right. Maybe you can have a seat next year. Snaps for queuing that up fucking right. That's never happened. It's never going to happen again. Take this moment, memorialize it. <laughs> Your attorney. Okay. You can, you can go have a seat next to her. That's fine. They said you can have a seat next to your attorney, so she should exit the witness stand. You can have a seat next to your attorney, so she should be going down and walking across right, the well. Ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and take our afternoon recess then for 15 minutes. Do not discuss the case with anybody and don't do any outside research, okay? Oh, she did. She walked right out instead of going to counsel table. Um, she was supposed to go sit next to her lawyers, and then the court said, let's take our afternoon break. Could it be, okay, let's um, let's speculate just a, just for a moment. Could she be that angry with her attorneys that she wouldn't sit down at counsel table? Her? Unintelligible? I, I, I oh, don't wait, understand. Oh, wait, I went too far. I've gone too far. We've flown too close to the sun, Emily. This for deposition. Deposition. Oh, she's already left there. UK at the... Nope. I wonder if she's so upset with her lawyers, that's why she left. Um, Let's see. She walks right. off the stage. Ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and take our afternoon take recess our break. for 15 minutes. Do not discuss the case with anybody and don't do any But also, research, the, okay? oh, the bailiff is just following along here and she doesn't go sit at council table. It looks like she's throwing something away. I don't, I don't know. Maybe she's that mad. I, I don't know. Oh my goodness. This is happening. Hey, Em, please ask Ruth Ann to marry me. This fool. Me, Sky, thank you for everything you do. Hashtag law nerd proposal. I love this. Law nerds. Law nerds. This is a moment, Ruth Ann. This is a very exciting moment. I hope you're in the same, like, actual location. Uh-oh, judge is back. Judge is back. Um, yes, Ruth Ann. Marry me. 
not me. I mean, Mary Sky, not me, but Ruth Ann. Are you going to Mary Sky? You've got to let us know. This is so exciting. Um, I'm going to go to the um, the the tweet tweet on the street. Oh, let me pull the judge up so we can see the judge's face. But this is so romantic. Thank you. Um, Marry this fool me sky. So please, Ruthann, Mary Sky. That's so amazing. I'm shooketh. Lawnard proposal. I love it. You guys will have to share it with me. Um, I love it. I love it. All right. Thank you. Maybe seated. All right. Your next witness. Next witness. Our next witness is Mr. Io Tillett Wright. Oh. And it starts with counsel for Mr. Depp asking questions, and then we'll switch over to me. All right. Thank you. There we go. Io's testimony is next. So, right, uh, good morning again. Lawnards, I love you guys. You're so supportive. With Ms. Heard at all, including text or emails or otherwise, in connection with your preparation for this deposition? No. I Have you had any, when's the last time you spoke to her? April of last year. Oh, this April is hard to hear. Almost a year ago. Uh, Mr. Wright, when did you first uh, meet Ms. Heard? I met Amber in love makes me so happy. Thank you. And where did you meet her? In Los Angeles. And what were the circumstances of the meeting? A friend was introducing us to each other um, so that I could photograph her for a large. It is romantic. It's a nice done. moment. And what was your profession in 2011? I was this a is photographer Io. and I worked for the New York Times, I think. Io is one of Heard's friends. I don't recall exactly everything, but... In 2011, you were both a photographer and separately worked for the New York Times as a freelancer. I worked for the New York Times as a journalist and photographer. And what was... What is your profession today? I'm a writer and a producer. And between 2011 and through the present, have you had any other professions other than photographer, writer, or producer? Yes. And what are those? I've hosted a television show or two. I made some podcasts. I mm, wrote two other books, uh, two books, three books, three books. I've written three books. Um, a number of things. I don't know. There are more things, but I, yeah, I've always sure. been a multi hyphenate person. To the best of my recollection, uh, we initially met at a mutual friend's house, which I think I already stated. Um, that friend is also an actor and had met Amber at the Children's Hospital while they were both volunteering and knew that Amber had done quite a bit of LGBT activism and uh, mentioned my project to her and then invited her over to our, uh, the other friend invited Amber to her house so that we could all meet and um, Amber and I discovered that we liked the same books and we liked psychology and, and just she liked you know, psychology laughed and had fun that night and Interesting. then I asked her if she would participate in the photo That's project I think or somebody did and she said yes um, a couple of days later, I went to the house that she was staying at and I photographed her for the project. And then thereafter, I went back to New York where I lived. And I remember her texting me and saying that she was shooting a movie in New York and did I want to get lunch? Um, so we got lunch and we became friends. Okay, please walk me through that. Becoming met friends? in 2011. We started becoming friends soon thereafter. Um, 
in 20, very early in 2013, um, I came to LA to spend a couple of months with my then, I don't know if she was my girlfriend or this my fiance at that point, but the person that I was in a relationship with, um, in a very serious relationship with, we'll do that at the break. and um, during the time that I was in LA, I spent more time with Amber. We both spent more time with Amber. Um, and I was introduced to Johnny. It says March 10th because that's when this depot was uh, taken. The summer of 2013, I ended up moving to LA during which Amber Depot's and Johnny and I boring. got even closer, very, very close. And then um, we remained close, the three of us, for two-ish years. And then all of this happened, this nightmare, and uh, I think Elaine's flustered. Uh, Johnny and I stopped being friends, and Amber and I stayed friends. Um, and he said Amber this and I nightmare. Were friends up until the date that I told you that we last spoke. I wonder why their friendship ended. And at some point in time, uh, did you live on the same property as Johnny Depp and Amber Heard? Yes. And when was that? It was August 2013 until um, I believe June 1st of 2014. I moved into my own. Depots are definitely lines. not as um, and, spicy and um, they can bore the jury. Why is it that you uh, left that property, left living there? Because I didn't want to live for free in someone's property and I wanted to have my own house and support myself. And for how long after that did you uh, stay close with both Johnny and Amber? But this should get to the 911 call. I stayed call. close with both of them. The 911 call matters. Io is um, one of Amber's I don't best friends. Remember, it it was no. a. Io cannot hmm. be called as a live plaintiff. They uh, are testifying in 2015, by video. Fifteen, I think, late twenty fifteen, maybe. Um, Johnny and I were no longer. Yes, Rocky I and I lived with Deb the period or lived in one I of the houses. Really stopped considering Johnny a friend of mine was December of 2015. Okay. Well, let me ask it this way. Um, you never saw Mr. Depp assault or beat Ms. Heard on any occasion, correct? That's correct. I just would like to clarify, Mr. Preciado, that's a question you already asked me. So you're asking me the same question again about whether or not I witnessed yes. Mr. Depp assault right. Ms. Heard? Right. Um, no, I have not witnessed that. Yes, all the lawyers way, would have be you ever involved in this depot. Have seen Mr. Depp assault or beat Ms. Heard on any occasion? No. Now, back to this same paragraph. Where but it says, I.O. called the police. My experience of Johnny during with the, staircase. the time that, he, that we were close from 2013 so. through 2015 uh, was that he could be incredibly kind, generous, and loyal. Um, can you give me examples and of I will talk about this kindness, in the break. generosity, it's and because of how depositions work? Time. And the other side goes Johnny, first. when sober, was lovely and magical and very funny. Um, yes, no. Amanda, Johnny, there will be a re a when sober rebuttal. was incredibly lucid and um, imaginative, and I felt a kindred connection with him and a, a shared perspective on the world that I've shared with very few people in my life. Um, Johnny when sober understood how much influence he had over people and he was very um kind to them about it and generous with talking to them about whatever came up and he was also when sober very um you know he made time for people's nervousness around him, which I witnessed on a number of occasions. He well, also, um, I wonder if they'll get into it. He had his, his number of houses on that street 
and there was a constant rotation of no. different people coming to town who could all afford to live somewhere else or stay somewhere else who their um, lawyers he would did these depots they asked these questions and enjoyed having in those and houses then they edited them i find to be um generous in the next paragraph, generous. paragraph six you you'll see that to these time jump because they're edited mr depp's uh, struggles with respect to oxycontin you say that in late 2013 after dental surgery he became hooked on oxycontin did you ever experience him while he was on oxycontin yes and while he was on oxycontin did you ever experience uh, him to be mean or vicious yes amberside called this witness they can i can't choose answer not that to. with any accuracy because i don't know depots the times are painfully slow him, he was also on oxycontin in paragraph five, where you say that they do. Um, he could he could be incredibly mean and vicious, yeah, especially when annoyed. he was drunk or high. And we when don't you know refer how long, to drunk or high. What substances are you referring to? We don't know how long into the depot this is, but yes, depots are annoying. The substances that I saw him ingest with my own eyes were cocaine and hard liquor, um, marijuana. Uh, ecstasy, mushrooms, uh, wine, I, probably some other things, but those are the immediate ones that jump to mind. Um, cocaine and any kind of alcohol would bring out a very, very ugly side of him, um, very misogynistic and cruel and other things. And um, when he would take any kind of psychedelic, like ecstasy or, or, or so uh, MDMA, Io was he around would become them enough paranoid. When he would drink alcohol, know. he would become paranoid. Or to say that yeah, he knows I, how I Depp was, question. unless he's taking that from what Amber told him. But why they're no longer friends is much more curious. You mentioned me. that uh, you witnessed him having had cocaine. Did you ever have cocaine with him? No. Were there any drugs or, or substances that you uh, took with him? I don't smoke marijuana. I don't do cocaine. For the entire period that I knew Johnny and there after, I did not drink alcohol. There was a, I think, one week period um, during the peak of my breakup, during which Johnny offered me um, some pain pills to get through the intensity of that situation. Um, and that was the only time that I took any substances for three and a half years. No, that's not true. That was the only time that I took any- um, Yes, this is IO. Substances with Johnny. Yes, I think he has a septum piercing. That's what it looks like. And uh, yeah, yeah. All, all the other things that I had They're seen- They're allowed to ask, I just don't know if they will. I do and don't do are also accurate. So I'm sorry, just to, to summarize that, is your testimony that um, when you witnessed Mr. Depp drunk and high, you were not also either drunk or high. Is that your testimony? My testimony is that during the entire period that I knew Mr. Depp, I was never drunk or drinking or consoled. My testimony is that for a one, maybe two week, possibly two and a half week, I don't remember, period, um, on a sporadic occasion, I took some pain pills that Mr. Depp offered me. All the video depositions for, feel that way. To get through an extreme emotional pain situation. Um, when I witnessed Johnny doing cocaine, I was not drunk or high. Other occasions that I witnessed Johnny drinking, I was not drunk or high. Um, there was a very narrow window during which I was taking some non uh, mind altering pain pills for a very brief period during which I witnessed Johnny drunk and high. Did you ever witness Miss Amber Heard drunk or high? Yes. Uh, and 
Did you ever like witness that. her drink alcohol? Yes. Objection. Did you ever witness her no. um, ingesting cocaine? Are you, are you asking like, they witnessed ever to get better in the history of time have I ever witnessed Amber ingest cocaine? That's the first question, yes. The answer right. is no. Amber was vehemently against cocaine. Huh. Did you ever uh, witness her uh, smoke marijuana? No. Marijuana is not her drug. What is, what is her drug? drug? <laughs> I haven't spoken to Amber in a year, but as far as I know and have known her for the last 11 or 12 years, Amber doesn't have a narcotic of choice. Have you seen her ingest Interesting. ecstasy? Yes, I believe so. Yes. How many times have you seen her ingest ecstasy? One of her closest friends. I can think of one instance in particular when she took it um, for her birthday, like a celebration. We banged uh, wasn't Do you recall what year that was? I'm an event. Other than the uh, narcotics and alcohol uh, that I mentioned, did you ever witness Ms. Bird uh, ingest any other uh, drugs? Are you asking me if other than, what did you ask me about? Cocaine, ecstasy, and mushrooms. That's fair. I've witnessed Amber taking any other illegal narcotics? Or are you asking me about prescription medications? Can you clarify? That's fair. Uh, narcotics other than prescription narcotics. I don't know, but I don't actually think so, no. Okay. I don't think I would Amber know. Amber drinks red wine um, when she's not training, or let me rephrase that. Amber, when I knew her, drank red wine in the evenings. Uh, fairly regularly, with the exception of when she was training for an acting role. So the reason sometimes this seems choppy is they do edit these. So if you look at the timestamp, you, you will see it jumping. Uh, That's misheard, not the witness's misheard, fault. Misheard, uh, That's part of the depots being edited. Yes. So yes, they and do clip. Because when you, you hear those objections, they get cut out. Misheard, uh, intoxicated. I, I don't know how to quantify intoxicated if you're asking me how often I witnessed her drunk. Is that your question? Yes. Yeah. Amber is intoxicated. Um, strangely immune to getting drunk unless she's really drunk a lot. So I didn't see her drunk very often. Strangely immune to get drunk. I saw drunk. her um, drinking often, but I didn't see her um, out of her faculties very often. I thought I thought he was going to say like, out of her face. No, I, I thought that's that where that was a going. A handful of times in the eleven years that I knew her. And eleven years only seen her drink a handful uh, of times. How alcohol affects Miss Hurd's personality based on your experience? You know, it depends on the circumstance. If it was during a moment when she was celebrating, it would make her loose like if we were salsa dancing then you know she would have fun and be fun and, and at a party and you know inebriated and dancing and having fun if she was this in depo a might bore the jury to forgetting everything um, that happened earlier today i think it would just kind of exacerbate whatever the the feeling of the moment was Depp's team is questioning. I'm going to uh, her ask former you to friend, state your name for the record. Nobody oh, has they're yet. done. Um, <laughs> All right, go ahead. Let's bring up uh, Depp exhibit number one again, please. This is now Amber Heard's right. team questioning IO. Questions so that was it Presidio. from Depp's team. I don't know what they're trying to get to. Back up to the first page where you were asked some questions. But I'm glad um, that it's brief. And he's he started out with hopefully I, I'm just gonna draw, draw your attention to paragraph four. And you indicated you met Johnny Depp through Amber. Uh, and you hit it off immediately. Do you see that? Yep. Depots are boring. Yes, okay. And then you explained to Mr. Presidio that you considered Matt, Johnny to be great a close point. friend and you cared very much about Mr. Depp. Is and that again, correct? These are depots, so that's why you're seeing this leading style that Elaine can't break from. I still care very much about him. 
All right. Still Could care you about please that. describe that relationship That's, that you had with Mr. Depp up until I think you said December of 2015? This is Elaine. Sure. Form of questioning. Okay. She's Mr. Supposed Depp to be and asking I direct questions. First met Amber invited me over to his house with my then partner girlfriend. I don't know if she was my fiance yet or not. Um, in I think February of 2013, right at the beginning of 2013, um, <clears throat> and we all hung out. The four of us hung out in his house. Um, I don't know why this is not a live witness. And just kind of talked and got to know each other. Why and it was not. sweet. I was mostly hanging out with Amber and kind of meeting this person. It was a trip to meet someone like that, you know, and see his house. And he was very friendly and very welcoming and very kind. Um, and then the next time we saw each other was at um, Amber and I both like to do what we call family dinners. So we invite people over and cook for them and, and have a dinner party. And um, that sounds lovely. Amber did How an elaborate wine? family dinner at her house. And Johnny and I and my ex and Amber, and I believe Whitney were there. I don't know if anyone else was there. Yeah. I'm sure somebody, other people were there. I don't remember. Um, and Johnny and I really connected at that dinner we i want to know why after 11 years they're not friends each either other, just catty corner from each other and um i left feeling a really intense connection to him and i was like well yeah sure everybody probably feels an intense connection to him because of who he is i'll forget it it's ridiculous and then a couple of days later um amber had another dinner some such, such a dinner at her house and uh, Johnny and I had another really good time. I and, lived with and them. Felt very connected and really laughed a lot and whatever. And um, at the end of the dinner, as I was standing to leave with my ex, Johnny came up to me and said, um, "I I don't really know how to say this because it doesn't happen to me very often, but I think I, I love you." <laughs> and I felt strange because I felt the same way and I said that's funny because I had that same experience after the last dinner party too and then we joked about how crazy and ridiculous that felt um and we exchanged phone numbers and then he he texted me wanting to talk about Amber a couple of times and I felt that it was like kind of violating her privacy so I said that I was happy to be friendly with him and happy to, um, I don't remember exactly what I said, but something to the effect of like, they had an intense you know, connection. I, I'm happy to said. be, to give advice or to, to help you guys stay in concert with each other, but I don't want to, um, violate anybody's privacy with the other one and he, I think, I think he really respected that and really liked that because he also values his privacy greatly um and then yeah I was in LA for a couple more months and I don't know I think maybe we hung out more during that period I'm not sure um I don't remember if they came to New York during the next stretch of time or what happened but um basically by the summer I came back to LA to write um, and had a very bad breakup with that fiance and was going through some things personally that Johnny this is Amber's um, witness you know he was like I recognize what's happening for you uh, it was like particularly bad anxiety related trauma related things um, and he I, I didn't expect him to Thank offer you. me any support around that stuff but he just was like wait I see what you're going through. Um, so Depp was really sensitive and know, caring to my trauma. Experience of it. I have the same thing and let's talk about it. And like, That's if you need I mean. anything, I'm here. And I was like, thank you so much. You know, so Depp really was kind and that. supportive to trauma. Um, and I went back to New York for, to be with my family for a couple of days or maybe a week or something. 
and um, it was very painful to be there. And he had said, if it's painful to be there, you know, just let me know and come back and stay here. And so I did. Because they're not. And I came back. They're unavailable. And I originally was going to gonna stay court. at Amber's house. Might mean they don't want to um, come. Because she kept her apartment for a number of years while they were together, even though she stayed at his house a lot. Um, that she paid for, et cetera. And I, she was, you know, the person that I'd known longer, so I felt more comfortable being at her house. And then um, the consensus was that I should be closer to them. And so he said, oh, there's this house that's just sitting empty at the end of the street. Just stay there. And I was very hesitant because I didn't want to take advantage of him. Um, Seems that he didn't, Depp didn't mind. And he just was insistent and he was very kind stay, about it. And, and he said that he understood fully what having PTSD and anxiety could do and that he wanted to help. Um, so oh no. I, I went and I stayed there. And then I was, I'm guessing in August of 2013. And then in September, I think Amber went to England to shoot a movie. Um, so I was there and Johnny and I would hang out on our own. And Johnny doesn't have a ton of friends um, because he can't. And um, Fair. This is I would go Amber's up and hang friend. Out with him. You know, we really enjoyed each couple. other. We really liked each other. And so we would just hang out, you know, on a daily basis, eat dinner or, or watch movies. And I'd hang out with his kids and got, you know, very like into like a very sweet uncle, niece, nephew relationship with his kids. And We're they called me Ohio. And, but it might be um, because of the. Mr. Tell it right. Uh, it might be because of the 911 call. Did you ever call Mr. Deb? Brother, IO called 911. Did you refer to him as your brother? Yes, I did. Now. I'm going to take you to paragraph five. Yeah, it's just there. I, exhibit I don't know if they're going to get into the 911 call because that's all uh, hearsay. Mr. Presidio asked you about this paragraph so, as well. And it, at the it end of it, they, you had said, and he could be incredibly mean and vicious, especially when he was That's drunk what they're trying high. to get to. What did you mean by that? What I meant by that was. Absolutely. On a number of occasions. Um. I saw, yeah. you know, Amber or he, I think, also would ask me to come and help. He and I had more of a like mano a mano kind of relationship. And she and I had a, I, I was kind of like the only person that would check either of them. Um, <laughs> well, we appreciate that. And so they would I was both the ask color. me to do that with each other. Um, so I saw him, for example, I remember there was a time when um, it was very late at night. I was down the hill. So I went up the hill and he was outside by the pool. If that's true, Angie. What I understood to be whiskey. That's a reason why he, he might not be crying. here testifying live. Um, and very upset in the kitchen, I think. And then I went outside. Oh, there's been some more boring witnesses. And talked to him for a long time. Just after live um, testimony, it's hard. After live testimony, depots like are hard. That. Or, um, so not everyone's a yes would say man, things, right? He said something to me that night that I, I thought, that night by the pool where I thought, Jesus Christ, you know, um, things like, she's gonna you know, all she's got is her looks and so he heard Depp say mean you know, shit she has no talent and okay. her tits start to sag um and her face gets wrinkly. i don't think it Nobody's matters too much salty sunshine that i always interested in her i mean trans unless the chat's asking about it but for anything, i don't think that so she, changes anything you know, i was better. male I always identify as like, male. I always figure out a man. Way so, to survive and shit yeah, like that. That's Sorry, where we're at. Me. Things like that. And um, Not I really a thing. Also witnessed him um, when Amber was in England. Marilyn Manson and Paul Bettany came over at one point, and there was Marilyn Manson didn't come up yesterday, but here we are today. And alcohol involved that I witnessed them doing together. Um, I don't specifically These are what Mr. Bettany did or did not Depos partake in the cocaine um, or really much of anything except things that he said and his personality. But um, Mr. Manson and yep. Mr. Depp Almost that way. partook in a lot of cocaine. What, if anything, did Mr. Depp tell you about 
his struggles with drugs and alcohol. And um, it we sat on the couch and he told me a number of things. He told me about his childhood. He told me about growing up in Kentucky. He told me about growing up in very poor and how his mom was verbally and physically abusive. He told me that when he was very, very young, like 13 or something, he started drinking and taking drugs, I think, or at least drinking quite heavily. And he was even kind of like, yeah, it's crazy, I know, but I've been doing it my whole life and built like a tank. And so that was kind of the nature of the conversation. Um, and he told me that he had struggled with ever not drinking or ever not doing drugs. And he also told me that he didn't particularly enjoy being sober. Um, well, maybe now that, we've seen why, you know, but that's just me being people snarky. People around him were very concerned. He was very, very um, concerned with his children. And he would express shame or regret about times that he had been inebriated to the point of falling down or embarrassing himself, you know, urinating on himself, things like that, when his children were around and that he was very grateful to the people who had kind of shielded them and whisked them away. And he told me that- um, I'm gonna talk about this at the break. In his relationships with what the attorney previous said women, yesterday too. Uh, his drug and alcohol, use had been an issue um but that he just didn't really like life sober and that it was too painful to be alive without and that's consistent um, imbibing or, or getting high and, and that's consistent with depth's testimony um, he also told me that he uh had experienced not fiery like a live bouts of jealousy in relationships that had that had also led to a lot of drinking and a lot of um, rage activities. Um, he told me that that happened with <laughs> Winona. He told me that that happened with um, Kate and sorry, Winona Ryder and Kate Moss. Oh. He told me that that had happened with Vanessa Parody. Mr. Tillett Wright, um, what if any observations did you make about what if any? Mr. Depp abusing Oxycontin? She is a depot lawyer. Over the course of those two years, Mr. Depp told me verbatim that he was addicted to OxyContin. It's not the comment um, I was trying to pull up. I that was the comment I was trying to pull up. Where he expresses you, that. Uh, For the reminder. It's extraordinarily hard to kick. And that what if anything it, um, is the whole thing? I don't remember exactly the words that he uses, but he, he, he referred to it to me verbally many times as like the hardest thing that he's ever tried to kick. That's which fair. He's tried to kick most things. He said it was harder than heroin. Um, so he, he was very um, open and verbose about OxyContin, having gotten addicted to OxyContin. So what, if any, observations did you make uh, about Mr. Depp smoking cigarettes and joints, marijuana? There was an Mr. objection Depp, and a cut. As far as I could see, always had a cigarette or joint in his mouth at all times, to the point where I was yeah. confused about how he could function. There are different flavors of law tube. Marijuana closet that had. There's a marijuana, marijuana closet? Tens and tens of pounds of weed in it. There's a marijuana closet. What if any observations for a marijuana did you closet? make while you were staying at Sweetser? I think you said that was August 2013 through May of 2014 with respect to uh, the type of alcohol and the amount of alcohol that Mr. Depp was consuming. When I saw Mr. Depp drink, um, it was often hard liquor. I believe it was whiskey and not gin rum. and tequila, maybe. Not rum. Um, he never said rum. It could be vodka. I don't know. He had a full bar in his in eighty, the house that they with his recording studio. Raise your hand if you don't have in, if so. you have a full bar in um, your house. 
I know whiskey for sure, and there was also red Not wine. Rum? A lot of red wine. And when you talk about the whiskey and the red wine, how much did you observe? Io comes across Mr. like Io doesn't want to consume be there on any given and isn't going to. Uh, I don't know. This will probably be the rest of today. The one occasion I know specifically was the one that I mentioned before during the argument where he suddenly had a glass of whiskey. And I remember it being like, I remember clock because I grew up counting people's drinks. I remember clocking that it was a very large pour in the this glass of whiskey. If you recall, those, conversation I, I think my question was, not you know, calling, what if any observations did you make or did Mr. Depp ever tell you about him blacking out? Mr. Depp Maybe. was very open with the nerds partake everyone that he was a heavy user. And um, <clears throat> <laughs> he told me about, I know there was one instance where he had this very large house property so if the reason Sweets why we're saying he seems unbiased, like this, he doesn't seem to be trying to push um, the conversations or add more. He's answering directly here, what he's asked, and he's not, which is right here, and then he's not here adding a lot more. It's just, street, this is what I saw. 82, and 82 is a very large compound. So yep. he and I were staying. This is going to be I was there might be moments. We were up at 80, and then 82 they lived in for a brief period of time. Um, and he told me about like vanishing into 82, into the like the property into the like because it was very lush and very a lot of trees um and went up quite I mean, far up the hill and he told me about kind of like not for me out and going in there on one instance um he told me thank you so much for the comment i know that he told me that in australia i appreciate um, that he had blacked out um but he also told me that he fucked up, so I don't know. In terms of specific blackouts, Something there were cut. a number. There, uh, I think he said we're on the plane, he said that he didn't remember what had happened. What, if anything, did Mr. Depp say to you about whether he wanted yes, marijuana to is legal in California. I didn't think I needed clean. to state it, but yes, the weed closet shouldn't be a problem. Mr. Depp... Um, expressed to me that he it wanted to get sober for to Amber, that he didn't enjoy being sober. I just wanted to make um, sure the chat didn't go off the rails on that. And that it, it was distressing and exhausting. Um, we'll see. We're not to the point of it yet. At the end of this testimony, I'll tell do. you. He didn't. He really, really um, resented having to be sober. Um, That's really what this is going to. Yeah. He, he resented he having to be, be sober. Okay. And what, if anything, did Mr. Depp say to you about his perception? Does Johnny Depp of use drugs? Amber's yes. Role Can we move him on? Becoming sober and clean. Johnny Depp used drugs. He Can we expressed move on? a number of times that he felt like she was his leash and she was holding him back from doing what he wanted to do in terms of substances and alcohol. Um, oh, I just want to go back to another. He can only testify to the questions he's asked. Blacked out was on on the island he went to the bahamas there were two different instances one i think they'll try to finish this today was um i guess like they had only recently met and he told me that he passed out face down in the sand while his kids were there and that um he told you the staff had like whisked his kids away so that they didn't see it mr tiller right no when you said the jury that, does not pay a ton of attention Depp, to the depots they're uh, boring use the term monster what do you recall we talked about that about it was Depp. odd she didn't go sit with her attorneys and the language that ended up being kind of settled on was that there was a side of him that was a I mean, we have monster a full bar. it's not weird and that it was not who he was but it was something that lived within him that he had to battle and the language that he always used was that of um battle and battling battling the demon battling the monster um so that the monster you know he would say things like the monster will not win 
He did um, say that the the rum is always gone. I will not be that type of man. You know, I, I don't want to. I don't want to be that type of no. man or husband. I don't want to hurt. Uh, he would call her Slim. He, I, our Slim, our girl, referring to all of her friends and him and her and I. Yeah. What if any observations did you make any? of Mr. Depp, both in terms of physical as well as temperament, when you perceived him as having too much to drink? Mr. Depp. Good question. Would I don't know if the cooking jar was in the marijuana closet. Drugs. But now I want to know. He would get very mean. I agree, Jack. Very surly, very. Uh, so Jeff can be mean when he's extremely paranoid. He would weave these elaborate situations this is why in which this witness is testifying. Amber was having affairs with every man that she ever worked with and every woman she ever came in contact with. Um, this is why. <clears throat> he became very demeaning. Johnny is incredibly intelligent, incredibly smart and witty, and he would point his jokes at people, um, Amber's appearance, her talent, um, her lack of talent as he perceived it, um, why he thought that she was actually famous, which he always implied was just because of her looks. Which is real. Um, and because he thought that everyone wanted to have sex with her. Um, and he would insult his fans. Um, he called them, I remember he called them remoras, oh. which is a type of um, sucker would insult fish his that fans? attaches itself to the hull of a ship and puts a hole in it and then sinks it. Um, he would rail against his mother and his sister. Um, You're welcome, Teresa. Sisters. Pretty much, you know, I agree, Snuggy Bug. Anyone but this that is he felt had crossed him or could cross him, um, we'll he see. became very nasty about. What, if anything, do you recall Mr. Depp saying about <sighs> what, if anything, his mother and comparing his mother to Amber? Mr. Depp, we'll told see what the jury thinks that. His mom was viciously cruel to him. That's consistent with Depp's testimony. His upbringing, um, and that she was absolutely Ryan. Also, this chat viciously is not. This chat is a safe space for everyone. Um, with him, but we do not and tolerate with his name siblings. Calling. We and do with not his tolerate father. hate um, in this chat. He referred to her pardon and the mods language, and for social bitch, that are my rules um, and a cunt a lot. Um, and he seemed to kind of compare them in the sense that he was, he said at one point, um, something to It seems that Depp really actually. loves his fans. Uh, yeah, I already have a mom who's a bitch to me. I don't need another one in my life. I don't he, doubt that. There that's was true. a fair bit of that kind of like, you know, my mom's been awful enough to me already. I don't need another woman who's going to also be awful to me. I mean, what if any discussions did you have with yeah, the what if is killing Johnny? Me. That's why she can't change her question in court. The fights he had with Amber. Because they get away with it in depots. This is a depot. We had a lot of And she can't change it in court. Um, <clears throat> yep. What do you recall? In the very beginning, he expressed that she made him feel crazy. That he so was so pixie in love sticks. that it made him feel crazy. Um, he was so in love that it made him feel crazy. The very first time that I mentioned September of 2013, when he and I were alone together a lot, he expressed that he thought that yep. she was cheating on him and sleeping with her co-stars in England on the films. And I said to him, or in the film, and I said <laughs> to him, listen, you know, I know her, I think, pretty well, and I talk to her a lot, and I think, think if she was having an affair, I would be one of the very few people that she would tell about it. That's fair. And I don't hold secrets or lies for anybody, and I would, I would tell you if that was happening so you could make your own decisions. But 
Um, <laughs> as far as yep. I know, that's really not the case. And I think that she's really in love with you. And I think that yep. she also is worried that you are having affairs because both of you are used to being sex symbols on earth. And both of you need to just accept the fact that you're really in love with each other and lean in and be together and that's love fair. each other. Um, I also and he told so me friends. that sometimes his jealousy would make him um, feel crazy and outside himself and that uh, he had to get it under control um, and that it would cause them to fight, to be specific in regard to your question. Um, <clears throat> He told me about the fight that they yeah, had. I don't think Elaine's listening to him either in this. Are you asking for specific doing. instances or are you asking about the nature of their fights? Okay. No, I, yeah, I am asking for what he told you. I don't know what I'm asking. I'm Elaine. Specific yeah. instances, yes. So to continue with what I was saying from before, he told me about the fight um, in the middle of the night. Uh, when I was living down the hill at Sweetser, one yeah, I, I like mentioned him too. that I saw him with a heavy pour of whiskey. I went outside to the pool and it seems spoke like Io got stuck between the two um, of their fights a and bit, and that must have been real fucking had, uncomfortable. And that she gets mean during fights, um, and that it really hurts his feelings, and that he then lashes Dominic. out every day. Marilyn comes up, um, and that you know she called him old. And he then calls her soon to be ugly um, and talentless and that they get really ugly with each other. Um, he told me whew, about a fight that they had. Um, we went to England that September. Um, that's a fair, that's a fair impression. Birthday, I think. That it might be fame, Whitney. not the fans. Um, and Amber was stuck working. My birthday, Raquel's birthday, and Whitney's birthday, the three True. people who That's she what Dr. Curry said. is closest to um, all have birthdays in September. And Raquel's just before the end of August, whatever. We're all Virgos. And, <laughs> We're all Virgos. Um, I love she couldn't be so with much. any of us on our birthday. So we all went to England to surprise We're her. All and during Thank that you, trip, I. Johnny proposed to her. Um, and they then... I'm pretty sure that night after the proposal got in a huge fight. Huge. Um, Big. Which he huge. Old, they both told me about separately. Um, and he said, I'm pretty sure that he trashed the hotel room. Let's see. There were a lot of people around Heard. After. For sure. Not a lot of people around talked to him after their, their fight on the plane. Um, so t t that's the that's the Boston L.A. plane incident. Is that right? That's correct. So, Mr. Awesome. Tell right, I, I'm going to ask you about the Boston L.A. flight uh, incident. You talked about it a little bit earlier, and you just said now that you spoke with Mr. Depp about it. Is Adventures that correct? with Oakley, my that's eighth correct. grader, just for okay. the outsiders too. What do you recall of your discussion with Mr. Depp about the Boston? plane incident that happened in May of 2014. And I went upstairs to his bedroom, which was like blacked out. Um, and I, I woke him up. I remember shaking his shoulder and saying to him, Hey buddy, like wake up, which was not something that a lot of people did to Johnny wake him from his slumber. Yeah. I always um, a pleasant voice to listen to for sure. Woke up and we had a conversation about easy, what happened easy on the plane. Easy to listen and to, much more so than Elaine. Really remember being on the plane. He didn't really remember getting off the plane. Um, he didn't really remember much detail of anything. And, I, and he swore up and down that he was going to stop. And he was going to stop drinking and taking drugs, and he was going to never do it again. That was that incident. What if, what if any uh, meetings related to Casey. alcohol? Uh, did you and Amber attend in this time frame? I understand because we didn't go to many meetings. Um, we didn't go we, to many meetings? We, I took Amber with me to um, Al-Anon, which is a, it's like a sister program to huh. AA. She said she went regularly and he said we didn't go to many meetings. Of Fair. And alcoholics, which I regularly attended 
So she came with me to a number of Al-Anon meetings and she also had, um, I think one or two phone calls with my dad's wife about how she dealt with helping him um, get off of his drugs and, and drink less. And um, she read a number of books about it. She was watching documentaries about it. She would listen to any radio show she could get on, like anything, anything she could get her hands on that would give her some tools for how to deal with this. She consumed. And again, that's going. What back if any to her communications did, did Johnny have with what? you in this time frame about wanting to? I mean, Courtney, I think get back with that would be as fair as after the Boston plane incident. Hey, did Deb went to New York? Hey, his employees and, for testimony. Um, I don't know. I remember, we were staying at the Ace Hotel. If, in if they had proof of that, it would have come up. Um, and Johnny started reaching out to me. He he went eventually back to Boston yeah, yeah. to start filming again. Would have been in like the <laughs> she next wants day to see how we're responding. We're for that Hello, sir. <clears throat> and we hate video depots. Um, More live witnesses. He reached out to me and basically said to the something to the effect of like, <sighs> "But this will round out the day. You know, I have to fix this. I will do anything that I can." And then uh, while he was in Boston, he let me know. And I think he was trying to reach Amber too, but she didn't. She wasn't ready to talk to him. Um, he let me know that he had um, engaged Dr. Kipper and that he intended with every fiber in his being to get sober. And that the nature of the conversation at that point was that he, he was gonna beat this thing, you know? Please describe for me what transpired, what, what you discussed I with- agree. Johnny and Amber relating to Australia in 2015. Amber After Heard does not represent all Tauruses. They were, because they were married says in this February Taurus. and they went to Australia in the spring. Um, if, if, you know, can I, if, I'm going to interrupt you just for a moment and forgive me, I just want to keep it chronological oh. here. Um, you, you described Unforgivable, earlier that you Elaine. were present for the wedding correct in February of 2015. She's asking these questions, by yes. the way, in the video, okay. not in court. Uh, and you also None of this is happening live in court. It's just uh, a video. About Amber wanting Johnny to be sober for the wedding. What, if any, observations did you she make should. about Johnny uh, at the ceremony and with respect to whether he was sober and clean? You know, I don't actually know whether Johnny was... I don't think Johnny was drinking on the day of their wedding. I really don't actually think he was. Let me rephrase that. Before was the Was she doing dinner drinking and drugs? Wedding. Because I was going back and forth between their um, respective like private preparation quarters where they were getting ready because I was technically her best man and his son Jack was his best man, but I wasn't one of the girls and felt more comfortable over there with them, but I was helping all the girls. So I was running back and forth on this golf cart between, I was so also taking between the bridal pictures. parties. I That's was fair. one of two people who what? Had, was friends with them that had worked as a photographer. So I volunteered to take pictures. That's a lot so of I was, day. Um, very intimately with Johnny and Jack leading up to the wedding. And he wasn't drinking. I don't think, I don't. I don't remember seeing him drink. And then let me ask you this: after the ceremony, as you were walking to the reception, yeah. what if anything did Johnny Depp say to you about Amber? As we were walking back from the ceremony, um, we were coming into Cafe Los Carrones, which is the, where the party was happening, <sighs> what if and I was walking what with Johnny. And congratulating him that they pulled it off and that they f they did it, you know. And he said, "Oh, um, this must be the depot exhibit." Wait, what happened? Now Damn I can it! Punch her in the face, and nobody can do anything about it. Wait, what? So I'm going to now turn your direction to Australia. Now that we're married, I can punch her in the face, and no one can do anything later, about it. That's an odd testimony. Um, you weren't you weren't present in Australia with uh, Amber and Johnny, correct? That's odd testimony. That's correct. I'm showing you what has been marked as Let's exhibit number three. Do you recognize anybody in this picture? Oh, there we go. I do, yeah, myself and Miss Heard. I do, yeah. Please describe what you see. 
I see a number that's of a good... long, thin cuts. Open and any question? Oh, that's how much time is left. What, if any, similarity are those oh, to the ones you just described uh, having seen after Amber returned from Australia? Very similar. All right. And are they the same? Were they different ones? I would have no way of knowing if they're the same or different ones, but they're that's similarly fair. long, skinny cuts like they the look, ones that I saw after she came back from That's Australia. exactly what Ben I'm going to ben show, Mr. Tellerite, I'm going to show you what has been marked as exhibit number five. Ben King said long, um, skinny, thin it's cuts. It's a text message exchange. Do you I like how we get the exhibits side by uh, side. This text make message this number here below, Arrow's Arc. Side by sides are helpful. Number, yes. Okay, so oh, so is this much. does this represent a text message exchange between you and Amber Heard on 12 16 2015? I need you. Yes, it does. Okay, and I'm gonna start you at the top. Literally meets my bestie when I can't decide says, what to eat for dinner. I need you. Do you recognize who is sending that message? See, these are open ended yeah. questions, Elaine. We know you I'm can going do to it. ask you to take a look at what has been marked as exhibit number six. Do you recognize the person in this photo? Yes, I do. Please describe what you see in this picture. Nothing. I see uh, Amber Heard, and I see an injury to Amber's scalp. Okay. And what, if anything, do you recall? No, Io does seem sincere. I agree with you. Seeing anything similar to that when you arrived? in December 2015 at Amber's penthouse. I remember this being one of the injuries that I was shown when I arrived at- um, Shown by who? At the Eastern Building on December 16th, 2016. That's interesting. And does this picture that's marked as exhibit number six accurately depict the what you recall seeing? I remember this being one of um, I think maybe two scalp injuries that there were. I remember there was another one as well, but I could be mistaken. I believe there was another one on a different part of her head as well. Do you recognize uh, the picture that is set forth as uh, exhibit number seven? Yes, I do. Please describe for me what what is depicted in this picture that you recognize. This was a picture of Amber's scalp and does it accurate? Does this accurately uh, depict what you saw uh, when you were shown it? And then, can you please uh, as describe you testified it? earlier in December 2015? Yes, it does. Mr. Tillerite, I'm going to show you what has been marked as Deposition Exhibit Number Eight. Uh, do you recognize this picture? Yes, I do. Please describe. Uh, what please tell us what it is. This is Amber Heard's face. Um, with a very swollen lip. Uh, and does this uh, That's a very swollen lip? accurately okay. depict what you observed when you arrived at Amber Heard's penthouse in December 2015? Yes. I'm going to show you what has been marked as deposition exhibit number nine. Do you recognize this picture? Yes, I do. Please describe. This is the clump of hair that I was shown I believe when was I arrived shown. at Penthouse Three on the night of December sixteenth, twenty fifteen. And does this accurately and genuinely depict genuine. the scene that you recall seeing? Genuine was not on the list. Yes, Thank you. Now, did what? Well, what if any plans was there as of December sixteen, seventeen of two thousand fifteen? So for somebody was saying that it does look swollen. Her lip doesn't swollen. That's fine. Amber to be uh, spending Christmas with Mr. Depp and his kids. Do you recall? Getting the pictures down while we talk. Yes, I do recall. Um, there was I think a plan he has to take the pictures for, down while we talk. Um, Johnny and Amber and Lily Rose and Jack and uh, Raquel and her boyfriend or fiance at the time, Josh. Um, to go to the Bahamas. Oh, and Raquel's mom and Amber's parents to go to the Bahamas and spend Christmas on the island together. Um, yeah. 
Okay. Mr. Tillerite, I'm going to ask you, what if any conversations did you have with Johnny Depp about the December 15 incident? I don't think that he and I, I don't know that he and I had a direct conversation about it. I'm not sure okay. if he and I had a direct So what if any... I'm going to show you, Mr. Teller, right, what has been marked. There are cuts is because this is a video deposition. It's been it's edited. It's a text message exchange because dated of 2 the, 10, 2016. It's been edited because of Do you recognize this document? It's yes, a, I do. It's a text exchange depo. between me and Amber Heard about a video that she sent me. A text okay. about a video. Now, it starts out, hi, uh, Steve left me a voicemail at 5 a.m. Uh, and that's from you, correct? That's correct. Do you remember what the voicemail message was? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Johnny called me at five in the morning and left me a voicemail in the character of um, some kind of management of like a property manager. Um, this is the manager of my life. About, yes, hello, this is management. And um, I don't remember what he said, but it was something to do with like, we have a situation that we need to change out the something. And it was just a lengthy, just off the wall, nutbag ramble in the character of management. Mr. Tillerite, I'm going to show you what has been marked okay. as exhibit number 17. And then Alex, I'm going to ask you oh, to almost done. play this. Oh, I couldn't see the timer down at the bottom. Arr. How much leeway does his dance have? And he's her friend. Oh, this video again. Oh, that's real loud after that depo. Was Io there? Like, what's Io's comment on this video have to do with anything? That's interesting to me. I wonder what they're going to ask. Because... What happened? I wonder what they're going to ask about this, because... I wasn't there, so it's not first person testimony. So how are we asking about this? Oh, my voice. Mind your ears. Nothing happened this morning, you know that? Yes, Amber sent this. Clearly, Amber sent this to Io. Did Io leak it to no. TMZ then? Nothing Is that the question? Yeah, you're right. I just woke up and you were so sweet. Nice. Sounds like Amber sent the video to Io. Sure does. We we're not even fighting this morning. All I did was say sorry. Did something happen to you this morning? I don't think so. No. That's the thing. You want to see crazy? I'll give you fucking crazy. Mega Pint oh, is back. Welcome, Mega, Mega, Mega Pint. Oh, you got this going? You got this going? Oh, really? Really? You see that shit on me? No, the fuck. I didn't. You were smashing shit. Oh, bye. She laughed. Huh. No objections because the objections are the objections are dealt with in the deposition. So by the time it comes to Mr. court, right, do you the objections have all been video? dealt with. So yes, no objections. Is. Was that the video that, that Amber sent to you on the text message exchange on February 10th, 2016? She sent it. Yes. Do you recall watching that video on February 10, 2016? I didn't know that. Yes, I recall watching that video at the time that I received those text messages. So I'm going to take you to 21 May, 2016. What do you recall with respect to a telephone call you received from Amber. Sure. Um, I was in New York. Um, I was there visiting family. 
Um, I was in Greenpoint, Brooklyn. I was walking down Manhattan Avenue. And That's a lot more exposition got, than we need. I believe a text message from Amber that said something to the effect of like, can you talk? And so I called and I was walking down the street as this happened. Um, yeah, she put me on speakerphone. Depots are kind of awful and long. So I was talking to both of them. So he I'm just sure he's bored. to pick up some of his stuff. <clears throat> and he has a theory that he, um, either he wants to ask you about or I, and I said, okay, sure. And hello, Johnny, like, you know, and he, I think it was he said, or she said. That sums up this case. Um, I think it was he said, John or she said. That Accurate. You and I together defecated on his pillow. Oh, the poop. The were used the when, poop. Um, shit on his pillow. The poop. So I started laughing <laughs> and, and I just, I, I was laughing. She was laughing. And, and when we I realized that he was serious, I was like, okay, look, you know, first of all, the poop, I wasn't there that day. And, and so he got very agitated by the fact that she and I thought it was funny and he started to get <laughs> because it's, um, well, more and more agitated. And I could hear him walk away from the phone. He came clomping back down the stairs. I heard like a noise and then the phone dropped. And um, he said to her, oh, you think I hit you? You think I fucking hit you? What if I peel your fucking hair back? Yikes. And then I heard the phone drop again and then I heard her scream. I remember her screaming. That's the night they were fighting. And I hung up the phone. When Io called And I called the Raquel immediately because I know that she lives one door away and would her and her boyfriend, Josh, who's a big dude, would be able to get there the fastest. And um, I, I called her, texted her right away and I hung up with her and immediately called 911 in New York. And then I called a friend of mine. Io has more emotion than Amber has showed this entire LA, trial. Who I knew had met Amber a number of times. And Io seems genuinely I distressed. I may have placed a second call to NYPD. Now I'm all frazzled and I don't remember, but I think I called NYPD. Mr. Waldman made some statements in April and June. Io sounded genuinely upset by that. that that, quote, Amber Heard and her friends in the media used fake sexual violence allegations. He heard them fighting and was scared for his friend. Depending on their needs. They've selected some of the sexual violence hoax facts as the sword, inflicting them on the public and Mr. Depp. That was made on April nope, 8th, I was on the phone. 2020. What, if any impact I did heard, that have on Amber based on didn't your see anything. Heard the fighting. Amber retreated. Amber became... Isolated, um, embattled, extraordinarily uh, distressed. And then on June 24th, yeah, it seems like it was real for Iowa. Accused Amber Heard of committing a quote abuse hoax against Depp. What were your observations of how this impacted him? I, I think fair that my previous statement encompassed. That. Not going to answer it again, which is fair. During the time that you were I'm not answering it again. And you were speaking with him up until you, test, you testified December of 2015. What, if anything, did Johnny Depp ever tell you about Amber Heard being physically violent to him? Nothing ever at any point. Do you agree with me that uh, Mr. Depp and Ms. Heard? Well, who's talking now? Uh, had many verbal arguments? Yes, I do. And you were a witness to a lot of those verbal arguments, correct? Any verbal arguments. I was a witness to some verbal arguments. Okay. And did you ever hear 
Ms. Hurd say anything mean to Mr. Depp in those arguments? Sure, that's a yes. verified. And did you ever hear Ms. Hurd say anything vicious to Mr. Depp in those arguments? Yes. So would you agree with me that when they argued, they were mean and vicious to one another in what they said? That's fair. I would categorize it very differently. Oh. Sir. Well, really? you testified that you heard Ms. Heard say mean and vicious things to Mr. Depp when they argued and vice versa. Is that accurate? Yes. And I'll answer the questions about IO not being in person when this breaks. And although you witnessed arguments, verbal arguments between the two of them where they exchanged mean and vicious statements, you never saw Mr. Depp assault or beat Ms. Heard on any occasion, correct? Judge? No, I never saw either of them physically assault the other one. And this is much later Did in the day. You can see how the sun has changed. experience him become violent as a result of or because of smoking cigarettes or joints? As I've already explained to you probably eight times, I've never seen Mr. Depp become physically violent with Ms. Heard. So if that's what you're asking me, if he smoked a cigarette and that made him violent, I think you know that that's ridiculous. And the answer is, again, no. Did you ever witness Mr. Depp become violent in any manner uh, on account of him smoking cigarettes or joints? If you want my honest answer, my yes. honest answer is that Mr. Depp mixed substances constantly. And I keep trying to tell you that. He mixed oh, all kinds of annoyed. things together when he got crazy and violent. So, and upset and paranoid. So, and I never knew what he had taken. When you say, when you say when he got violent, when did you see him get violent? He didn't say violent. I saw, he said I saw crazy. Mr. Depp throw glasses and dishware. He said he got crazy. On at least two occasions, which I would characterize as physically violent. And do I know if don't he smoked marijuana or cigarettes? Before that, I don't know. Don't, don't when take were those a shot two occasions? Here, what if any? Sometime during the time that I was living in Switzerland. And, and one sets at the Eastern building. And prior to throwing those dishes, did you witness him um, by being any drugs or alcohol? Oh, he did say violent? Okay, that's fair. I, I might not have heard you he said violent tell you, and crazy. But seeing as Mr. Right. Depp always crazy was and violent. cigarettes fair. and Thank marijuana, you, Chad. my assumption would be yes. Okay. It's... Depots are very hard for me to like, as I'm doing the chat and this, depots are just an energy drain. Everyone else is on their phone too. Do you recall? But they already um, know what this says. They know these, they've watched these. When Ms. Bredenhoff showed you a picture of a clump of hair on the floor? Yes. Okay. When you saw that, that was more than a day after um, it was allegedly pulled from her head by Mr. Depp. Is that right? Well, if you want to get technical, yes. my understanding was that their fight happened uh, very late at night, uh, which is technically the morning of the 16th. So not the and next day. I arrived at her house around midnight, the night of the 16th. So same day. So technically, it's not more than a day after it's in the same 24 hour period. That's so fair. Technically, the answer to your question is no. Okay. That's fair. So I'm just talking about the hair on the ground that you saw. When you saw it, was it your understanding that it had been there for more than 20 hours? I have no idea what time their fight started or ended. So I don't know if it was 20 hours or 16 hours or 13 hours, but my understanding again was that they had gotten yeah, it sounds into like a fight getting annoyed with the sometime questioning. in the morning of the 16th slash late at night on the 15th i don't know at what point during the which that during that fight in which the clump of hair was ripped out of her head and again it happened sometime i didn't see it i was believing then and there so yeah sure my my understanding was that, what that told. clump of hair had not been moved since it was ripped out of her head we're done. And we're done. We're out. Done with the. <laughs> this is probably a good place Complete to break for the day. 
All right. Do you, what's your next? Who's your next witness? We we have another uh, video deposition. Raquel Pennington. It, it's a long one, so we could listen to some of it. All right. Let's go, we'll go ahead and start. Okay. Let's go ahead and start it. All right, today. Raquel Pennington. At least we'll get thirty minutes in. Okay. At least we'll get thirty That's minutes fine. in. Yeah. All right. And Your Honor, just for your benefit, the jury's benefit, the questioning starts with Miss Vasquez on behalf of Mr. Depp, and then I question Miss Pennington at some point, which will probably be tomorrow. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ron Byrne, for pronouncing Vasquez. We haven't heard from you in days. It looks like the, everybody's sitting and watching, but I'm sure. Name oh, at least. Okay. Um, in what city and state do you currently reside? Los Angeles, that California. The jury better. All right, Raquel You've Pennington. Been deposed before. Right? This is one of Amber's other friends. Yes. It's interesting that none of them are in person. You were in they are unavailable to come in person. Is that correct? And that yes. means a lot. Have you been deposed in any other matter? No. What was the purpose of the declaration that you submitted during Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd's divorce? The purpose of the thing that I wrote, which I don't know if it was technically called a declaration or whatever it was, it was to write down my account of events as fresh in my memory as possible. And Ms. Hurd asked you to, to write down your witness account. Is that correct? I, I do not remember actually. I think, did, I don't know. Oh, we just been. Did Mr. Spencer. Depp ask you to write down anything in support of any legal filings? I, I, I don't remember. So it's your testimony sitting here today that you don't remember one way or another, whether it was Mr. Depp or Ms. Ms. Hurd that asked you to write down your witness account during their divorce. Is that correct? Um, I wrote down my account. That is the memory that I have. I wrote down everything as clearly as I could remember it as soon as I could. You provided a witness statement in the UK proceedings. Is that correct? You guys, thank you for the bang, but I'm seeing Nick Rakeda so. tweeting that he just hit 400,000 subs. Witness statements are coming for you, Rakeda. You provided. We have 100,000 people on live. We can do it. And you provided this witness statement to the son's attorneys? Yeah, apparently Rakeda just hit 400k. Not that I'm racing long to. I don't They should make a Camille Vasquez action figure. Provided to. Did you testify in the UK trial? And Camille's going um, first because they called the deposition. Yes. And for which party did you testify for the UK trial? They're not friends anymore. And that might be why she's not the, willing to come in person. Um, publication. The depots count towards court time for the party that's asking. And by so, the publication, you mean the son? Uh, yes. So the time that Camille is questioning when counts the to them? The, third. the time that... The time that um, Rottenborn yes. is questioning goes to them. Perhaps six months ago, maybe more. What did you and Ms. Hurd speak about? Oh, the audio is on that is rough. Probably um, it was before her baby was born. So we were mostly speaking about her baby at that point. Did you speak to you guys, we're going to have to go to a little longer subscriber number to cut down on Whitney bots. Heard. A little longer time. Sorry, y'all. Um, I hate doing that, but I hate those bots more. Around uh, November, October, November of last year. And when you say last year, you mean 2021? Oh, yes. the audio. When did you first meet Ms. Amber Heard? Um, this is all going to be background I believe it stuff. Was 2003. When you met Ms. Hurd in 2003, you developed a friendship. Is that right? Yes. Would you say you were best friends? Um, It'll be awkward if you say no. Very close friends. Oh, awkward. Your friendship with Ms. Hurd has persisted through her relationship with Mr. Depp. Is that correct? Yes. And you were friends with Ms. Hurd through her divorce from Mr. Depp as well. Is that correct? Yes. 
other than when you lived at the Eastern Columbia building, which we'll get to. Possible. Did you ever live with Ms. Hurd? Yes. When was this? Twenty seventeen. The thing about depots is people forget they're going to be played in court. So that's yeah. where you get some of the where did you both live? We lived on Holly Drive. I don't know. Was that a home? Yes. Lucas possibly. And did you pay rent? No. Um no. Did Miss Heard? Yes. Sitting here today, do you still consider Miss Heard a friend? Oh. Awkward. Um, Awkward. Awkward. I wouldn't consider her not a friend. <laughs> what does that mean? We don't speak. We are not enemies. Why don't you speak? Um, we grow apart. Hmm. Anyone know what that's about? Can I put my question read back? Yes. We are not friends. We are not enemies. Sitting here today, you can't give me one reason why you grew apart from Ms. Hurd. I wanted to spend more time with other people in my life and prioritize other relationships. And That's going to be hard to sit in court and hear. Other relationships. Wow. Over the course of your friendship with Amber Heard, did you ever see her using illicit drugs? Can you define illicit <laughs> drugs? Not prescribed. What do we mean by nut drugs? Um, Yes. Did you ever see her use cocaine? Mm. Yes. How many times? That would be such a hard thing to answer in depot. How many times did you see your friend drink? I don't know. More than a few. Countless? The no. audio cut out. Weird. Less than 10? Yes. Oh, that's why it Less cut out. Less than five? It was edited. Yes. If you remember, when was the first time you ever saw Amber Heard use cocaine? I, I don't remember. Did you ever do cocaine with Miss Heard, Amber Heard? Um, yes. How often? Mm. Not often. Was there a point in your relationship with Miss Amber Heard using more cocaine? Uh, no. Depots are so. Did you ever see Miss Amber Heard okay. use cocaine while she was in a relationship with you Mr. Depp? Cocaine, Duff? cool. Great. Wow. Like at this point, all of this testimony feels so dry after what we've just witnessed. It's just like, oh, and? Like, and? Though? No, I don't think so, no. And? You know what provisional is? What? Yes. No. Are you aware that Miss Amber Heard has taken a drug called I want gummy bears? Yes. Do you know when she started taking it? Uh, no. Do you and know I whether we're Amber Heard continued to take provisional drugs? You love me. I think we're seeing that from the friends, as people are just like, I don't want to deal no. with this. Did she ever tell We've you? We've heard that witnesses she had say it in this case. She never told me that. I think we're all just like, okay. Are you familiar and. with any of the side effects of provisual? No. 
yes, the last depot said she was vehemently against cocaine, and that's what's did Ms. Hart ever tell you that of, she was experiencing any side effects as a result of her vigil? This is going to she consistency of testimony. Anything. And I got distracted by the gummy bear. Now we're bored, and my ADHD brain Mr. has wandered. Use mushrooms less than five times. Yes. Yes. Each of those five times, or less than, was she in a so, relationship with Mr. Depp? Did you say each of the five times? Right. Not each of the five times. How many times that you observed Amber Heard use mushrooms was she in a relationship with Mr. Depp? So Coke, mushrooms, prescription meds. Maybe three. And I don't remember if they got to this drug we saw Amber Heard with her nurse. While she was in a relationship with Mr. Depp. We are on witness um, Rocky Pennington. I don't know. I want to know if Io and Rocky are still Coachella friends. that we went to. Like the people that were friends with um, the second Coachella that we Anna went Delvey to. Anna banded together. And so I don't know if we got into the provisional on the nursing notes at all. I don't remember. Um. I just Maybe don't remember. at Hicksville? Oh, the trailer park. But was I can't Mr. be Depp welcome. Was Mr. Depp at Hicksville? Yes. Yeah, I agree About with that. June of 2014, you moved into one of the penthouses in the Eastern Columbia building. Is that correct? I don't remember which month, but I did move into the penthouses. We saw this stuff about Ambien. Approximately in 2014. What if anything would you do um, with all your super chats? Start with what if anything? I I don't know. <laughs> I would feel trolled by the law. Uh, approximately. This is what we're seeing. And Miss Heard at the time was in a relationship with Mr. Depp, correct? Yes. Yeah, she said no coke earlier, and, and now Mr. Depp who her bestie is saying she did. Right. I'm sorry, Kristen. Uh, they both did. I didn't mean to make you. When you say they both needs. did, no. they both sit you down and invite you to live in the penthouses. I don't remember how the invitation happened, but it came from both of them. Raquel seems sad. This was a penthouse Mr. Depp owned, right? She does. Correct. And specifically, the one you lived in, it was referred to as Penthouse One, right? Correct. And when you moved in, Mr. Depp gave you a master key to all the penthouses he owned, right? Yeah, it might be her lawyer. It could have been it um, might be one of lawyer. his That's totally fair for assistants. someone to have a lawyer at a depot. Yeah, it could be. When you say one of his assistants, you mean Mr. one of Mr. Depp's assistants? Correct. So one, either Mr. Depp or one of his assistants gave you a master key to all the penthouses that he owned, correct? Mm, yes. Mr. Depp never charged Mr. Drew for rent while he know. lived at Penthouse One, did he? He did not charge uh, Is him this any boyfriend? Rent. And this looks like a one of the... Did either of oh, that's Dodger people? Stadium. I think no. that's Dodger Stadium. This looks like... And how is this argument Maybe not. Involved? That could be a football field. This looks like we LA. We talked it out. <sighs> we talked it out. You recalled another argument with Ms. Heard at Holly House, is that correct? Mm hmm What was this argument about? Uh, I think that we were setting up for Thanksgiving and um, we were looking for uh, maybe some glasses or some dishware. We had just moved in, and I don't think it's a a. We couldn't find uh, them anywhere. I don't think so. And then um, she finally found them in a place that I thought I had looked, and uh, we started arguing about that. She thought that I wasn't uh, looking hard enough. I think, and I. Told her that I thought that I looked there. 
Yeah, I think that's what their argument was about. Well, I think it shows the friends are sharing their experience um, of each person. Was this a verbal altercation or did you get physical with each other? And I think that's um, fair. Amber might not be telling all her friends the things. Yeah, I believe that we, I believe so. that I pushed her. I'll look when court's done. Amber Heard react to that? The meds were in the doctor's report. She... But the vehemently against drugs versus doing she drugs might be different. Or hit different me face back. for different friends. She hit or pushed me back. Yeah. You know where where she hit you? I think it was on my cheek. Do you recall any other physical altercations that you've had with Miss Amber Heard? Uh, no. Do you recall any specific instances when you saw Nothing Amber if they subscribe so that I also else. hit 400K like he just did. <laughs> uh, no. In the time you've known Amber Heard, have you ever you seen can see her the time wear jumps here. hair extensions? Oh, hair extensions. Um, there's yeah. no, there's no yes. way I'm believing she wouldn't. Did she have hair extensions in while she was in a relationship with Mr. Death? I... <laughs> I, I don't know when exactly she had them throughout the time of knowing her. I'm going to mark as Pennington Exhibit 1, Ms. Pennington's witness statement in the UK proceeding, which is dated June 16th, 2020. So witness statement from the UK. Okay. Ms. Pennington, first and foremost, do you recognize this document? Yes. I did. I thought it was sweet. Ms. Pennington, this is a sworn witness statement that you, you provided in the UK. Right. I understand. I wanted to get to the oh. bottom and make sure that this was the one that I signed and saw the date. And that was the Ooh. full document. I just finished it. Yes, this is the document. Did you write this witness statement yourself? I don't know. So, yes, I think her, that I think that's yes. her lawyer. I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. Yes. Thank you. Did anyone help you write this? Um, no. Did Amber Heard help you write this? No. Did Amber Heard's counsel help you write this? No. Other than your attorney, did you Those speak with questions. anyone about the preparation of this witness statement? No. Could please turn to the tenth page of the document. I'm just saying, where you your guys, signature is. We are over three hundred and eighty-four thousand subscribers on the channel. Thank you. Nick Ricada just hit four hundred k. We're coming, Lauders. We're coming. We're within striking distance with ninety-nine thousand of you here. Is that your signature on the tenth page of this document, Ms. Pennington? Now, Lauders. Now, Law Tube's racing. That is my e-signature. Yes. Are all the statements in this document true to the best of your knowledge and recollection? Yes. You previously testified that you went on a trip to Hicksville with uh, Ms. Hurd, Mr. Depp, and some other friends. Is that correct? Yes. Do you recall when this trip occurred? Riketa said he just hit 400K. Not which I off believe. the top of my head. I didn't know she was a UFC Do you recall fighter. who else went on that trip? Yes. And if you guys want to watch who Depos without commentary, trip? they are all available on the uh, internet. Whitney Heard. Nathan, was who was um, one of Johnny's assistants. Yeah, I think there are two um, Raquel Penningtons. Brittany Eustace. Kelly. Do we Milano? need to get to the drugs at the wedding. That's what I thought. Thank you, everyone. Same name. Justice for Anyone Raquel Pennington. Trying to remember. Yes, justice for the other Raquel. Hashtag wrong Rocky. No, I I don't remember anybody else. 
where were you all staying? At Hicksville Trailer Park. Did you personally witness Mr. Depp become, quote, angry and aggressive, unquote, toward a friend of yours? Yes. Relative to where Mr. Depp was, where were you when this occurred? Um, we were around a campfire. No, they count towards the side that's asking the questions. My question is a bit more specific. <laughs> Relative to where Mr. Depp was when this occurred, where were you sitting or standing? I was at the same campfire. How close were you? Yes, sir, we'll see. Uh, I mean, this is so... Six to ten feet? Slow. What time of day did this occur? Evening. They are wild. Have you consumed any drugs or alcohol at this time? I think so. Yeah, how do you push someone back on their cheek is a very fair question, Amber. What do you recall consuming? That's why this time. witness is here. Um, I don't remember. I don't think Ricky like wants wine. to do this. I don't remember specifically. Do you smoke any weed? No. Did you consume any cocaine? No. Have you consumed any mushrooms? Uh, I can't I believe so. I can't move the super chats. Unfortunately, they won't. Have you consumed any MDMA? No. Who was a friend that you referenced Mr. Depp became, quote, angry and aggressive towards? Um, Kelly. Kelly Sue. How did you know her? She was um, married to a work friend of mine. Do you have any independent recollection of hmm. how long you had known Kelly Sue Milano by the time Hicksville occurred? Milano like the cookies? More than one year, less than two. I have gummy bears. I forgot they were in my desk. What did you witness <laughs> Kelly Sue Milano doing that evening? before Mr. Depp became, quote, angry and aggressive. Angry and aggressive? I witnessed yeah. her hang out with the rest of the group. Did you see her consume any alcohol? Um, this is Camille. Not that I remember. The jury is going to be so bored. Did you see her smoke any weed? No. Consume cocaine? Risk Girl was the no. flight attendant. I thought. Did you see her consume any mushrooms? Um, the maybe best, one. They're the best coming bears. So we're, I'm 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 genuinely trying to remember. I saw I saw her eat some amount. I don't know how much. Did you see her consume any MDMA? No. You testified that Mr. Depp said words to the effect of, quote, get off my woman, end quote, to your friend. Is oh, that this right? is the Hicksville. Sorry, I lost I my train of thought. That. I was bored. This is Hicksville. Did you personally hear Mr. Depp say that? Yes. Is this the, quote, angry and aggressive, end quote, conduct by Mr. Depp that you testified to? Yes. The angry and aggressive Other conduct was get off my woman. Kelly Sue Milano to, quote, get off his woman, end quote. What did you personally observe Mr. Depp do that was, quote, angry and aggressive, end quote? What, if anything? That was, that was what happened. Then I think Amber... I think they were, Kelly and Amber were hugging on a chair out by the fire. 
in Hicksville. He came out of nowhere, said that. And then I think that Amber and Johnny went back to the um, to their trailer. <laughs> Other than okay. hearing Mr. Depp say something to the effect of get off my woman, what did you personally observe Mr. Depp do that was, quote, angry and aggressive? That's it. Their candy piles getting smaller. Did you hear smaller, Amber say anything? And they have a bowl. Mr. Depp? I don't remember her saying anything. Did you hear Amber Heard raise her voice when speaking to Mr. Duff? No. What, if anything, do you remember about Amber's reaction to Mr. Duff's behavior? She was trying to comfort him. This evening in Hicksville, did you ever see Amber Heard consume any drugs or alcohol? I didn't see it. You didn't see Ms. Heard drink any wine? Yeah, I don't I don't remember a specific time watching her take a sip of a drink. Was she holding a drink? I don't remember. And this evening in Hicksville, did you see Mr. Dobb consume any drugs or alcohol? I I didn't see any specific image in my mind of him consume. Did you personally witness Mr. Depp quote Did in a rage? Did you see an image in your mind? And quote that Ms. Heard described? Did I personally witness the rage in the trailer? No. Yeah. No. Oh, the snapping wrist is the rage in the trailer. Did you hear Mr. Depp yelling in the trailer? No. Did you hear Ms. Heard yelling in the trailer? No. Did you personally see that the trailer was, quote, trashed, as Ms. Heard described? The next morning? At any point? Yes. yes. What specifically did you see in the trailer? Mm. The thing I remember specifically was the light fixtures had been knocked off. Consistent with Depp's testimony. So you didn't too. see Mr. Depp knock off the light fixtures in the trailer. Is that correct? I did not see it. We've moved on to mini jelly babies. So the only thing you know about what happened in that trailer is Thank what you. Ms. Heard told you and your observations of the light fixtures being I'm knocked just going to start bringing off. candy for the afternoon. The only thing I know about what happened in the trailer is what she told me and what I saw the next morning. Amber's witness. And the only thing you saw the next morning was that the light fixtures had been knocked off. Is that correct? That was not the only thing I saw. It is the specific thing I Amber's saw. Amber's witness. What else do you recall about the trailer? It was uh, in a general disarray. Okay. What does that mean? What I'm bringing more candy tomorrow. Trash. It was torn apart. What besides the light fixtures were thrown apart? I've already told you specifically, I remember the light fixtures. The rest is a general. This would have been more fun as a live witness. What is a general disarray to you, Ms. Pennington? Stuff off the counters, uh, cushions thrown around, things strewn about on the floor. Did you see Ms. Heard shortly after she returned from Australia? All right. Why don't we just yes. stop right there? So that'd be a good breaking oh, point. Good, I think. Your Honor. Okay. A okay. Breaking point. Perfect. Yikes. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and break for the evening. Thank God. Again, do not discuss uh, uh, this case with anybody and don't do any outside research. And we'll see you in the morning at nine o'clock. All right. Get some sleep. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I want. Thank you, Your Honor. Judge A, I, I feel that. I appreciate that. This courtroom is cleared out. I imagine that the line to get into court is not going to be quite the same now that we're getting into video depots. They are long. They are slogging for the replay crew. Replay crew, love you. Uh, watch all that shit on two times speed because damn, slogging. Let's see if the court asks if there's any final matters. I just matters. have a few items. I just just yes. for the record, I want to make sure exhibit uh, plaintiff 1248 from yesterday actually should be corrected in the record to plaintiff 1248A. Is that correct? 
That's correct, Your Honor. Thank okay, you. Okay, good. All right. And so the witnesses tomorrow, are they live, remote, or do we need a rem We have web one, link? one live witness tomorrow. The rest are all video depositions. So, oh. okay, so we don't need a WebEx link? No. Okay. No. All right. Other than that, jury instructions and verdict forms. Uh, I have received jury instructions from both parties. Thank you for that. However, I have not received agreed upon jury instructions as requested. Um, so I'm not folks. sure if that has happened or not happened. Get it as together. As far as getting an agreed. Your Honor, we have been trying to meet and confer with them for a week. Well, you know, I, that, Your Honor, they're identified and emailed to Sammy. Okay, so the ones that you agreed upon? Yes. Okay, that's fine. So if, if you could do the same and just give me the, which ones you sure. agree upon, sure. I'd appreciate that. Um, if we can get uh, also by Thursday your objections to the ones that you don't agree upon in writing to me by Thursday Ooh, morning. Objections. Okay. Yes, can we Can we get that? just so I know what you're objecting cool. to, because I only have two hours on Friday morning from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. To, to, to deal with this issue. So I want to make sure we're all prepared to get that done at that time frame, okay? Fair, Judge All right, yes. great. Anything? Honor, I, just, I just want to make clear, we, she thought we she haven't was out. seen what they sent until they sent today. So okay, that, that's fine. We've been about this for a week. and have I don't, I, I'm not interested no in anybody's in finger pointing, but I understand, but <laughs> we'll just go forward from here. And if I can get them Thursday morning, that'd be fantastic, okay? Understood. All right, Thank great. You, All right, have a good evening, and we'll Thank see you in the morning. She is okay. so out. Your Honor, Rottenborn, just this minute. Your Honor, we didn't see what they sent until they sent it. Thank you, Mr. Rottenborn. We didn't see what they sent till they sent it. Your Honor, Judge A, I'm not interested in anyone's finger pointing. <laughs> and she's like, I'm done. I'm done. Um. I don't get the sense that Johnny Depp hates his fans. I do get the sense from Io's testimony that sometimes the way to fame is tough. Um, and the judge was out of there so fast. Judge A has been terribly, terribly patient. I don't know what they're telling Ben Chu. Ben, don't forget to collect your candy and your water. Are people coming up to the bar to say hi to the lawyers? Do we get autographs? Are people going up for autographs? Go ask for autographs. I just wanted to meet you, Elaine. You're uh, not Elaine. Sorry. I just wanted to meet you, Camille. You're famous. I would want to go meet her too. Elaine, I'm sorry that nobody's waiting to meet you. I'm sure it hurts your feelings, Um, but you're just not as fabulous. I mean, I'm sorry. The presentation in court today has been a little bit rough. Your Honor, we've been trying to meet and confer about this for a week. Question, which side was finger pointing just then? Rottenborn was. He was saying, we've been trying to meet for a week, and they just sent them, and we didn't see what they sent until they sent it. That's And the court's like, I don't care whose problem it is. Get me the objections. So... With regard to that, we're going to watch everybody leave court. I'm going to answer some questions. I'm again going to plug my stream and be oddly competitive with Ricada Law, which, you know, we love Law too, but he was tweeting out that he's hit 400,000 subscribers. And we've got, you know, over 95,000 of you in the chat, and we are at like 300 and almost 85,000 subs. So I'm like, can we be a little competitive? Maybe just for fun, maybe maybe just for a healthy law tube ribbing. But anyway, let us um, let us get to questions before we wrap up. The judge is going to go have a mega pint of whiskey. I'm sure she is absolutely exhausted. I've extended the invitation for DUI guy to come back on. Um, so we will see what works for him. I am going to go to Twitter real quick because there are some reports that I was seeing in the chat and I want to go through them. Oh, the judge has absolutely grown on me. She has been absolutely incredible. She's been fair. I think she could have been stricter. She hasn't, but she has been absolutely consistent. And all we can ask for really in a judge is consistency. You know what they're going to do. You know how they're going to do it. And that's it. So thank you to everyone who sent me this tweet from Greg Ellis. Uh, let's see. Um, reliable sources in the UK have confirmed, and I saw this in the chat too, have confirmed that Amber Heard is now facing potential police investigation for perjury and may not be allowed to enter the country again. This would end her ability to film and work on any co-production there. Very, very interesting. But again, she, if she testified under oath there, which they pointed out yesterday, this might be, I know a lot of people are like, where's the perjury? She lied. This might be it because in this court, she backpedaled and made a very big deal of, well, I think donate paid and pledged are the same, but it's very clear in the UK. She didn't say pledged. She said donated. And that is a big deal. Um, why did Camille stop crossing? She was done today. I think she was done. 
Does the jury get a questionnaire like they did in the Black China case as in they will have to tick off things and agree on, by the way, love your videos, been here since 3K. Welcome. Thank you. Um, I don't know if they had a jury questionnaire for voir dire. We are well past that. Um, Greg Ellis is not a reliable source. I don't, you know what? I, this is what I've been seeing on Twitter. It's been shared quite a lot. We will, we will see. So again, don't know. We will see. But that is what is being reported, which is why I'm going through that that is what is being reported. So tomorrow morning will be will be boring. I wonder who their live witness will be. I wonder how the jury will feel about so many people coming um, coming in person for Johnny and not being in person for Amber. It also is harder for the jurors. It's harder for us. It's harder for everyone to pay attention to the video debuts. They're, slog they're long, they're slogging, and they get cut up weird. And the reason they get cut up weird is because in a deposition, you ask the question, there's an objection, and the objection is marked for court. But then they actually go over those with the judge through all the objections and edit those depositions. So yes, some of the hearsay comes in because they agree to it, but they edit down all those depositions and then play them. So it makes them, um, it makes them choppy and it can make them a little bit awkward. So that's, I think it's going to be hard for the jury to be like, well, why aren't your friends here? If they feel that you are so badly abused, where are they? And that might be something that's in the jury's mind. They do notice these things and clock these things. And when the depositions are boring and hard to sit through, you can lose the point of the testimony. There was some good testimony for both sides in, um, in these. So I don't know if it'll be Whitney tomorrow. Can Amber or Johnny be recalled again? No. Uh, well, Johnny, yes, by Amber's side, which might be who they call tomorrow. It might be Johnny that they call tomorrow, um, and he might already know that. Johnny can be called by them for the cross-claim, but um, I don't think there's any reason to recall Amber on the rebuttal. There's nothing that's not been covered. Am I correct in reading that Camille was just letting Amber show herself and thus sink herself? Kind of sort of hung with her own rope strategy. I mean, sometimes you just need to let people talk. Um, I had a Mary Jane closet. Fantastic question. Court TV just stated the hug between Depp and Camille un undermines advancement of female attorneys thoughts. Who I'm well, who said what? Cause I've seen both male and female attorneys hug their clients. I have hugged victim and victims and witnesses. I've never considered the gender of my victim or witness when hugging them after they've, they've testified generally not in front of the jury. Um, but after court, when we've had verdicts, I've hugged plenty of people that have come through my courtroom. I've had defendants hug me. It, not always. Well, that's a story for another day, but I've had defendants hug me um, after cases. It's, uh, I think that's trying to make fetch happen. So those are my thoughts. I think that this is her client. She fought for her client and she did a good job. And I think that is a moment. She also hugged Ben Chu. So no, I think hugging people is just an honest expression of joy and camaraderie. Most honest thing today was the TMZ slip. Yep. It was great. I'm going to need to clip that down later. Am I correct in reading that Camille was just letting out? Oh, yes, we did that one. I'm going to get to the rest or I'm going to try to get to the rest of the super chats um, for sure. Amber Heard investigated for perjury in UK and Australia, now USA. We will see. So I agree that it's a dumb take. So I don't, I don't know who on court TV would say that. As an attorney, do you think it feels like to be Camille this evening? Fantastic. It feels fantastic. I don't know if any attorney really wants, well, maybe some do. I mean, me sitting on YouTube, <laughs> do, do attorneys want attention? I don't know. When I was working in court, I wanted to be left alone to do my cases. I didn't want kind of the eyes of the world on me. I saw what happened um, in the OJ case and to the female prosecutor in that case, um, you know, made fun of by, about her clothes and her hair. And which is, again, when I'm with Umbridge, I am trying specifically to call out the shit that Elaine's pulling in court professionally, but not not to make fun of her looks. And the same way I'm trying not to elevate someone because of their looks, other than to mention that Camille probably spends longer getting ready in the morning than, um, you know, Rotten Born and Ben Chu, and that is the plight of female attorneys. But their competency, because I saw how cruel the media was to the female attorneys, they didn't do that to the male attorneys. They talked about their gaffes in courts and the thing they said, but they didn't make fun of their dress. So I think that it must feel 
um, good to know that you have performed on a very large stage um, with all the eyes on the world of the world on you and your client's reputation hanging on you. And then you've pulled it off brilliantly. I think she should feel relieved. I think she should feel, um, I think she should feel, well, I think she should sleep. I think she should be, um, proud, very, very proud of how she performed in court. She sounded nervous um, at the beginning. You could hear the nerves in her voice. And that happens to me too. When I get nerve sighted, you could hear that she was a bit nervous. And I think she found her footing. There were a few moments when Amber Heard caught her out and was like, this report says I'm a man, or this is on that page. And she handled it very well. She handled herself and she shut down that redirect. I think she had a tremendous day at work. I think she should be incredibly proud of herself. And I think she should, um, knowing that she did such an inspiring cross-examination will hopefully inspire other attorneys to say, I can do better because Elaine is not, is not doing her best. And it's just hard to see. So with that, I think Camille should feel on top of the world. And I don't know how many more witnesses Camille has. She probably has a few days where she's in the back and doesn't have to do that. But she had a very big job in this trial, and I think she handled it brilliantly. Umbridge also has a very big job in this trial. And I think that between client control and being flustered, because you hear Umbridge in the depots, the questioning is the same. What if anything this? What if anything that? She can't break that. And that might be because Umbridge has been doing this for long enough that she cannot break, um, that she cannot break that. So I just saw, I wanted to get to this one first. Emily just saw in the New York Post that Io Amber's friend testified today. Yes, Io testified by video deposition earlier. Um, Io was much easier to listen to, agree, than Rocky's depo. Rocky's depo so far feels well, we'll see how it does when it gets into Amber Heard's team questioning. This is the opposite side questioning. So there might be a little defensiveness there because these are Depp's lawyers questioning Rocky. And if Rocky feels loyal to her friend, that's going to be harder. Um, Amber Heard's PR team working overtime. Vogue is even asking us why we need to believe Amber Heard. I wonder if they are watching the same trial. One has to wonder. Um, we need to believe what we see in court and then ask questions if it matches with the other evidence. Does Camille have a glass of wine or beer tonight? Probably. Or still too much focus on the other depots. Oh, no. Attorneys are very competent when it comes to drinking and working. I think a glass of wine, if she chooses to drink, if she does drink. The real literature chick said, I found Rocky to be unreliable and couldn't be bothered to remember. I mean, it was almost as if she didn't want to perjure herself with what she testified in the UK. I'm sure a lot of that will come up. So, um, scar tissue from what? We all, I mean, it's a good it's a good question. The jury can bring it up. I don't think it matters. Um, yes, her name is not actually Umbridge. It's a Harry Potter joke because she grates like Umbridge. The link for the Erlen lenses is down in the description box. We're going to get to some more. Um, please react to what Court TV said about the hug. I just did. Just did. Um, was Amber Heard required to testify? Yes. She couldn't prove her counterclaim without testifying. So I'm going to get to um, some earlier Super Chats. Is Johnny's sister going to testify for Amber Heard? I don't know. Um, I don't know. I would have to go back and look at the witness list. Elaine sounds like uh, Janine Moss or Moose. I don't, I can't think of that off the top of my head. How's the procedure for jury deliberation? Do they have to answer formulated questions by the attorneys? Do, how do they get to do it? Seems hard. They, this is a good question. They're going to get to do the they're going to get the jury instructions that tells them how to deliberate and then they get to self-organize and then they have to fill out the verdict forms, which once we get the final verdict forms, we should be able to see. So um, what is the penalty for perjury? It depends on the state, but um, it can be a felony and it can be a serious felony in Virginia, which means criminal consequences perhaps, but there can also be civil consequences, contempt and things like that. We're not there yet on this. Watching on delay and just got to redirect. Holy shit. Uh, yeah. Dana, Dana or Dane, Dane. Yes. This case is very interesting so far. It is, and it's going to have its moments where it's just like, ugh. so, yeah. Oh, Amber Heard's team hugged her, not today. Today, she walked right out. Um, but we've seen Amber Heard's team be supportive. Lawyers are supposed to be supportive. They are your people. They are your warriors. They are your gladiators. They suit up. They put on the armor, and they fight for you in court. They should absolutely be able to hug their fucking clients. <sighs> Her friends did seem annoyed, but I would be too if I was being asked to do these depots every three to five business days. That's fair. 
Um, admire your channel. Thank you. Your take on this. If it was the other way around, Herd being a man, Depp being a woman, um, do you think it would have gone this far? I mean, if, if Herd was, if it's going to be hard for me to flip, if Herd was alleging that, I, I, I don't know why my brain has stopped. Um, but with defamation, I can imagine defamation going this far, but it depends on the societal impact really. So, you know, does, if, if heard is a man accuses a woman of assaulting them, we might bump into the issue and I'm sorry, it's very tired and my brain is struggling. We might run into the issue of it doesn't have the same impact because nobody believes it, which is an which is an issue for male victims of domestic violence. And it might not have gotten to the point that it was damaging if a man said, you know, this woman is abusing me and made the statements or made the, the allegations that were made in the op-ed. Would there be an op-ed? Does anyone, would anyone have published an op-ed by a famous male victim of domestic violence? Would that have happened? Um, so I think there's a lot that goes into that about how our society views things and views like the shooting of how things happen. So there might not have been the impact to get to the defamation case. When Depp was, um, when Depp was accused, uh, it was believed and he suffered the consequences. And now he's saying that that's not true. And those consequences shouldn't have been suffered. I will look up the court um, TV piece. I've had some questions with, you know, court TV's reporters sitting next to the PR guy. Uh, there's been some interesting takes. So I'm happy that I don't have corporate overlords. I just, well, I mean, other than the YouTube like algorithm gods, but other than that, I get to you know, think what I think and say what I say and do what I do and use cursey words. Would Camille be permitted to be told by the team that she's trending to keep her to stay on course? No, I think that would throw you off horribly. I wouldn't want to know. I wouldn't want to look. I wouldn't want outside. I would want to run my race. It's like in the middle of a football game. I don't know. I've never played football, but in the middle of a, you know, sports ball, do the players look to see how their teams are trending on Twitter? I don't think so. You focus. She might go look at it tonight. She might not. She might not care. And a lot of lawyers don't. They want to perform well in court. I don't know how much she'll care about the court of public opinion. Kate Moss' story will lead to Amber's DV and passed and lying about it under oath in the UK. Um, we got into some of that today. Did you notice the super cute hug between Ben and Camille? I thought it was endearing. I do. And I've had male bosses who were tremendously supportive of me and hugged me after verdicts and were wonderful when I was um, when I was still at the deputy district attorney's office. So I, I don't think it's weird that lawyers hug each other. We're not robots. Um, did you see Amber and Elaine go into, got into after court yesterday and Elaine told her she could represent herself? I didn't see that. Very interesting. That might explain why redirect was a fucking mess. I mean, if there's stuff going on behind the scenes that could explain Elaine just being completely rattled. Um, Kelly D I'm a, I can't mayor, Mari mayor used to be a lawyer. I I'm, I have no idea how to pronounce that. I apologize. What I see here is that they both have lots of love for each other and they are destroying themselves. I'm for Johnny Depp, but from experience, I feel it, I feel wrong. It's, it's hard. It, it is hard when you are used to, when you are used to things being one way or the other to wrap your head around, is this person lying? I don't necessarily want this person to be lying. And when they are, it becomes very, very difficult. So that's an odd thing to experience. Question, Amber deleted um, pics on her Insta showing her and Rocky with a tampon applicator posing during trial. Can they bring it up? If they noticed it, if they clocked it, I don't know. I mean, it. I don't, I don't know if it really is relevant in court. I wonder if Amber's objecting with her mic off is purposeful. I don't I think she was flustered and her papers were all over the desk. Thank you for your coverage. You're welcome. Why would they cover up the transcript hearsay purposes? Oh, we talked about that much earlier when they were playing the video and had the um, transcribing. If they hadn't agreed to the transcription, there can be differences in the transcription or what you hear. And they don't want the jury to rely on what they're reading. They want them to rely on what they're hearing. Um, so there's that. I find it odd how collected and put together she looks during cross, even though the same heavy stuff is talked about. That might be a strength thing, but Amber seemed very collected during cross. If Amber Heard had testified, um, 
if she had testified on direct the way she testified on cross, I think it would have been a lot more powerful. She told what she remembered. And again, there are um, victims of crime who are kind of detached from the emotion of the thing so they can get through it. I don't think it would have read as she was detached. I think that her performance on cross that her testimony, though there were obviously contradictions, it didn't feel as awful to watch as her direct. I think she did better on cross than she did on direct, which is odd. Do lawyers approach the bench this often in non-TV trials instead of just objecting? Yes, because it's about the jury not hearing what they're saying, not about the the cameras. It's about the jury. Um, but it shouldn't happen that much when people are prepared, but it happens in cross when you're bringing in a lot of evidence. This case has a ton of documentary evidence, photos, audios, depositions, transcripts. There is so much fucking evidence in this case when you're dealing with, they're into the numbers in the well into the thousands. And so I'm not surprised that they are doing that before it comes in for the jury. It's, it's yeah, it's proper. Amber Heard threw her lawyers under the bus yesterday. If that affects their ability to be hired, can they sue her for defamation? No. Litigation privilege. I don't think it'll affect it. I think anyone watching this maybe will think that Amber was throwing her lawyers under the bus. That's not really fair to the lawyers. Um, I don't think the lawyers have committed discovery violations. If they did, the jury would have been admonished and we'll see it come out. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I don't think we have evidence of that aside from the motion for sanctions. Will the jury be able to identify themselves to the public if they choose to? If they choose to, they can. Um, what about the audio in Australia? I don't think it's coming up. Um, can they mute the other voices? No, I don't think it's coming in. I live in Melbourne, Australia, and we don't have rabies here or any other diseases animals can carry. Reason for the strict rules, because of our fauna, any other person has to declare and quarantine their animals, as should they. Follow the rules where you're at. Lots of snakes, though, in Australia, and all the spiders, all the things. I still want to go but all the things. Do you think this case is strongly in favor of Johnny? I didn't at the beginning. Or do you think Amber's team can salvage this? I think Amber might have kind of wrecked their technical legal arguments. And I think their technical legal arguments were quite good. Um, I think Amber might have wrecked herself in this case, very really wrecked herself. And that is going to be very difficult for her team to deal with because lawyers don't like to lose. None of us like to lose. We have some innate competitiveness. Um, we like to win and we like to win for, you know, our clients or our side. We're advocates. Lawyers are at their heart advocates. They want to advocate for one side or the other. And I don't know if her team can salvage it. It's just going to depend on the rest of the witnesses. But today was not good for Amber Heard's team. And again, I think the digital version is a stronger argument than the the print. If I'm Depp's team, I'm not even arguing the fucking print version. I'm letting the jury split the baby. It's like, give her one. Give her one count. Just give her that one. And we win the online version. That I wouldn't even talk about it. <clears throat> and they didn't bring it up in opening. Sorry, my voice is getting crazy. <clears throat> Question, do you think they'll talk more on the stage pitch? Nope. Um, just the side-by-sides we saw. This might have come in before. We saw those side-by-sides. Sorry that my... This stuff for my throat has been amazing. The throat coat. So I just... It is a thing. Why does Umbridge keep arguing with the judge? She was so flustered. It was not great. Do you think Elaine is intimidated by Camille? I think Elaine is overwhelmed. Um, maybe because she is so much younger and obviously on her stuff. I think... There is no room for Elaine to wiggle on this. And I think that she's caught off guard because again, in the depositions, Elaine gets away with that. I hate to say lazy questioning, but it is Elaine gets away with that style of questioning and she doesn't get away with it in trial. And it's causing her to change the way she's thinking about questions. And that is tough. Fellow Nashvillian here. Hello. How do you think the jury is going to react to the mess of a redirect by Umbridge? I think they're going to just be like, yeah, naturally. We thought so. Um, and I have not seen, I messaged DUI guy. Let's see if he, he has not messaged me back yet, but if he does, I'll let you guys know the same nurse whose notes you should throw out. Yeah. They were then going through and relying on the nurse's notes, which was so crazy. Like Amber Heard wanted to throw her nurse Filati under the bus, but then it was like, but nurse Filati did this check. It's, you can't have it both ways. Um, it's a circus show. Can Umbridge get in trouble for arguing the judge when she called her up to the bench probably said something. Petition to have you make shirts that say, what if anything is not a cure-all? <laughs> Maybe a mug? Maybe a mug? Um, I will note it down. What if anything? Wait, I'm, I'm, I love that the judge said that. I'm going to have to clip that moment at some point. 
Um, today was a lot. Let's see. How can it? Um, I can't do both. I'm trying. How is it we, that we can have so much unsubmitted evidence on a case that detailed? Is it possible that Amber's team is getting wrong info off her and is just trying their best to pivot and cover? Um, it's possible, but the unsubmitted evidence, like the stuff that's coming in on cross from depth's team is stuff that Amber's team has likely a lot of and chose not to admit. They have the depot from the UK. They're like, we need to see that you have it. You, it's your client's deposition. You just don't know what part they're going to try to admit into evidence, but you have the depot. Thank you, Georgina. Do you think, um, do you think that Amber has any idea that lying as she has and being caught could get you into more trouble? She has to. I don't think her lawyers believe her either. I don't know about that. Thank you. Love watching with you because you react. Oh, the, when I say lawyer reacts. <laughs> so what's left if cross is over, but not with the jury? Um, other witnesses and then closing. And well, what is left? Start over. As I hit my mic, we're going to start over. We're going to start over. What is left is the rest of Amber Heard's witnesses. Uh, maybe a motion to dismiss the cross claim or counter claim so it doesn't go to the jury. I think they'll probably bring one. That'll be fiery. Then any rebuttal witnesses from Depp. Then jury instructions. Then closing arguments. That's what's left. Those five things should be done by May 27th. It's going to be some busy days. What is this level th three thing she asked Amber? I lost my mind. I lost my mind. Amber testified on direct with Umbridge and you're a level three sommelier, which is like getting a master's degree or a PhD in wine. It is a massive accomplishment. It is a massive, massive accomplishment. And they said, so you're a level three sommelier. And I was sitting here. I, ha I know individuals that are sommeliers. Well, one. Michael Saltz, Saltzy from the Toddy Westbrook trial is a lawyer sommelier. I know that it is a lot, a lot of information, a lot of study and a, a very stringent test that you have to pass. So to be like, oh, and you're a level three sommelier, a big deal to be like, oh, I'm on level three. Well, if you're on level three and you haven't passed level three, you're not a level three sommelier. It's like if you're a white belt and you're testing for a white belt and a stripe, you're not a white belt and a stripe. You're still a white belt. You're not, you haven't, you haven't leveled up. If you're a red belt, you're not a black belt. I'm referring to Taekwondo because that's what my kids did, but it, you haven't leveled up yet, man. If you go to law school, but don't pass the bar, you're not an Esquire. You're not a licensed attorney. You are a JD. So it, you, you're a level two sommelier. So that's why I was like, it's it's a lie. It's just another stupid, unforced error to lie about. Why lie about that? Sorry, I love you and Jesus loves you. Well, thank you. As long as he doesn't come in and troll the chat, we're good. That's a joke to another live stream. Is it plausible Amber knew she couldn't win, so she picked it? No, I don't think Amber thinks she can't win. I don't at all. I think Amber 100% believes she's going to win. I think Amber 100% believes she's won this far. I think she 100% believes it. I think she 100% believes it. Uh, question, why didn't Camille show proof um, Amber Heard DV case? Why did it end so quickly? There's only certain things you can impeach with. And she asked the question. Amber said, no, if they don't have the live witness to bring in, it is going to be difficult. But the jury has heard it. So there they went to the bar or they went to sidebar. I don't think she was allowed. I think the judge denied it. I don't think she was allowed to get into um, the police report and stuff. I want Dr. Curry to come back and have Chu just say, so Dr. Curry, thoughts? <laughs> so what you saw there, um, yeah, what you saw there, I would love to see that. All right, I'm going to try to get to a few more of these, but yes, I would uh, love to see that. Um, you're on YouTube Discovery Live right now. I don't even know what that means, Lilac Flower, but thank you. Great. I don't know what that means. <laughs> But they, I, me, a streamer, and I'm like, ah, cool. <laughs> you chat, let me know. Elaine ended her redirect after an objection. Yeah, she, I felt like she was like, <sighs> I'm done. Fuck it, I'm done. Like, I felt like Elaine said, fuck it, I'm done. That's what I thought she said. But I would love to see that. Dr. Curry, uh, does this support your diagnosis? That's what I think it would happen. So she did. She flat out lied. I Googled level three sommelier when she said it. I She said level three sommelier. And it was like, well, I'm testing for level three. It's not the same. It's not the same. It's not the same. Can you retract a 
deposit if you find new info, like a deposition. I mean, I guess you could correct your testimony and you are given an app. You are given an opportunity after you do your deposition and after you do other stuff, you're given an opportunity to correct your testimony. So, um, that, so that, eh, eh, I was trying to do something. Um, so let's see. So, yeah, I don't know. Um, chances of Elaine being held in contempt of court after what would be the repercussions? You would have to get admonished by the judge and there's different ways. You don't have to hold a, you can hold an attorney in contempt of court, but there's other ways to deal with that. You would be admonished by the judge and then you can be sanctioned by the judge before you'd ever be held in contempt. It can happen. It's very, very, very rare. So Ty, it's very rare. Sorry, objection compound. Uh, brilliant. Thank you for the cheekiness. I appreciate it. Sorry, we're getting to some of these so late. I know they're from much earlier in the day. Question, love your channel. Congrats. Thank you. Could you explain the cure-all statement by the judge? The judge said it doesn't fix it. Um, the Elaine kept saying to the judge, like, like it, but I'm asking this way, but that doesn't fix it. So the judge is like, that's not a cure-all. The question's not leading just because you say, what if anything? That doesn't make it not leading. So that's why. That's why. Um, so let's see. Do both sides see each other's depots? Both sides participate in each other's depots. And that's a really interesting thing. So the lawyer that calls the depot is the lawyer that goes first. And you generally call the deposition of the opposing side. And the reason you call the depot of the opposing side is because you want to direct the deposition and you don't want it to go by without somebody not directing the deposition. So that is, um, that's why both sides are there. So both sides, lawyers are there. They see everything. Oh, we just binged you guys. That's a big, that's a big bing. Oh, we're at 385. We're coming for you, Ricada. So um, do both sides see each other's depot? Yeah, both sides are present and they see them and then they agree on the edits together with the judge. Why are they allowed to do depositions instead of testifying in court? This is one of the quirks of this case being in Virginia is that when it's in Virginia, you have witnesses that might be unavailable and it's very hard to subpoena them outside the jurisdiction, Virginia to California to drag them into court. It's hard to extend your jurisdiction that far. So they can't force them in. So if the witness is like, I'm unavailable, then you can use the video depots because there's rules of evidence about the witness availability. And if they're unavailable, then that's where we go. So that um, question, don't they need to identify when the injuries happen to her nose? She testified one day that she was a crash dummy for her dad breaking horses. They um, they didn't get into it. And I think it's fine that they let it go because it's just wild. So it's just wild. It's just wild. It did. It binged. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I believe you only have 30 days to correct your depot. That's generally, <clears throat> that's generally true. I don't know if they could have other times in different, um, <clears throat> excuse me, in different <clears throat> jurisdictions. So, uh, so I don't know, but yes, she did talk about that a lot. Um, Elaine, the mic, I think Elaine was so flustered. So I think she was so flustered. I think she was so, so, so flustered. That's what I think. All right. Um, next super chats. We're going to try to get through as many as we can. I was supposed to be helping Amber's case. How? So Depp's team, Depp's team did that first. And then you're getting to Herd's team. I think IO gave some testimony that was helpful. Um, but I think IO seemed, I don't, uh, for me, IO seemed like, look, I've seen Depp do drugs. I've seen her yell mean things. I've seen him yell mean things, but I don't discount that IO heard something over the phone that sounded crazy and was like, this sounds crazy. I'm calling Rocky. I'm calling the police. That's their friend. And they were worried about it. So I, I don't, you know, fault IO for any of their testimony. If this is Amber's witness, why is Johnny's side questioning first? Because of what we just talked about with depositions and who calls the deposition. Has Amber Heard and Johnny Depp heard this recording prior to today or just the lawyers? They can hear the depots. I don't know if they've chosen to. So is it just Amber's witness till deliberation happens? No, because we're going to get to the rebuttal witnesses by Depp, if there are any. Impeachment evidence doesn't have to be given in discovery. So can a witness like TMZ be called to impeach? It would be very hard to bring in a witness that's never been deposed. I don't think the court would allow that even for the purposes of impeachment. Um, how much time do you think Amber's team has left? I have no idea. 
I'm assuming you mean Amber. Did you hear Eleanor Rob say a deputy yesterday overheard yelling between Elaine and Amber Heard in the break room and Elaine yelled, if you're not happy, you can fucking represent yourself. Can we confirm? I will ask him. I didn't know that's where that info came from, but I will ask. I'm sure he will. He will elaborate on it, but that would be wild. Um, did they just say addicted to Oxy? I have no idea. I have no idea what they said. Um, how does he know what kind of drugs that were ingested? Has he tried them himself? How does he know all of this? I think Io, I don't think Io looked under the influence. I think he looked annoyed. And I think that he was saying, this is what I observed. So, um, so that's what, so that's what I think. Um, are depots recorded at the same time? Depp's team goes first and herds. Yes. Or is one recorded first and the other? No, they're normally on the same day, but if there's an issue like with, um, like with, uh, like with Whitney, they might get broken up onto separate days, um, for that. So let us keep going. I O posted on Insta on three thirteen, and it seems to refer to his testimony. He said no one could antagonize him into lying. Can he post before trial ends? He's not a live witness. So his testimony's technically his testimony's already done, right? He did the depot. His testimony's done. He can't be subject to recall. He's not under subpoena. So I don't see how it could be a problem. Um, so I don't see how it could be a problem. So yes, if it was going to, it's a problem only with live witnesses. Question for Kentucky DUI guys. Sorry, we didn't get there. Um, were the jurors watching Camille during redirect or watching Amber Heard and Elaine? If he comes back on, I will ask. I am, um, I don't know, but he, let's see if he has posted and I found what you guys were talking about with YouTube. Um, thank you for directing me. I, we are on the live discovery page, which I just screenshotted. So yay for, I guess, being on the explore page. I don't, that, I don't think that's happened over here before. So yay for the explore page. Thanks, law nerds. You guys are the best. Hey, all right, let's go to Twitter real quick and see if there are any impressions before we get back to, um, before we get back to super chats. So let's see. Um, on redirect, Amber Heard team appears to have come back from the dead and are reanimated. Um, that was from two hours ago. I would like to see the rest of that opinion. When Vasquez reads Amber Heard allegedly struck her ex-girlfriend headline, some jurors are even staring at the bench conference at the lawyers when they normally do not seem to do that. Oh, they want to know. Amber Heard is coming off as a professional gaslighter. Um, juror seven sighs deeply when Amber Heard tries to explain away the door recording that she was not the aggressor. When Amber Heard said, I hit you as a response to the door thing, talking about Johnny, the jury seemed to be taking notes furiously. I am uh, I am, in my humble opinion, Amber Heard sunk her career today, but she may have also launched it because this trial is being used as a publicity stunt. Um, after we come back from lunch, Amber Heard's face looks deflated. So there we go. We'll see if he starts tweeting again after leaving court. I'm sure he's talking to people in the courtroom and around it. And um, yeah. Can they object during the video depositions? We talked about this a little bit, but just to put a finer point on it, they object at the deposition and then normally they object and keep going. If the depositions used in court, all the parties meet with the lawyers, they have a ruling on the objection and then they edit the depositions. And the judge was talking about them doing that one night until 930 at night. The plan was to get Amber Heard in for, first so that the depositions would bore the jury and make them forget her testimony. It's possible that they buried it because they knew what it would be like. And they've got just a few more video depots tomorrow. I don't know how many more witnesses they have. So we will see. Um, do you think this trial will be shorter than predicted? No, I don't think so. These video depots are going to take some time and they know how much time the video depots are going to take. And the judge extended court time. I think if the judge sees it speeding up, we might get closing a day early, but I don't know if we're going to get that far with it. So, um, I just, I just don't know. Thank you, Vicki, um, for the super chat. Hello from Nashville. Yay. Question was the motion on count one denied. It was taken under submission. I don't think it's been reheard yet because I didn't see it. So it was taken under submission. I think it's going to be denied. Um, now that Amber Heard has testified, they can address it in the morning. Do you think Depp passed out listening to IO talk? I don't know. It's a, it's a long day to try to stay awake. Is this a hostile witness that says whiteness? I think because JD's team is first. 
Uh, it's an opposing witness in the depots, but not hostile. Question, can you explain how the evidence and exhibits are organized and prepared? Um, I can't explain how other attorneys do it. They're numbered in court by which side. So of a broad umbrella, they are numbered in court by which side puts them in. And if there are versions of an exhibit, then they're A, B, C, D, or one, two, three, four in general. Could personal safety cause a video depot? I mean, witness unavailability is what causes the video depot. But if the witness on, if the witness is unavailable because of that, then possibly, um, where did you get your earrings? Love the shape. Thank you. They are Kendra Scott, Sophia earrings. And I'm sure the mods already let you know that. Um, thank you for all your coverage. I appreciate you. Thank you. Oh, we definitely knew your girl's lips are feeling very, very pale. We've been talking all day, but we're pale. So thanks for all your coverage. I appreciate you too. You're welcome. Uh, Steph says, if these people are so concerned about Johnny Depp's behavior, why do they continue to live in his home at his expense? You're asking the good questions, Steph. It's just like Amber Heard yelling at Johnny Depp about leaving, yelling at him about going away, yelling at him about going somewhere and then being like, I need the locks changed because he's going to come back. All of the audio we've heard is her yelling about him going away. None of it about him coming back. Agreed. Agreed. IO seems to be the one checking behavior. I felt like IO ended up trying to be the voice of reason and that was probably exhausting. I'm exhausted watching this trial. Question, why was the TMZ slip up important other than proving she lied? It's important proving she lied. But she also said, I didn't call TMZ. His attorneys called TMZ. I didn't leak this. So it goes to the lying. It's important to me because I know TMZ claims that they own the rights to that video based on my own experience. So I was personally very interested in that. But proving that she lied and that she lied on the, seemingly lied on the stand and then was like, oh, it, it's a big moment for the jury to take into account. Did you see Amber Heard's team motion to strike the tweet from evidence, but the judge denied it? I didn't see that. I'm not surprised. Um, what happens if a witness turns out to be a complete shit show? Can one side ditch them or is the cat out of the bag? No, the shit's out of the horse on that. If a witness is a mess, it's your job to prep your witness. It's your job to depose your witness. It's your job. That is your job. And there's only so much you can do. Question, why are they trying to establish with this witness with IO? I think it was that Johnny Depp did drugs and sometimes was mean when he did drugs. And that um, IO is the one that called the police because IO heard that fight. And what IO heard, IO's testimony about hearing that fight was rang more true that IO believed and was afraid for his friend. That's how that testimony rang to me. The fact that Io's testimony had more emotion to it than any of Amber Heard's testimony was telling to me. I don't know if it'll be telling to the jury. Do you think it would um, be a strategy by Heard's side to put the deposition next so the jury could get bored and forget? Yes. They don't want to put another live witness up. They need some distance. And it's timing-wise, the timing makes sense. Um, what genre would the movie be? Horror, drama, comedy, or like a Medea Halloween style? Medea Halloween. That, that. Or like a, Yes. Elaine has been voted as one of the top lawyers in her region. How interesting to read her profile and success on her firm's website and then watch her IRL. Such a stark difference. Again, I think this is a civil litigator that does not go to trial much. I think she's very effective in depositions. I think she's probably good in discovery. I think a lot of her cases probably settle. A lot of civil cases settle. Most do. So she probably is very successful. She has a difficult client and she has not been great in court. It's probably not what she does a lot. You need litigators that litigate that are in court a lot and you need to know how much they're in court and how often they go to trial, not just how many cases they settle, not just how good they are at writing you suck letters and interrogatories, how much they go to trial. That's why DAs get poached so much to civil practice. Um, a, the money is better than government work, but uh, they get poached because they have so much jury experience. When Amber stares at the camera, I have to look away and I'm watching this online. I couldn't handle all her eye contact if I was on the jury. Christy, yesterday. We had um, Law and Lumber on, and we had um, we had uh, the DUI guy on, and they said that when Amber Heard looked at them, I think Rob was the one who's no, it was Larry from from DUI guy. Like I got chills. Like her staring at me was a whole thing, like a whole whole thing. So that was very very interesting to see. And actually, I didn't send Law and Lumber a link. Um, I'm going to do that right now, just in case he wants to come on. So if he wants to pop on with, with a lot of us over 
And we're on Trending Live, apparently. The YouTube bait. Come talk. <laughs> it matters. Um, so they both they both talked about Amber Heard staring them down at court, and um, that's a lot. I also want to know what the reaction is to Elaine mocking the jury. I very much want to know that. I very, very much want to know that. So um, did he say drinking cocaine? I don't know if he did. I don't. I, depots are hard. Him saying Johnny Depp was mean and vicious while being under the influence is hurting Johnny Depp, right? I think it's consistent. I don't think it's new info, though. We've heard that. Um, we, we've heard that. Why is he allowed to bring um, um, isn't that hearsay? So the hearsay objections are all ruled on beforehand. And with that, the I think we already know this information, but this is why I think the print version is a no-go because they could find the things that Depp said to be abusive. I don't think it gets you around the sexual violence headline. So there's that, but I don't, it's not helpful. This was, this was Amber Heard's witnesses. Amber Heard's witnesses should not be helpful to Depp. They are Heard's witnesses. Does Johnny Depp's team get to cross-examine this witness? Yes, but they do it in the, um, they do it while they are doing the deposition. Ms. Baker, what if anything do you make of this deposit? Can you elaborate on your feelings towards the witness? <laughs> Oh my, oh my. So what if anything, I don't, what if anything just stops my brain? Um, and I don't remember what witness this was doing. Um, I thought IO was a good witness. So um feel like IO is mostly honest. Wonder if Amber manipulated the end of IO and Johnny's friendship. I don't know, but it it didn't see it didn't seem the testimony from IO didn't seem exaggerated one side. You can see when witnesses are trying to only say things positive about one side or only say things negative about one side. So, you know, we can see. Question, isn't this wasting time? What does IO contribute? Amber Heard's allowed to call her witnesses. And with that, Amber Heard's allowed to call her witnesses. So who is in charge of editing video depots? The parties are, um, and they will task their tech people to do it. Question, do you think he will mention Amber Heard told him about the alleged essay or just the drinking? Well, didn't mention it, so we didn't get into it. That would have been hearsay, though, and it wouldn't have been allowable hearsay, so I'm. it might have come up in the deposition, but it would have come up in the deposition, but it wouldn't have been allowed in. So um, anyway, question, do you think the judge was more lenient towards Elaine because she wanted Amber to have better representation? No, I don't think the judge, I think the judge wants the attorneys to do their jobs. I don't think the judge is like, oh, you should get another attorney. The judge might be annoyed, but I don't think the judge is like, you should get another attorney. What's happening in tomorrow's trial day? It seems like we have a live witness and then a bunch of video depots bring candy. Um, why does it feel like they used depot to prevent all these hearsay objections? I think they used the depot because the witnesses didn't want to come in or couldn't. Is there a 911 recording of who called? Um, not that's an evidence. I'm sure there is a 911 call, but not that's an evidence. Is sobriety meant to be easy? All this proves is his relationship with addiction is complex, which is typical. So, yep. And we know, again, Johnny's team did a very good job getting out ahead of these things they know were going to come up. They're not afraid of this. They're like, yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah, and. Can hearsay be used in depositions? I mean, it can't be used, but the objections are different. So sometimes things that are hearsay might come in in that way. So the Coke jar is in the marijuana closet. Would he put the pill box in the Coke jar or at least on the Coke jar? Or maybe he put it in a pineapple under the sea. I don't know where the Coke jar. <laughs> They've tried to make a lot out of that. And it's just like, really? JD needs a conservatorship. This relationship, addictions, and manager stole. Seems like people only taking and he needs protection. I wouldn't want to see Johnny Depp put in a conservatorship. I would like to see good people around him, but I don't think he needs a conservatorship. Um, can they compel you to give a depot? Yeah, they can subpoena you and do it where you live. So they can do the depots in California. They can use the California courts to subpoena you there. They it's harder to compel you to come across the country for court. And um, the people who do that a lot of the time are willing to do so. Better not turn what if any into a drinking game, alcohol poison. I agree with you. Um, love your streams. Thank you. Did Io have other depositions he had to keep consistent with? I think there was a UK deposition, but I haven't looked outside of the court record. Other channels might have that that have been breaking this down, um, but I don't have that. Johnny dresses up as Jack Sparrow to see sick kids. I don't believe he would say awful things about his fans. 
Ali, I agree with you. I, he might've said awful things about fame, but we heard that in his own testimony too, that fame feels like, I don't know if he said that about his fans or about fame. Um, can we buy umbrage? a what if anything tattoo? <laughs> she doesn't strike me as the tattoo type. Um, but you never know. Maybe, maybe she's maybe just like a, you know, I will not say what if anything. He can't remember if we were estranged to his girlfriend at the time, but can recall many events about Johnny. It seems very familiar to his friend Amber. Maybe. I mean, possibly. And it might be, I don't remember exactly where this was in time, but it was around this time. So this is now coming down to Amber Heard's ex-friends um, views versus people who have worked for Depp. Do you think Depos will look bad for Amber Heard versus live? I think the jury might question why her closest friends aren't there live. I think they might question that. Everyone has a monster. All my friends stayed around. It's fair. Um, why isn't this hearsay? Some of it was, and it was allowed because it was already dealt with in the, the depositions. If the parties don't object and agree to allow it, hearsay can come in. It's not like the court's like, no, it's if one party objects, it doesn't come in. If the parties agree, they let it in. Uh, the guy said a few minutes ago how Johnny Depp took time with everyone and was so kind to them now says he makes fun of his fans. I have questions. A lot of us, I think, have questions about the fans. I can't deal with the amount of interference in their relationship by family and friends around every corner. It's interesting because it seems that Amber Heard definitely wasn't isolated in this relationship. Devil's advocate. What if Amber Heard is trying to deal with the addict in Johnny Depp and he retaliated in an aggressive, abusive way? Possible. Possible. And she got aggressive uh, and she got aggressive as well. Possible. I've seen many addicts hurting people trying to help. It's very possible. It's possible. Um, the thing that's hard is that the physical evidence, the photos, the medical records don't match her descriptions of violence. If she had said, I was trying to do this and he slapped me in the face once and I didn't see a doctor and he said these awful things to me and he was mean and he was nasty and here's the recordings, it would be different. The testimony, the large, the large scale assault testimony and the very minimal injury photos is what makes it very hard, but it can be a bit of both. I just don't think the jury is going to parse it that deeply because I think they're going to feel that there's, there's lies here. There are inconsistencies here, and that might be enough for the jury to be like, this is defamatory. It might also be enough for the jury to be like, all of you go home. All of you are done and you all lose. Uh, Real Michelle Holmes said, hey, I'm new here. Um, wouldn't there have been bloody footprints from her supposed attack in Australia? Uh, you would think but there's no photos of that. I'm sure Johnny meant the fans that are demanding and imposing, which could have a huge detrimental effect on introverted stars. Fandom is overwhelming. Possibly for sure. I appreciate the perspective. I was 30 minutes behind IO talks um, slow. So I skipped it live and he's still talking. Will the rest of her friends all be in deposition. I think so. I think so. I think so. Um, can't believe the lies as a DV and essay survivor myself. There is no more. This is no more than a sickening and disgusting joke. She makes my skin crawl. Thank you, Emily, for your brilliant expertise. Your awesome love from London, UK. Um, 0402, thank you for sharing your experiences with us. And I have seen a lot of not just um, survivors share that, but I've also seen a lot of prosecutors in that field and those who work in the fields of domestic violence um, and sexual assault share those feels as well. Um, chores to accomplish today. So all TVs across the house are on. So I don't miss a thing. Former paralegal. Love the commentary. Thank you, Kristen. I love your sassy hair. It's very, very fun. Um, where'd you get your glasses? The link, the Erlen lenses are down below 20 minutes past 10 here in Sweden. Um, but I'm here for the long haul. Thanks for making this make sense to somebody with a different legal system. That is the goal here to educate and hopefully sometimes be at least amusing or somewhat snarky. Why is he allowed to hearsay depositions? And they agreed depositions and they agreed. Um, Amber's PR guy also has two DUIs. I don't know how old those are, so I'm not going to really say much about that. Cause I don't know how old those are or how soon those are. Um, this depot wasn't doing anything to prove claims of physical abuse. Sounds like they had some nasty arguments, which can go to domestic abuse in the broader sense. So that can go to that Spanish speaker here, practicing my legal jargon and seeing my middle name dragged through the mud. Oh no. Thank you, Elaine. I'm sorry, Cura Elaine. <laughs> Watching you in the sassy comments. Elaine. <laughs> This depot witness might be the most strategic thing Elaine has done. Jury won't remember anything but boredom. 
I, there a lot happened today. Um, thanks. I think someone told Amber the wrong birth date as a tourist. She's not one of them. <laughs> Anything's possible. Funny how Amber um, and company encircled Johnny, but his friends at the time, not so much. Sounds like he tries to only give info bad on debt, but not much about herd. It's the questions. I think that the questions were answered fairly. All this tells me is that they had verbal fights and Johnny was an addict. Yep. That's what I think what they were trying to get into. So, but they didn't talk about constant injuries. Io never said a word about injuries. And that is a very, very, very good point conformist. And I don't know if we'll hear that in any of her friends testimony saying I saw her on this day. I lived, I lived in one of their houses. I don't think we're going to see any of that. Um, my husband is a Taurus. And in alcohol recovery, so I don't drink at all around him. This is one of the most supportive things a spouse can do. Amber didn't offer Johnny this small courtesy. It seems not. Do you think Amber's lawyers think she's lying about everything? Uh, I hope they don't think she's lying about everything or they put her on the stand knowing she would be lying about everything and that would be a problem. And that's why they do such a bad job. I don't think they're intending to do a bad job. I don't, David. I don't think they're trying to do a bad job. I think they're not doing great, but I don't think they're intentionally uh, doing poorly petition for you to make what if anything is not a cure all t-shirts. I think I got that one, but I'm getting it again. So thank you. Um, it seems like the DUI guys tweeting. So we're going to go there. Tauruses and Virgos get along well, but if you abuse their loyalty, Virgos will disconnect and immediately put up walls on them. This makes sense. Why none of her friends are with her now. Thank you for the perspective RL. Um, I don't know it that deep, any update on juries for court. We're going to get there right now. We are going to go to the DUI guy and take a look at that. So give me one second as I uh, flippy flop over there. I flip, we're going to flippy flop over to over to Twitter. That Emily, that was that was eloquent and well, and well said. Eloquent and well said, not at all. So let us flippy flop over to Twitter. Let's see. Um. Twitter. Here's Twitter. All right. Let's see. I'm trying your honor. Famous last words. <laughs> Sorry. We've got to retweet. Um, I believed her. Uh, yeah, we're just tweeting in real time on a live stream. That's that's happening. Sorry. ADHD. Um, I'm trying your honor. Famous last words. Elaine looks visibly flustered and deflated due to her inability to ask proper non-objectionable questions repeatedly. Vasquez is on top of it. Amber cannot testify as a medical expert. Facts. Time to go back to law school and learn evidence. I mean, it was tough. After the bench conference, when Elaine tries to allow Amber Heard to name names about whom she told about the abuse, Elaine looks visibly upset as she walks back towards the podium. She moves on with the next question. Courtroom erupts with laughter and mockery as Elaine tries to introduce hearsay evidence with fierce objections from Vasquez. Juror 8 is smirking. Juror 9 is scanning the commotion in the courtroom. Elaine comes back with pursed lips and Vasquez is smiling after the bench conference. Ooh tea from inside the courtroom on redirect amber heard team appears to have come back from the dead and are reanimated i think this tweet may be aged like milk so um i think i think maybe it did you guys will have to let me know if this age if that age like milk because um that's a tough one and also where are we oh we went dui guy we we been pulling up its Twitter. I don't think it's just us here, Law Nerds. Was at like six thousand Twitter followers earlier today, or whatever, and is now at seventeen thousand. Good people should be following this trial coverage and the work that goes into getting this trial coverage. So, what's your overall opinion of Amber's cross? I thought it was fantastic. I thought it was fantastic. It seems like they laughed. Should we go back to the tweets? Should we go back to the tweets? It seems like they laughed. Hold on. Um, let's see. Um, after the bench conference, when Elaine tries to allow Amber Heard to name names, no, not that one, not that one courtroom erupts with laughter and mockery as Elaine tries to introduce hearsay evidence with fierce objections from Vasquez. I wonder if it was a mumble because we didn't hear the judge admonish anybody. Juror eight is smirking. Juror nine is scanning the commotion in the courtroom. Elaine comes back with pursed lips and Vasquez is smiling. So there's that. There's that. There's that. I wish I can't reach my fan to turn it on. I wish I could. 
It's getting hot in my office. It's that time of day. Remember, he's a writer, editor, and actor. He can script this any way he wants. He has the ability to make it all seem plausible as a journalist. I mean, that's a good point about IO. We know that Amber Heard is not a writer because the way she wrote her own testimony is some of it is not. Mm. Anyone see anyone that's seen a brass knuckles injury would know that this isn't what a battered face with chunky rings would look like. They're illegal for a reason. It's a very good point. Social screen. I don't know who on the jury might know that, but someone might. How does Johnny Deems cross Johnny Depp's cross this deposition? We covered that bows. Amber said she never hit her girlfriend or any of her love interest. It's recorded where she admitted it. Why not perjury? Um, they have to impeach her with it and prove that it's a lie. And that evidence didn't come in. Did Amber describe the first image as an injury to her temple? Meanwhile, Io said it was to the scalp. Um, yes, Amber Heard described it as like a uh, here, me on the like here and or here, and Io said in the scalp. I don't think between like temple and the temple and the hair there, it's going to be a huge issue. I don't think it's going to be a huge inconsistency. Same photo, same general area. Amber Heard seems completely different on cross. She does. And I think she should have testified that way. Io comes off as truthful. I think Io is repeating, uh, basing a lot of this on what's told. Kevin Bacon theory, a genuine can be part of this trial because Amber Heard started Magic Mike. We're riding my pony played at the end of the movie. <laughs> RIP Care Bear. That is brilliant. Thank you for Kevin Baconing this. And yes, genuine can be a part of this trial. <laughs> and that is a callback to way earlier in the, uh, the video. If you're here now, if you know, you know, please tell me they can call Vanessa and Winona now that IO brought them up. I don't know. I really feel like if their testimony is that Johnny was never violent to them, that would be huge for him. I don't know if they will. Um, I need to go back and look at the witness list and I'll do that before tomorrow. How are the hearsay rules and deposition different? It's easier for them to agree to allow things that are hearsay in than with a contemporaneous witness because they already have the benefit of hindsight. The depot is recorded and they can edit it. So they know, um, they know, they know what is said with live testimony. You have to protect the shit from getting out of the horse because once the shit's out of the horse or the bell's rung, you can't unring it. You can't undo it. The jury can't unhear it. They know in a deposition what's said and they can decide if that's acceptable to them or not. And that becomes a kind of give take to getting things in where with live testimony, you have to cut it off before it comes out because there's no undoing it. You can fix it in a depo. And I think that's why when they edit the depots, there's a little more compromise. Editing depots is never something I had to do in my trial work. Um, she thinks pledging and actually giving are the same. I pledged to lose 50 pounds. Now it is so. <laughs> Ansel, you get it. I'm sure you were gorgeous. Don't disparage yourself. No disparagement in the chat. That includes self-disparagement. Why is it relevant that Johnny Depp apparently drunkenly prank called IO? I don't know. Ex uh, BF of mine called me at 3 a.m. and sang uh, the span to, wait, span do ballet for no reason at all. Those are the best calls. I, I don't, it came off as weird to IO, but it, here's what I, okay. In all seriousness, it, it, I think that, um, I think that it was trying to get to the Johnny Depp was doing fantastical things and detached from reality that Amber Heard's team is trying to prove this detached from reality. So I think that's why they were trying to bring that up. That's my thought. Um, are you buying this? I don't know. Come see my game store in Nashville. We love a game store. and I love Zelda. And if you have Yu-Gi-Oh, let me know. Please DM me. My kids love Yu-Gi-Oh. We love a good game store. I fully believe IO. I don't believe Amber. I fully believe IO fully believed Amber. I, I agree with you. Hopefully I said that well enough to make it make sense this late in the day. Is there a chance that this might be scripted? I mean, I guess there's always a chance, but the testimony seemed even and consistent. So... Is there a possibility they would just drop this? No, we're talking millions and millions of dollars. This, this, we are in the home stretch. You don't just walk off the field after halftime. Unless it's a movie, which this is not, even though Amber Heard might like it to be. Um, although I totally support Johnny Depp here, I did find that he remembered things at a time when he was drunk or high, which is unusual. So I was expecting some video like this to come up. How damaging is this? I'm not sure which video this is referencing. Unfortunately, it might be. Um, I was expecting some video like this to come up. Um, I don't know. So 
Yes. And the jurors run, they run the risk that jurors also say, how is he remembering if he's doing that many drugs? It's a very possible thing. So he called the NYPD. Was there no report or did they not show up? NYPD didn't show up. It seems that NYPD called LAPD. Why was this not brought up before? It was, it was brought up that um, someone called LAPD, but it's, it's likely that if IO called 911 from the cell phone, the cell phone's going to call wherever you're at. And if the cell phone calls wherever you're at, that police department might reroute. It's like, oh, this is their home address. And then that police department will call dispatch from the local police. The audio for the second 911 calls 100% Rocky. Haven't heard it. Won't come into court. I don't believe IO when he called 911, he wouldn't give info to dispatch and hung up on dispatch when they needed crucial info to help. Haven't heard it. Um, question wise, here's a lot depots. We talked about that. What is your number one tip on how to become more disciplined student or person in life? Know yourself, get support, get lots of sleep. I should do, I get, a, I've started Marie getting a lot of these questions and maybe I'll do a live, like a chill live talking about that stuff. Um, but I don't think discipline is the thing. I think you've got to find what you like because then discipline's not needed. You're enjoying what you're doing. Like I hate getting up in the morning. I cannot wait to get up to do these hearings. I am not an early riser. I am a lounger in the morning. I love getting up to do these with y'all. Love it. So excited. So part of it is following what you enjoy doing. Question, does it show bad faith since these guys were all previously freeloaders until kicked out and now they're testifying against JD? I don't think it shows bad faith. It could go to bias um, and the jury can consider that. Question, what does it say that a lot of Amber Heard's friends don't want to testify in court? The jury gets to decide. What do you guys in the chat think it decides? Question, what does it say? Oh, I did that one. Me doing it twice. What was JD's version of the event IO said, the 911 event? It was the, it was the, I think that was the staircase incident where the police got called, I think. And it was the fight and then Depp left. So the Red Bull can being thrown and then um, her hitting him and then security, uh, Whitney getting between them. I think it was that. I think it was that. But I don't remember. I'm sorry I made you eat jelly beans. Is Amber Heard going to be brought up on perjury? Possibly in other countries, not here yet. Um, and the judge can't make anyone settle. Did Dr. Curry testify that Amber physically assaulted Rocky while they were out shopping? I think it was hit, but I don't know if the exact word was physically assaulted. But they did talk about the fact that Amber had hit her friend Rocky. And that was the beginning of the testimony we were getting into. Um, let's see. There's a few more tweets. Um, this morning, Amber Heard had a hair strand that would sometimes cover her face after lunch. Hair strand is tucked in to appear more professional question mark. This is not a beauty pageant. I mean, for women, we get judged. So I can understand if she didn't want it flopping around because women get judged. Um, during redirect, the jurors are still perked up and studying the gallery. Um, during the machine gun objections, Amber Heard is constantly scanning the jury to see if any of them still relate to her. Most jurors won't stop much as a glance to her. That's very interesting. But women do get judged on their looks in a different way than um than men do. So I'm not surprised if she's worried about her hair like at all. So hey you guys we have a guest. We have Runkle the Bailey. Runkle. Hey how are you doing? I'm good. What's up? Oh wait I thought I had you up. My apologies. Oh yeah no it's uh it's good. I am here in the lineup for tomorrow I'm number 28. We'll see if that uh, does it for me because I was number 70 yesterday or earlier today, rather. And I, at the end of the day, when they were doing the things, they ran out of bracelets about uh, 15 people ahead of me, which means 45 line cutters. That's wild. In 100 people. That's wild. I'm so sorry to hear it. So you're in line already and it's what, six, 625? They're 625, on yep. So they're doing and today? 28. So it's, uh, there are some dedicated keeners on this, uh, on this adventure. I mean, yeah. And we already know before, I, I'm going to have you introduce yourself to the chat in just a minute, but we already know that tomorrow's going to be one live witness and mostly video depositions. Maybe the yep. live get is crazy. I mean, I, I'm a lawyer. I can totally do like boring video deposition stuff. <laughs> I suspect a lot of the people who are going to be lining up at, you know, 630 and eating dinner out here are probably not so keen on that. I think that they probably will be upset, you know, that there's not, uh, nothing's going to follow that cross-examination the same way. Was that not beautiful? It was uh, brilliant. 
cross. I've got to, I've got to have you introduce yourself to the chat. So go ahead. All right. Uh, so my name is Ian Runkle. I'm online as Runkle of the Bailey and I do criminal defense and firearms law in, uh, in Canada. So uh, I traveled a fairly long distance. I was actually out here for a shooting competition. And then I thought it would be crazy not to extend my stay at least a little bit to try to see some of this. And so I got in to see the jurors uh, two days ago, and it's that was eye-opening. Because before that, you know, you can see all the evidence, you can see everything that's happening, but you never know what a jury is thinking, right? And juries sometimes do weird stuff. So um, it's interesting. And a lot of the, the reports that were coming out about what, like, the juror composition were were not super accurate. Um I'd heard on one of the channels that found information that said that there were like several Indian men on the jury. There's not a single one. Interesting. It's like, so it's, uh, yeah. And uh, you've got a couple of fans here as well. So. Oh, hey. Hello. I'm a nerd. Hello. Nerd. <laughs> and uh, they came out to help with the, you know, sort of line adventure. Uh, Nurse Liz put out a call. And so I am grateful as well because, you know, they're, they're your fans out here helping me out, which is fantastic. That's fantastic. Um, I got a tweet yesterday for the line sitters. So I'm I'm hoping you guys have the support that you need to be in court tomorrow. I'm bummed that Rob didn't get to see the questions about the bed and the knife in the bed. I know. That's that's like a cosmic injustice. It is. Um, he called it. I mean, he had that dead on. Yes. And they, uh, yeah. But... And her her argument, like her response to that with everything else was just so bad. She was floundering. Yes. Um, and the couple of points where she maybe pushed back were just drowned in all of these moments where she was caught lying over, and in some cases over nothing. Stupid, over stupid stuff. She just wouldn't, even stuff she had testified to for her lawyer, stuff she had yeah. to her lawyer, she was still fighting Camille on. It was so strange. And she was throwing everyone under the bus that she could reach. Sister, under the bus. Uh, lawyers, under the bus. Uh, right. Dr. Hughes, you get under the bus too. Like the Everybody nurse. is at fault except her. The nurse. And, yeah. It's, you know, everyone around her, she blames for this. And we're ending, we've entered into this weird world that she's created where it's basically everyone around her is at fault except you know and involved in some sort of operation to lie about her and you know she's the only honest person that's really the only way you buy her story at this point and it, it's it's one thing to try to discount Depp and be like he was using drugs he was drinking he doesn't remember but then you've got all of this other evidence and i don't know how she's going to overcome the all of this other evidence and then her testimony got so big that I think they might just say, we find her lying on these points and we're just done with her. Yeah. So. I mean, the, the difficult thing about this is like from a, you know, from just like the perspective of if this was a criminal trial, it would be super easy. Or even, you know, if it was a civil trial about the abuses that are alleged, I think that this would be easy. But the defamation angle makes it so hard to actually get to where, you know, where we think. But I honestly think she's taking it to a point where the jury's probably thinking, we don't care what the legal test is. She's just so awful. <laughs> and, you know, her lawyers will probably, you know, I, I thought that they made a really valiant effort in like their opening statement to say, listen, this is how, this is what this is about. It's about, you know, freedom of speech. It's about, you know, she's she's a victim, but they didn't make it like capital letters victim. It was just, you know, she's been abused. You know, she should be allowed to have her own opinions about this. You know, it's a reasonably defensible position. Yeah. And, you know, it's like, you know, if you're trying to say that there's if you call the police and you say, hey, there's a noise complaint, they're playing loud music you're probably going to get a car as soon as they've got one available. But if you call the police and you say they've got 30 elephants there, they're probably going to be like, uh, sure they do. And we're at a 30 elephants kind of situation. It's yeah, such the, a big story. It's hard to believe. 
the big fish kept getting big fish. The chat's been asking a lot, and I have heard that Rob overheard Amber and Elaine yelling at each other yesterday, or Elaine yelling back at Amber yesterday. Do you know what that's? Uh, about? We actually heard that via other reports. It wasn't, I don't think, something we directly witnessed. That's okay. uh, what we it's third-hand reporting. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what we did see on the other hand, so. Uh, we heard that a sheriff had heard them having a dispute. What I have seen um, is Elaine and Amber shooting each other some real looks and some moments of serious tension. What kept happening when I was there in the courtroom is Elaine would ask a question and there'd be an objection as to uh, hearsay or something along those lines. And so then she'd reframe the question in a way to try to get that answer. And Amber was leaning into the objections. Like, it was like, oh, the objection is hearsay. Well, let me tell you about all the other stuff I heard. And even though she was told, like, please don't tell me anything else, yep. you know, anyone said, I just want to know your, per and a lot of that stuff could have gotten in potentially if it was just, this was my experiences. And what I but she was leaning hard into the objections and it killed the line of questioning. It's so, Elaine's getting frustrated with Amber because Amber's tanking her lines of questioning and Amber's getting frustrated with Elaine because she doesn't have a way to circumvent the law and suddenly make inadmissible evidence float into the case. Right. You can't make fetch happen. It, well, it's, it's not just like it's, she basically is expecting, I think Elaine to be a wizard and just, you know, why aren't you winning all these objections? Well, because they're not winnable. It's this so goes to, this goes to my suspicion that this is very heavily client directed because yeah. they got into the redirect and the first question was about Johnny Depp not looking at you. I'm like, who the fuck cares if he's not looking at you? But it obviously matters to the client, and that's why it's coming up. So if these are questions that ask this, and Elaine's like, I can't ask that, she's like, you're asking it, and she's getting objections and then going, see. I told you I can't ask it, then I'm not surprised there's tension. And it's hard yeah. to know because she's getting blamed on the internet for looking awful. Because she looked at some of these questioning. Elaine was floundering. I mean, there's places where I think Elaine made mistakes. But the thing everybody needs to remember is trials are really hard. They're really difficult. And uh, like Camille's performance, which was amazing, is top level stuff. Yep. Like most lawyers are not going to be able to pull that off. Whatever she's getting paid for this, it's not enough. Um, Elaine's performance is more what you'd expect, but she's getting dragged down. I don't know. From what I can see by being forced into rabbit holes that she probably never wanted to get into. That's fair. Her client being unwilling to play ball with, you know, because you talk to a client, you say, listen, um, let's, you know, talk about what is admissible and what isn't. You know, I can't, uh, you know, I, we can't get in this stuff that other people said to you, but let's talk about, like, if you need to, we need to get in that you were injured on this other day. So, you know, you can say, I experienced the following symptoms, but you can't say my doctor told me that's the doctor's job. The doctor's got to be there to say that. I have a really broken nose, obviously. Yeah. It was a so, mess. You know, and this bothers people right because that's how i know that my nose is broken but i can say listen um i got hit i saw in the mirror that my eyes were swelling up that it was you know big black marks it felt my nose was off center felt broken. i could you know i was having difficulty breathing these are all personal symptoms that i can testify to as just a person with a face um but she was like no i insist on telling what the doctor said and and eventually the judge is just like you're not going to get there with this line of questioning. Next, next line. That's frustrating for a lawyer if your witness can't do those things and won't. Like, I got the sense that she was just like, I don't care that there's an objection. You know, you're the lawyer. Fix this. I'm just going to steamroll her through this my own way. Oh, you would not want to be representing a client like that. And it, it makes you look bad. Anyone can look amazing if you've got you know, if you're sitting there playing poker and you're drawing nothing but, you know, royal flushes, you look amazing. Yeah. But 
you know, all she's getting from her clients is two seven offsuit. <laughs> I don't even know what that means, but I'm going to go with it's bad. Well, uh, and that came through really. Uh, right. Oh, so I don't know what two seven offsuit means, but I'm going to go with it's bad. Oh, I'm getting some robot stuff. I'm just going to move that, and see if I can. Am I robot? It might be me. I hope it's not me. Hopefully, I'm not roboty. So, hopefully, I'm not roboty. I'm. I'm just going to disconnect and reconnect because I'm wondering if this roof is giving me some issues. Okay. So well, I'll just be right back. Thank you. All right. I'm going to let Runkle log out and we will be back with his impressions in just a minute. Catch up crew. I'm normally FF if you are still live. Um, but I think there will be too many spoilers today. Thank you there. I normally fast forward if you're live, but there, there will be spoilers. We're going to be Stephanie. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. So oh, there we go. Much better. Much better. I don't know what we were talking about. Apologies. We were talking about. Something. Oh, just talking about Elaine and, you know, her being a good lawyer versus not. I think she's, you know, I think if you gave her a good case, she'd be looking really good. Um, there were points where I was just like, this was really well done. And, you know, places where stuff that I, um, she did really well at dealing with the uh, the issue of the money, right? She came in on direct. Yep. She dealt so well with the issue of the money that I was sitting there thinking. That makes sense. They're going to have to catch her with something in order to turn this back into an issue. Like it's a non-issue right now. And then, of course, the problem is that they've got the stuff to catch with because they've got that Dutch show that she appeared on yep. where she used donated hard past tense. Yep. And it's like, oh, yeah. But I mean, it was really skillfully done rehabilitating that issue like ahead of time. And when she was going through, like, there's all that bad audio that she's trying to to fix and to repair ahead of time. Yep. That's good strategy, right? You want to lean into that and defang it. But Amber's like responses for defanging that were so bad. Yeah. You know, somebody else could have said, yeah, you know, I said those things, but, you know, he's so overbearing that I have to agree with, you know, his work version of events because, you know, he's abusive. And if I'd started arguing and said, like, you hit me first, then he just started hitting me like right. that might have been a, a perfectly believable sort of thing. But, you know, the way she spins it, there was actually a juror who's been really poker faced. He's and he. um like some of them, you can sort of see where they're paying attention or not because they take notes versus not. This guy listens all the time, takes notes all the time. Like this guy is going to be going into that jury room with a stack okay. of detailed notes. But he did us at that moment. Like just a, can you believe this? Right. And, you know, it's a little slip of the poker face. But when somebody's making those slips to do, you know, for something like that, it's, uh, it's exceptional. This has actually been a surprisingly poker face jury. That I mean, They're, that's a perfect thing for this case, though. And it again, I think it's easy to be like, oh, how do jurors do this? Jurors take this really seriously. Jurors tend to yep. take jury duty very seriously. They feel very connected to it. They feel connected to their other jurors. And especially in a six-week trial, they do feel connected and responsible. There is a weight to jury duty and a solemnity to it. And I think that um, we are we are seeing that with this jury keeping stoic in moments of a very difficult trial. But where yeah. did you watch your stream? Where did you watch today? Because I know you weren't in court today. Did you get some sleep and then watch? I watched some on Legal Bites, and some time, some of the time I just spent asleep because, uh, like, I'm going to be here from now until 7 a.m. And then after that, I have to be in a courtroom watching boring <laughs> video depositions and having to pay really good attention to what the jury is doing. I need to have as much brain power as humanly possible. So I missed some of it. Um, I've actually got a video I'm going to be throwing live in a bit because I didn't see the part where Camille was cross-examining about the two parallel photos and saying that she adjusted contrast. Yeah, they were quite good. It's, well, somebody sent that sent the image to me, and I played around with it in, uh, in GIMP, which is a photo editing uh, thing. They're the same photo, uh, but one of them has been edited. It is... 
striking because uh, lawyer rebug lawyer <laughs> debunks Amber Heard photos. What are you titling it? Is your thumbnail good? Let's go viral. I'm excited. I have no thumbnail because I had to edit it on a basically a computer that is essentially a potato. So um, if there's somebody out there who wants some thumbnail, it, you we'll know, uh, Uncle will help you. We will help you make a thumbnail. We've got it. Because so, um, you make it's a thumbnail. real. We I mean, it's you know. yeah, I'm just sort of trying to juggle what I can out here because it's uh, a difficult scenario. But uh, yeah, I went and played around with it. I, you know, did the uh, did the adjustments and the scale on the two images that's shown in that court screenshot is not the same. But I adjusted the scale using the uh, the bars like the uh, uh, like the graphical display elements, the con control bars got those matching up, moved it over so that it with uh, transparency and it just perfectly overlays. Wow. It's, you know, it's not, it's just not possible that this was two pictures with like flash and no flash. Right. They are the same picture. And so one of them has been edited. And if you're going to edit it, you're probably not editing a picture like that to remove bruises. No. I mean, because it's not like a, you know, there's a situation where you could imagine doing that, right? Yep. If you are taking like a, you know, a picture you're planning on sharing online or something mm -hmm. like that. With the eye bags trying to put up a social media profile picture, you just want to remove just a little bit of the things because we can't cover up swelling very well with the under eye. You know, we're in our 40s. It's just what we have to do. So <laughs> I totally get yeah. it. There's a reason. I, uh, yeah, no. And I mean, I mentioned that I've had to learn some of this because you know, if you go and you cut yourself shaving or you've got a zit or something, there's some lighting that will just make that stand out like nobody's business and some that'll make it kind of hide a little better. So, you know, you yep. do that sort of thing, but that's not what she's doing. That's photo, you know, and if she's, and there's no metadata and she's that's just tendered this as an authentic picture. I hope I they uh, expert. I really hope they bring in a tech expert in in um, their rebuttal, but I don't know if they need to because the rest of her testimony was so bad. I think that she made, I think she did better on cross. Her demeanor was better, but she made these big fish stories so big that the photos so clearly don't line up. I don't even know if they need to say they're fake. The suggestion is out there and they can argue it. Let's move on. I don't know if they need to hammer it anymore. And I'm going to address a super chat that said, I missed it. The judge decided statement one um, about the article will not be dismissed as it was republished. I'm not surprised. Um, yeah, he did that right at the end of Amber Heard's testimony. Um, but I didn't see that. I saw Amber Heard stomp off the stand. So. Yeah, that was wild. Yes. Yeah. You know, we we actually had to rewatch that bit because I did too. You know, normally we were thinking maybe the jury had already left, yeah. but no, the, the judge was still actually cautioning the jury about, you know, you should not be getting any additional information and so forth as she's leaving. And she doesn't, this is yeah. the other amazing part. She doesn't go to her lawyers. Yeah. You know, normally you'd go and sit and have a little, how did I do? You know, um, that, that wasn't so bad or that really sucked. Like a, yeah. Yeah. And just, you know, get some maybe comfort and support if it was a really brutal cross-examination. But she didn't even want to look at them. She didn't even want to talk to them. She just, <sighs> Oh man, I think there's going to be some, I, I would love to be a fly on the wall for the discussions she mm -hmm. and her lawyers are going to have. I suspect Elaine, after watching her stomp off like that in front of the jury was probably like, I'm going to go fill a sock full of pennies. And, you know, I mean, or I'm going to go fill a mega pint full of whiskey and take a drink tonight and not talk to my client and let her chill out over the next day with mostly video depots but you know the chat saying amber's a petulant child look ben king said she sounded like a what is spoiled teenage child and then stomping off in front of the jury after you're upset with your lawyer just looks like you're a spoiled teenage child yeah so, and i mean i feel i feel bad for elaine in the sense that she's stuck in this you know and i'm sure she's a good lawyer if you put her in good you know in better circumstances She's dragging everyone around her down. She's like this anchor that just 
latches on to everybody before drowning, you know, before heading for the bottom of the ocean. I think you're being very generous and graceful. Um, but I do think Elaine is probably used to doing depositions. We hear her questioning in deposition where it's what yep. if you think this and what if anything that with very leading questions and in depots, you can get away with it and they are not letting her get away with it in trial. And she's having a hard time adjusting on the fly under the stress of also dealing with a difficult client. And that's a very, I mean, this is a very civil lawyer kind of thing, right? Because civil lawyers are often not taking things to trial because most trials don't, this one's got this really unique trap to it yeah. because there's two sets of consequences that they're trying to fight over. Consequence one is whatever happens in the courthouse. And honestly, that's the one they care less about because 50 million bucks, um, Depp's got 50 million bucks. Well, I don't know actually because he got robbed fairly badly. But, you know, over if his career comes back, like he'll have 50 million bucks to spend on a house if he wants to do it. Right. It's a big deal, but it's not the same deal. Yeah. Um, whereas uh, what happens, you know, outside the courthouse on, you know, what people are discussing, that's where the money is for each of them. Right. And so, you know, normally if this was about like, you know, you manufactured a defective widget and some people got hurt, you subtle. could you could talk it out and say like, OK, um, we've run half the trial. It's going real bad. We'll pay you, you know, X much money and sort the widget issue um, They're instead at a place where like they can't back down. There is no agreement that will work because even if it was Amber Heard pays a dollar to Johnny like one shiny dollar that's a big loss for her and it's a loss that is worth millions of dollars yep it's much bigger um, than this courtroom the reputational cost is much larger than the court cost um ariana arianne would like to order pizza for everyone in line can you just dm runkle on twitter is that a good way to contact you runkle that is a good way to contact me um if you oh. don't really you know if you're just looking at everyone on in line at the courthouse um People have sent stuff on, you know, via DoorDash and or, you know, whatever sort of thing. And if you just say, hey, um, here's the address of the courthouse and find the big line and drop stuff off. Yep. And um, if you want them to find a specific person, you're going to have to give some identifiers because. Uh, yep. And I mean, there there will be a few gray haired white guys. So it's uh, identifier. Although, they said that you're Runkle of the Bailey House Targaryen. And yeah. that's what I've been seeing in the chat. So. It's um, it's actually really funny the gender skew on the people who are coming out here because it's about ninety ninety five percent women. You're surprised? And I would have expected, you know, um, I see a lot of dialogue from men on this, you know, especially on the gender violence aspects, and I think it's an issue that you know affects some, you know, a certain portion of the male population. There's more I agree. guys out there getting abused than everybody, anyone ever talks about. Agree. And, but it's, uh, that's not really who's showing up for these. Uh, and I mean, this it might be that you just phantom. So this is a different type of fandom showing up. Um, we can see it at the end of the day when everybody's standing up and waving at depth. This is a different type of environment. Yeah. And I gotta say, um, I've liked some of Depp's movies, but uh, the, you know, the person I wanted, you know, if it was like, hey, you could have a, a, you know, a coffee and sit down and chat with anybody in there. I'd be looking at like Ben Chu and Camille Vasquez. Absolutely. Those are, you know, that's where my fandom lies here. And I actually got a bit of an opportunity to just say a brief message to her because after, you know, when I was in there, people were sort of walking up. She was, you could tell this, like the stress of it was coming off her. Yeah, um, she started out nervous, which, you know, is expected, like in her voice, even yep. if you've been at this for a long time, this is the biggest thing, you know, like onto the yeah. Supreme Court. I didn't have a, um, you know, I didn't have a lineup of 100 people to see, see what I was talking about. And you uh, didn't you could have... see that was coming off or people were oh, millions people were coming up to say, like, oh, she's got millions watching online. It's not just even the packed courtroom. I mean, this thing is millions of people watching every day so yeah and and it's Friday. just but people were coming up and sort of telling her she did a good job and she was kind of overcome like she was um it was emotional and yeah. you know i was just like i'm a, i'm a lawyer that was amazing 
Oh no. Runkle's buffering. We're going to let Runkle buffer for a minute. Runkle's buffering. Boo to the buffering. Um, I will ask Runkle about Elaine's view. He was not in court for that today. So I will ask him. All right. Oh, you're back. I'm having some uh, internet blips and I'm not sure why, but uh, um, yeah, that mockery moment I wasn't in court for, but it was, I was stunned. And yeah. if I pulled something like that in a courtroom, like where I am, you know, where I practice, I would expect the judge to just be like, okay, oh, we're going to have a few, you know, we're going to have some words. Take the jury out or at the break when That's the jury goes to call you to the bench and talk about sanctions. I mean, I was shocked about the mocking. I was shocked. I was shocked. Yeah, it was. I mean, it might actually be a situation, you know, if it, it's not quite mistrial level, but it's certainly like admonishment level. Like, what are you doing? You cannot sing songy the voice. You have to, you know, you have to repeat it in a fairly neutral tone. This is what was said. That was just, and I think it shows that there's some emotionality coming in, right? There's people getting real frustrated, real. And to be fair to Elaine, uh, it wasn't a moment she was having a lot of struggle and a lot of frustration. Um, No, that... You're trying to be but, fair. I mean, it's but it's that, not defensible, but it's, you know. It happened before all the objections, though. She came in hot right at the beginning uh, with a few good questions, and then all the objections started. Yeah. She, Maybe I'm being too fair. <laughs> I, You are very much it's, trying uh, to Elaine, and I appreciate it. But it was just, ugh. it was a horrible moment for her. Yeah. I don't think it made her look good. And I think that her client has a right to be mad about her for that. Yes, that I think. And the, you know what I think the sad thing is? I think that is the moment that Amber Heard will be least mad about. Yeah, you're probably right. I think that's the moment she's going to say, All I right. like that. Yeah. Like that. Um, I think what Amber looked like she was mad about was Elaine not winning objections. And that's where she's making faces. She's, you know, because I think she, she seems, my read is that she seems to think that her lawyer needs to, you know, there needs to be a better argument that gets these objections won. And <laughs> you're saying I that mean, there just isn't. Can't. The manager, Amber wants to talk to the judge and be like, but your honor, why aren't you granting our objections? Your honor, it's like Amber Heard wants to call the manager on the trial and be like, why isn't this getting done for my team? I don't understand why you can't make this happen, which is so her behavior of lying on, you know, forms for, you know, the Australian, uh, whoever approves getting the dogs in on her immigration forms and things. It feels very Karen E to say, why aren't you getting these objections? It's because you can't get that evidence in. And that is a client control issue. Yeah. Lane. Yeah, it's, but I mean, there's some clients that are just not controllable, right? Like you are, you should be trying at your best to manage your client. And I yep. don't know if my internet's coming through here, but, uh, you know, it's just, I don't know that she's manageable, right? I think she's the kind of person who is, you know, and the other thing that strikes me is there's some of the audio between Depp and Amber, and you can hear him trying to be super reasonable. Yeah. Like, listen, when I'm fleeing, I need a timeout. We'll come back to the argument. Like we're going to have, we're going to go our 12 rounds, but I need a break. Like I need a, a rest. And you know, uh, you know, it's too hairy. I'll come back to it. And she's like, no, you don't get to do that. And so I'm just sitting there going, it's, it's kind of in, I suspect that that same kind of dialogue is happening with, you know, with Elaine where she's saying like, listen, coming at it from a very reasonable point of view of like, this is what we need to do. And is being told, no, we're not doing that. Yeah. Like, and like, the problem is, is that the client runs the show within the ethical boundaries, right? You know, your client can't make you do anything unethical. Yep. And, um, or at least not knowingly. I think that there may be a situation where that may have happened unknowingly with because the if evidence, I turned over all of these photos, I think heard lied about it. And tried to throw her lawyers under the bus and doesn't either appreciate or care that there's consequences, which might go to yep. Dr. Curry's diagnosis as well. Yep. And I mean, the thing of like, if she turned over fake photos and got her lawyer to tender those, 
there can be obligations if you know that you have fake evidence. Yeah. Um, and I mean, I don't know. It gets to a point where you start wondering, like, where do the ethical obligations start kicking in? And I would be having a hard time with some of this right now. If I was Elaine, I might be going and like, listen, I need a practice advisor on standby for this trial. Yeah. Just to say, like, I need I need to cover myself just to, act, you know, to determine this. Elaine should and, be covering herself 100 percent because if Amber Heard loses, she is absolutely going to turn around and come after her lawyers. They absolutely I, need to protect themselves. Yeah. If they don't have every single thing, like every single instruction documented in writing yep. with a signature on it, they are, you know, that is a blunder. Um Because, you know, I've had difficult clients where, you know, you say, listen, the evidence against you is insurmountable. Uh, They've got a, you know, video of you. It is a crystal clear video. You have a facial tattoo of your own name across your face. You know, you're you're not winning this one. Like it is identifiable. Yeah, it is. And they say, I want you to run it to trial. And you go, okay, that's your right. Like you're going to get a greater sentence than if we worked out a deal please give me those instructions and please sign on the, you know, on the page there. And just for clarity, I wasn't referring to any specific client. This is a, you know, hypothetical of the worst possible case scenario, but you know, you get that in writing signed in your thing, you know, so that the client has signed their own instructions. And then, you know, if they turn around and say, well, my lawyer told me to run this trial and I could have got a better sentence. You're like, nah, you got it. Negative. So I hope I hope that they've been protecting themselves, but there are times when I wonder if Elaine didn't drink some of the Kool-Aid too. I wonder that too. So did like, Dr. Why would you do Dr. Hughes? Same with Dr. Hughes. And the thing I think is really important to know, and I, I, there's a few people I would love to try to reach out to, but I don't know if they'd want to appear on a video, but, um, I have a background in psychology and, um, you know, I don't have a like a master's degree. I've got an undergrad in it. But I, one of the things that was really interesting to me was forensic psychology and psychopathy. And there's actually something that's really interesting that you'll do when you're interviewing psychopaths. If you're a psychologist, which is like a two person protocol, one psychologist goes in, in, into the room to interview the psychopath and the other one sits in another room and watches the video feed. Wow. And the reason why is because these kinds of manipulative personalities that same and that's all from sort of the same personality disorder group yep tend to be very good at manipulating people and they they tend to do it in a way that if that is very superficial what i mean by that is that they might not be good at actually arguing their point but they're good at distracting you so they'll make incredibly intense eye contact and they might reach out and touch your leg or be Uh, provocative you know you'll see um you know if a psychopath or the like is attractive um or you know a person with narcissistic uh you know traits is attractive um they'll manipulate that too and they can make people and so what often happens with that two-person system is that the person who was doing the in-person interview walks out and is like yeah i came away with this and this and the other and the other person says let me stop you here Yeah, let's go watch the tape and you're going to be embarrassed. And it happens to lots of people. Many people are vulnerable to this. The distinction there is that we're watching this on tape and you can't use those techniques on tape. That's why they do that. But you also can't use them really at a distance. You can't do them at 20 feet across to a jury. Right. And she was trying. You can see her trying to do it. She's quite often looking over to the jury pool and trying to make that intense eye contact with them. Yes. And what the jury was doing, uh, one juror, juror, we've been sort of giving them letters, juror D, just stared right back at her, just cold, dead stare, like just, and had an expression like, bring it kind of thing. Like, I'm not afraid of you, was That's kind of the expression I got. From Rob at them, it was kind of a like, what? Yeah. Yeah. You know, whereas the other jurors were actually not willing to meet her eye contact. She's looking at them and they look away. And 
it kind of reminded me of what Depp said, like, I will not meet your eyes again. Like, it's just, I think she's trying to pull the same thing, but Elaine would have been in a room with her. Yeah. Elaine would have been much more vulnerable to that. And you have to be careful that you don't, you know, when you've got those super, you know, charismatic, probably less. Yeah. I mean, you were a prosecutor, so different end of the thing, right? You're less often meeting with, you know, clients from a defense attorney perspective. You've got to be real careful if you know your client is a skilled manipulator. Yep. And ask yourself, like, do I actually believe this? Like, is this or am I just being like, am I getting are they getting into my head? And I've had clients in the past that I've said, listen, um, I don't think I can represent you well because I think I'm you know, I think you're getting to me in a way. You know, I don't think I can evaluate properly which are these arguments are good or not because, sorry. I'm here, right. And, you know, so that's the risk. And I wonder if Elaine's got bought into that because you can hear her voice when she talks about Amber as a an abuse victim. Yeah. And I don't think many of us are believing that that's where Amber is, right? And um, why else would you make that sing-songy mocking? That is... That's very that, true. That's not like I'm doing this as a legal tactic. That's doing this because I am letting some of my emotions slip. And, and or adopting that mirroring of the client, but also Dr. Hughes, Dr. Hughes almost testified in a first person way about Amber's experiences. And it was yeah. wild to watch Dr. Hughes adopting that and testified with more emotion about the things Amber Heard told her than Amber Heard testified with. It was fucking bananas. I, I mean, it, we've got these two X, you know, this sort of battle of the experts here. And, I don't think it's even close. You've got Dr. Curry who basically goes, listen, she's not just, you know, disordered. She's disordered in a dangerous way. Yep. And she was, you know, she says she's trying to be manipulative and here's the way she does it. She sort of identifies those tactics. Dr. Hughes says, no, no, she's just a straight shooter who, you know, you can trust her. You know, you could loan her your car and, you know, she's going to bring it back with a full tank of gas. And, like, I'm just thinking one of them matches what we see perfectly and the other one doesn't. And Dr. Curry talking about the mirroring and how she'll borrow people's stories. Yes. Like, and then over it, and over line today, it came up yeah. borrowing of the story today. Well, you know, Johnny Depp repeatedly says I was barricading myself into bathrooms. Amber says, no, I was barricading I myself into bathrooms. Um, I don't know if they got to it because I didn't see all of the cross-examination, but there was the allegation that she borrowed the whole, you know, essay story it came up. from an assistant. Yes, it came up. And I'm going, like, she's borrowing from other people's stories. Consistent with Dr. Curry. It's enough that the jury, yep. can, when the jury looks at the battle of the experts, there's enough that they can discount Hughes and look at Curry. Because when it comes down to Dr. Curry, and I thought that having dinner with Johnny Depp was odd. I thought the muffin thing was stupid. But the dinner and drinks and stuff with the legal team at Depp's house, I thought was like, okay, you've never done it before. I can see it there. But then Dr. Hughes was so bad that the dinner thing looks completely like a non-issue because Dr. Hughes seemed so, so biased. You've got dinner and muffins versus, are you kidding me? Yeah, versus like, it's, even admit that Amber Heard could potentially present this way, or you can't even admit that a man in a heterosexual relationship could be a victim. You can't even say the words ever, not once. It's why I feel, I feel like if I was shopping for an expert on this, um, I would have wanted somebody who has, you know, on their resume, I have worked with male victims of female uh, offenders. Yes. Like just 100% I want that. Yes. Because I want to flatten before the other side can make it. I want to flatten the allegation that I view the world in a one-sided lens and that, you know, men are abusers and women are victims. And the only times that maybe, you know, gets differentiated is if we're talking about a, you know, homosexual you know, same sex relationship. Right. That's the lens she seems to be coming at this from. Yep. And, you know, it's, 
it's so bad. I I feel like that's something Dr. Hughes should maybe try to look at expanding her resume with is, you know, hey, maybe this you could at least acknowledge that this exists. Yep. So I agree. With you. And, you know, in the criminal law system, you see it. I and sometimes the other thing that is really striking and sad is that often that happens in a way where the criminal justice system is itself used as a weapon against the victim. Uh, men being especially vulnerable, but not uniquely. I've seen it used against women as well. But, uh, you know, guys know that if they report it, often all they need is she says, well, yeah, he hit me first and they're going off to jail. Even if they're the ones who look beat to shit, they're still the ones going off to jail. And yeah, it's such a difficult thing. And I it hope is. this trial can open that up a little bit. Yeah, I hope so, too. So it's uh, I can, you know, think of examples where like guys had a knife wound in their back and still ended up arrested. And you're thinking, how's that a defensive injury? I mean, there's circumstances it can be, but it's it's like unusual circumstances that it is. Yeah, it's so it's, this trial is wild and. Mm -hmm. I kind of feel like in some ways it's all over, but the crying because they're, I described it earlier as it's the task that Elaine has at this point is trying to drag a dead rotting moose out of a ditch. You know, it's a lot of work to get, you know, to try to repair this. And if, if this was the widget case, you know, you'd be seeing a settlement on the side. If this was a criminal file. Yes. You know, and, and Amber Hughes was charged with domestic assault. And, you know, I was, I'd be going off afterwards and saying, um, prosecution team, can we like meet in the cafeteria or, you know, and just yes. have a discussion about this? Like, which does happen. What are we looking at? Cases do settle in the middle of trial. It happens that cases settle yeah. in criminal. Sometimes it takes the defendant to see the people testifying against them, knowing the victims are going to show up, seeing them testify to go, Oh shit. Can we talk about that deal that I was offered three days ago? Is that still, can we, can we work that out? And sometimes cases do still settle because of that. It's not unheard of. Well, and it also happens the other way. I mean, I had uh, an essay file and of course not really any details here, but uh, you know, the complainant had given a police statement, which is written. And so, and hadn't been videotaped giving the statement. So we've got this statement and it sounds like a plausible statement. And of course, you're not going to discount it. But getting up on the stand, the statement was different. It was not the same story. And it was not, it was way better, like bigger and better and bolder. And, you know, and it just didn't make any sense. And afterwards, the prosecutor was just like, Listen, um, I know that you, uh, you know, he's like, you don't need to call your client. I'm just like, you don't need to cross examine. Like, if you're thinking of cross examining questions, just stop that. We're going to finish this up and yep. it's going to go away because it's just like there was no way, even after just direct examination, there was no way that it was going to end up being. Uh, well, at that being point, a thing. <laughs> at, at that point, it's not ethical co to continue. Um, yeah. I need to let and you know that Kelly Marie Burton from the UK sent pizza through DoorDash oh. from the UK to you. I mean, the pizza's not coming from the UK, obviously, but, <laughs> but I'd be like, okay, uh, no, thank you. That's, that's really, uh, really nice of you. And uh, it's, it's kind of a weird atmosphere out here because um, on one hand, we're all here for the same reason, right? We're all here to watch the same trial and, I think the audience is like nine, 95 people for Johnny Depp and like five people for Amber Heard. And they're not like, because it's such a skew, you're not seeing like people with like, you know, justice for Amber signs. They're right. just, I think, quietly keeping to themselves. So there hasn't been any tension on that line. Um, at least not that I've seen. There's not been, you know, but, and people are just kind of friendly. You know, we're all suffering through sitting out here the same way. But there's also tension over line placement. And yes, that seems to be a big issue. Hashtag justice for the line. And this, yep. this is a thing. I'm sure it's, I'm sure the Q in America is a whole different thing. <laughs> You're like, this I, is light. 
I don't understand why they're not. Uh, I mean, if I would, if I were running the show at the courthouse, I would honestly just say, let's set up a designated lining, lining up spot and we'll put yep. it out on the grass. And you know what? If it rains, it rains. You either sit here or you don't. Um, and just say, you know, we're start- the lineup starts whenever you get here. And because anytime you put an artificial start on the lineup, you're creating a point where people will fight. Um, and so you just say the lineup starts when you get here. The lineup ends when whatever else happens. We're posting a person, you know, we're going to set up temporary fencing. So the lineup is you can't get in and out on the sides. And it's just you sit here and you or, you know, and whatever else. And then once you've got people lined up, whatever time it is, I just sit there waiting and be like, okay, we got 150. So 100 bracelets to the first, you know, 100 for, you know, courtroom access, 50 for the overflow. Everyone else go home. Here's a sign saying all bracelets have gone out. Don't bother lining up. And now, the, you know, all bracelets for this day have gone out. Now the lineup is for the day after. Yes. And you can join in now if you want. And they would just, uh, you know, it'd make it very difficult to watch two days in a row if they were doing that. Because, of course, the lineup is right. starting while you're still in court. Or you but start it after. It would make it day. so much more possible. Yeah. Wristbands yeah, would work. Um, um, Ariane is also sending or, food through you know, DoorDash. You guys are going to have a lot of pizza because oh. Ariane also DoorDash pizza. So the line is going to be well fed. I also need to let you know that the chat thinks that you're very attractive and that they love your hair. So I I have to tell you before your phone cuts out or the chat will turn <laughs> on me and we can't have that. If you guys love Runkle, don't forget to go subscribe to his YouTube channel and go follow him on Twitter. Thank you, chat. I feel like you are being very generous. Um, the hair is kind of an interesting accident because it started out when we uh, basically started out with COVID. And I was like, OK, I can't go to the barbers. And then I kept it on because it was kind of annoying a certain group of people. And I was like, I'm not giving into that. You and I, I got death threats about the hair. So I was like, I'm not bowing to that. I, no, I can't cut it. Of, I get made fun of for the purple hair all the time. I did it when I hit 100K. Um, during COVID. And then I was like, you know what? I'm keeping the fucking purple hair. It bothers so many people. I'm keeping the hair. But we have to welcome Rob from Law and Lumber okay. to the chat. Rob, drive safe. Welcome to the chat. Hopefully you're not driving and passaging. But welcome to the chat. I think Rob is uh, making an emergency delivery for me because I forgot notepads. I am. <laughs> I'm actually en route to Runkle right now. I was telling him I have not yet abandoned him. I am on my way to drop off notepads and a chair so he can sit. That is good. I've got a sleeping bag that I've been sitting on, but, uh, oh, and the DUI guy is calling. Oh, perfect. Wonder if if I can put that on speakerphone. I don't think that that's going to work, but you're welcome to try Runkle. That's a very interesting free space. Rob, you're the star of the day. You made the viral bed video. They pointed it out in court. What did you think? Um, your reaction, like literally made my day today. <laughs> I'm sure you were bummed about the line cutters. Cause that would have been a moment to be in court. Yeah. That was depressing. No, like, I'm like Camille, was it me? Am I the drama? I know, it was, it, it made me so happy because the thing was how she set it up was almost exactly how I wanted her to do it. Like, this is the bed. This is the break. You know, you said that, and she actually used the word gaining purchase, which is what I like repeated a million times in the video. And then she asked the question, don't tell the jury what's there. Just ask the question. Is that a knife? Yep. Yep. Oh, yeah, it was yep. freaking fantastic. It was fantastic. So Rob, um, you're going to have to introduce yourself to the chat while being completely safe. Rob is a lawyer from this jurisdiction. You guys, you're going to need to go subscribe, not just to his channel, but to his Twitter as well. Rob, go ahead and introduce yourself to the 60,000 people we still have on chat today. Oh my, you still have 60,000. Hi, I'm Rob Borton. Um, Lumber and Law is my channel. Uh, we go ahead and talk about normal trial stuff, normal everyday stuff. I've had the channel for just under two weeks. Rob is um, a YouTube sensation who's already been blasted by the Guardian. It's fantastic. I love it. Make yep. It and that's what we do. So you're going to see some shop videos for me too. Just fun time making stuff in the shop, DIY hacks and stuff that you'll like. Rob is a disruptor. And I think it's really fun to see it happening. It's really fun to see people want to want to know 
the facts. And it's, it's again, that facts, not fuckery. It's like the only way this bed is breaking is like this. Everything else is fuckery. This is the fact. This is the only way it's breaking. And I love the way that you broke it down. I think that you can be like the Mark Rober of law tube because you bring the, <laughs> the woodworking side of it. And I think it's fantastic. The chat's calling you wood daddy chat thirsty today chat. We love it. We oh love it. God. So yeah. you've been so generous with your time. Are you waiting in line for tomorrow's court as well? I have a hearing tomorrow at 9 a.m. Um, Ooh. Yeah, kind of lame. I know. And it's it's Whitney. But what I, I think I've decided is I'm going to spend my powder on the rebuttal because the way that Amber Heard set it up today with that cross-examination, oh, my gosh, rebuttal is going to be fire. It's going to be insane. What do you think they're going to bring in on rebuttal? Where do you start? I mean, for everything that we thought was going to happen during cross-examination, all the avenues that Amber would leave open, she left all those doors wide open. She yep. talked about uh, Tasha. She talked about, um, uh, what else? Not breaking the bed. She talked about uh, the photos and how she took photos. They might be on different days. She doesn't remember when she identified the exact same photos. Yeah. 712 and 713, which if you transpose those on top of each other, it's the same dang photo. Runkle's um, video coming out on it. Is he? Yeah. That's going to be great. But yep. yeah, they, she talked about, she threw her own, she, she threw her own hired psychiatrist under the bus, Dr. She, Hughes. Every She threw Dr. Hughes under the bus. She threw her nurse under the bus and then tried to bring her back and was like, well, no, this, I did tell her this. She was trying to throw away the parts that she didn't want people to believe, but keep the parts she wanted people to believe. It was, it was this weird picky choosy thing that was awful. She threw everyone under the bus. I hope her lawyers are prepared for the fighting they're going to have to do with her after this trial. And then literally turn her back on the jury. Yeah. Ignore the judge's admonishment. Walk. Walk. I, I, that to me, I sat there. I was like, there's no way she did it. And I watched it again. I rewound my jaw, like hit the floor. Yeah, at first the chat was like, she just stormed out. And I was like, no, because I was so like, oh, we just finished. Like Elaine just gave up and then we're here. And it was like, okay, she just stormed out. Or right when we were going to break, she just stormed out. And I'm like, no way she did. I had to rewind it and watch again. I'm like, she walked, it would go ahead and sit back with counsel. And she walked right past them and out of the courtroom. I was blown away. And it goes to Ben King's testimony where he called her like a spoiled, petulant teenage child or whatever. Did you see the bailiff do like the, the deputy do the little double take? Gosh, the ba- was like, I thought we were sitting. We're not sitting. Are we, why are we not sitting? Yeah, I saw that. Crazy. It was, it was absolutely horrible. wild. Well, I think she's again, backing up Dr. Curry's testimony and backing up this teenage, spech- petulant, spoiled teenager. And then he went, is that fair? It was, it's very, very much what this is. So it's why it's wild to see. I'm sorry you don't get to line sit. Is Runkle by himself tonight then? Uh, I doubt he's going to be technically by himself. Yep. All right. I imagine he's going to have some company. I imagine so too. The line is already seemingly busy. So, Rob, you are breaking up on me. Uh oh. Because you're driving. No, Rob, no, I'm, well, it's, I'm, I'm in, I'm in transport. Yeah. No worry. Don't, don't judge. I just want you to be safe. Um, and if it's not going to be easy to stream, it's okay. We can always catch yeah. back around tomorrow after your hearing. Yeah. All right. I, I will just catch up to tell you, you made my day today with the reaction. It was my favorite video. Bye. Bye. Good to see you, Rob. All right, you guys, we're going to get, it is almost 620. We're going to get to just a few more super chats and then we're going to get going because it is time. Rob is breaking up with the chat. No, Rob's phone is breaking up. Um, Will there be sanctions for Amber Heard storming out? No, there might be an admonishment from her lawyers, but that again, shit's already out of the horse. Can't she get a mistrial if she argues with her lawyers? No, she can't. But the lawyers can be admonished if they're putting things into evidence that they can't put into evidence. Can you show some of the clips um, for those of us that missed it, I will try to clip down some of the moments. We have time stamped them on the video. So we're trying to get to uh we're trying to get to it. Harmony said, girl, when I turned 40, I said, screw what people think and started coloring my hair, pink, purple, blue, whatever. I I feel you, girl. I'm this, I'm same. I'm same. I just don't care anymore. 
we're just here. I love that Runkle was like, I got death threats over my hair. Who would give death threats over Runkle's hair? His hair is fantastic. So I'm going to try to get to just a few more questions and then I am going to have to bounce. A, my family is looking for me for dinner and B, I've got to um, get prepped for the podcast tomorrow, get prepped for the streams tomorrow and catch up with everything else that's gone on today and then do my recap. Um, Tara Dactyl said, Runkle is right on. I was abused emotionally. I'm sorry. He held a gun to me and my kids. That is not okay. The next day when I told my friends, they all said he told them I, I'd i say he did it um, when really I held the gun on him and they all believed him. It is a huge, it is a huge problem. So I am sorry to hear that that was your experience. Thank you for sharing it with us. Does the court release people in the middle of the night? Why? Um, normally if people, so it depends on jurisdiction, but if there are criminal cases going on in the court and they get released from custody, finish probation, uh, bail out and things like that, by the time the sheriffs are done processing the paperwork, it can be fairly late at night where people are released directly from the courthouse. If they are in custody and they go to court that day and they are released, they don't transport them back to custody. They release them from the courthouse. And that tends to take a long time to um, process people out. Did you cover when someone in the gallery said something during cross and it, many people looked over John, when we talked to DUI guy before lunch, it looked, it, he said it was a cell phone that went off. So that can Amber Heard's witnesses back out last minute. They shouldn't that there could be problems if they're subpoenaed. Um, did the bailiff take her bottle out of the trash? I have no idea. I didn't see that. Um, damn Rob, I'm a Fairfax native and I can't believe I never run into these people. Well, Rob is a local so maybe you will. Question, can lawyers get in trouble for submitting faked images? Oh yeah, whole lot, whole big problem if they know. And that is an issue. So it becomes an if they know issue for sure. Tyga, I hope I fairly represented this super chat to, um, to Runkle the Bailey. Be sure to go follow him on all of his socials and his YouTube channel. Question, would counsel ask leading questions of their client because they know an open-ended question would lead to a lie and doesn't want the client to perjure themselves? If they're worried about perjury, they shouldn't ask the question or put their client on the stand, perhaps. Uh, laughing while listening to your commentary and entirety of this ish via my AirPods, my house is rolling his eyes that law nerding is this chick's chosen version of cartoon like entertainment. We have law nerded. We are, I'm going to have to grab my, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to adjourn quickly um, because I have got to go eat dinner. New member, very much appreciate the comments. So we understand everything. And I'm uh, completely addicted while sitting here waiting to have surgery the next couple of days. I cannot wait for closing arguments. Well, Miss Miss Chabelle, I hope I got that right. Um, I hope we can be with you during your recovery. I hope it is a safe and healthy procedure and that you are with us for your recovery. And you get, you know, this is the perfect time. This is the perfect time to have downtime. Fan comment, the way he described fan sounds like the way I describe burnout. That's fair. The cup I have has holes in it. And no matter how much I try it to fill up said cup, it still empties too quickly. People pleasing for fan and family is a lot. That is a very, very fair impression. Lawnards, you have been absolutely amazing today. Um, can Anna Kendrick play Depp's lawyer in the movie? I don't know. I don't know Anna Kendrick for Camille. I know that there are... Um, Instagram accounts that have been casting the movie. So I don't know. Tomorrow, we expect that we will have um, one live witness. It seems to be Whitney, her sister, and video depositions. Sister's going to be interesting to see how they get around some of this stuff and to see what sister says. And with that, I'm going to, of course, invite everyone else to visit or stop by the channel. Um, Runkle looks like he will be the one in court tomorrow. I know Law and Lumber, not Law, Law and Lumber has a hearing. And then DUI guy, Larry, is going to be heading back to Kentucky this evening, I believe. So with that, I am going to adjourn court. Law nerds, we are adjourned for this 16th day of the Johnny Depp Amber Heard case. I will be back with you in the morning for day 17. Court starts early at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I will put the stream up so you can go and hit it. Um, I am ready to, to compete like a, a child with, <laughs> with Nick Ricada for uh, law tube su subscriber supremacy or something like that. But um, all a all in good fun. Ricada deserves it. His channel absolutely exploded when he started covering the Rittenhouse case. And while all law tubers have a different view on things, a different tenor, a different temperament, a different view of the world, um, we all do like to disagree with respect. So with that, um, there is going to be a friendly competition on my end, I imagine. Well, I'll let him know. I'll let him know that I'm coming. We're coming.
we're coming um, because we are at 387 and he just hit 400. So I feel like we can do all of this. So thank you all so much for being here. I am going to say good night. I appreciate you. Replay crew, if you made it this far, I appreciate you so much. Um, and for those of you that watch this at two times speed, probably smart. With that, I am going to say good night. Stay well, take care of yourselves, and I will see you tomorrow. Connect with me everywhere. I'm at the Emily D Baker. If you guys want to join a text, just text emily.com. If you want to join the channel, lawnerdsunite.com. Happy to have you support what we do here on the YouTube.